Good morning to everybody. My name is Cameron, and we're playing some Minecraft today. It's been a lovely week so far. How is everybody? I hope everybody's lovely. We're starting off this morning with Minecraft, like I said, but also a very interesting type of tea, if I may share for a moment. I've got it in my fancy mug glass here. I actually got this tea quite a while ago, probably a year or two ago. It's this Korean red ginseng tea. And I'll put that up to the screen for a moment. This is what that is that wants to focus for a little bit. Want to focus? Want to focus camera? Anyway, that's what the packet looks like. And I thought it was like a loose leaf tea. Like, say, like a lot of different types of tea. I thought it came in a little packet. You put it in a little tea bag. You steep it for a little while and there's your tea. Well, I put that into my tea bag. There's, there's nothing left in the tea bag. There's just... It's just water. It's it's all dissolved, so it must be a new type of tea. One that gets dissolved into the water and that, like, becomes your tea or something. Like, I I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever had tea like that before. Um, I got it from work a while ago. Like... I was sitting at work and I think they were cleaning out like a, a, an equipment closet or something. And there was just these tea bags sitting in a little container. And we were like, does anybody want these? And I was like, I like tea. I'll take that. And they just kind of sat in my apartment for another year and a half. I haven't actually tried it yet. The tea is still cooling down. So um, I guess we'll see what Korean red ginseng tea dried, dissolved, tastes like. The tea's a nice color. Like a... It's not really red, more like an off orange, I guess. And all the particulates are like floating on the bottom. This is very, very interesting. So I actually had a lot of trouble getting Minecraft running this morning. I had made some modifications to my server and client to add forge micro blocks, blocks that are tiny and forge-like. Um, essentially, it was like the ability to make these things that are really, really tiny. Um, like make tiny little blocks and so i added them i never actually used them in the world but i added them to the server to make sure that they were loaded in case i ever wanted to use them and all of a sudden today i was getting this really really weird error and it was saying like I can't cast json of type primitive to json of type not so primitive i was very very confusing to me i had no idea what was going on and so i spent about an hour today trying to get things to run it worked on one mod pack but it didn't work on the other and the two were very very closely related this mod pack here was built off of another one and that was one of my modifications and as soon as i removed that modification it worked just fine and so i was like well i guess i must have broken something so um let's see what's on the list of things to do today i really don't know what i'm doing today i'm just gonna kind of just gonna vamp with things for a bit just gonna go forth and play some Minecraft. It's time for a good morning. Time for some good vibes. A little bit of, little bit of Minecraft music to get ourselves in the mood. I know there are a couple of things that I want to accomplish. For example, while I was gone, recently I made it such that um, offline there is the the, uh, the game will continue to run. The charcoal will still be able to be created. Uh, so on and so forth. And so that's really, really great and all. Um, unfortunately, the tree farm needs more dirt. I don't have a lot of dirt, so I need more dirt. So I'm gonna collect some collect some dirt as one thing. Also, uh, in addition to that, the I want yes, I want to sleep on that. In addition to that as well, the charcoal barrel that's supposed to hold the buffer of charcoal is full. I, I didn't realize that the however many stacks of dirt that I had left in that tree farm to turn everything into wood, um, everything that was left over, there is over. 1900 stacks of um 1900 stacks of charcoal in that barrel which i never thought it would actually get to that point but i guess i've been leaving this to run for about two weeks so it's it shouldn't be very surprising to me so i'm just going to try to find an inconspicuous location to steal a bunch of dirt from this feels like an inconspicuous location to steal a bunch of dirt from i don't want the landscape to be too entirely destroyed by me and my dirtness me and my need for dirt so I'm just gonna go after this little mound here. Oh, and uh, if you, you probably don't notice, but my right clicks are no longer doubling because uh, the other day I managed to get a replacement for my mouse. So now the mouse is not 
Oh, please don't set on fire. That's fine. Oh, it's all setting on fire. Well, if the forest sets on fire, no big deal. We'll just deal with whatever comes with it. But the mouse has finally been replaced. Meaning that I don't have double clicks anymore. Which is lovely. God, I love it. I had recently started to do a lot of... Um, do a bit of image work with some of the, the videos that... I, everything here that gets... Want, everything that gets recorded here gets backed up to YouTube and stuff. Just because... For progeny. If my children ever wanted to be interested in... What the hell did their, what the hell did their father do back in the days of... Not so early, mid-aged internet. Well, they'd be able to find out. That and like, eh, I think it's funny to go back every once in a while and see what it is that you've done with your life for um, significant portions of time. Perhaps one day there'll be a machine learning program that I can feed all my YouTube videos in and it'll sum up my personality in a couple of words. There are a lot of interesting machine learning stuff out there. There's one that I was actually considering using for thumbnail stuff. Uh, it's called Doll E, I think, is the machine learning thing that they've got. And it's kind of like a... It's kind of like something that predicts the next word in the sentence, except you give it a sentence and it creates an image for you. Like an image of whatever you tell it to. Like you could say, I want... I think some of the examples on the website are like, I want a chair shaped like an avocado and it will from whatever it's learned upon generate an image of a chair that looks like an avocado and you can apparently get very very specific with this like i want the chair shaped as the avocado to be overlooking a scenic beach with i don't know britney spears sitting in it and you might get i don't know how specific with people that it'll get but it very well might create generate a landscape with an avocado-shaped chair in it. And none of the images that come from it are found anywhere. They're, they were... It was trained on images that were real and then created new images. Oh, hello there. Yeah, that's gonna be an issue of mine. The cinders are coming to grab me because they realize... They're like, Why'd you set the forest on fire? What is wrong with you for setting the forest on fire? And I'm just like, I set the forest on fire because I like lasers. And if you're gonna complain about it, I'm just gonna mess you up. Or at least to try to as much as possible before I set on fire and probably die. Am I dying? No, I'm dying. Hmm. Oh, just kidding. I'm not dying anymore. Yeah, that'll be that'll be an issue for a little while. Are you dead now? On the bright side, they drop blaze rods, I think. I think. Probably. Maybe. I don't really remember. Anyway, the forest will eventually burn. And uh, then we'll be happy again. Who needs a forest when you've got lasers and fire? I don't know. I suppose the animals still need the forest. Ooh, scary music playing. This is my Minecraft playlist, and every once in a while, some of the, the scarier stuff gets on here. This is not very relaxing. This is not a very relaxing sound. I'm going to remove this from the playlist, because it's not very relaxing. That's fine, and we'll move on. Back to the Minecraft, then. This is supposed to be the calming and relaxing Minecraft playlist. And sometimes it's not very calming and relaxing. I remember seeing a post the other day. And it was... It was like a little TikTok video going through a couple of different, like, images of games. And it was like, tag yourself, screenshot which one's your comfort game. And there was, like, Animal Crossing. There was Fortnite. There was Minecraft. And there may have been one or two other games on there that this, this particular content creator was considering, like, comfort games for some people. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Minecraft, I think, is my comfort game. In the sense that I would consider it a comfort game in that it doesn't matter what else I'm playing or what else I'm doing in the world. If I'm feeling, like, stressed out and just want to play a game, Minecraft is the game that I'm going to wind up going to just to, just to chill. Just to chill and do stuff in. And I think it's important to have something like that. You know, relaxation is always a part of the process. The other uh, the other day, my fiance was stressing out about exams and whatnot. She had to retake a couple of exams, but they've gone they've gone well so far. She's out there, fingers crossed, taking that last one of hers. And I'm sure she's doing just wonderful right now. But she passed it the other day, very closely, but she passed it nonetheless. And I, don't know, I was like, I was kind of on my on the edge of my seat. I was like, oh dear. Because if something bad happens, like, you know, I want to be there to 
to, to comfort and make sure everything is, you know, everything's okay and that we'll all get past it and whatnot. I'm, I'd like to consider myself a pretty level-headed person. I'm not without my getting all up and antsy because, like, I, like, previously, if I were to fail a test, I would get all down on myself. I'd feel super duper bad about it. Like, to the point of, I'm just gonna sit curled up into a ball and consider my life choices up until this point because, oh my god, I failed a test. If I if I fail tests more like this going forward, then I must be a bit of a failure, right? And, I, you know, I try not to. Those, those, those thoughts have no place. Those thoughts have no place in your brain. The fact that you even got to that, but the fact that I, at that point in time, had even got to that point in my academic career is something to really, really be proud of. The fact that my fiance has gotten to this point in her academic career. She's almost a full year through her physical therapy program, and that's awesome. She's now starting her summer classes along with the other tests that she's taking, and it's incredible to see, like, the the, pa the passion that people have for their academics or whatever it is that you do. And I'm not to say that I'm without passion. I had passion once upon a time for all my engineering stuff and my studies and whatever. Uh, however, that's kind of in the past now because uh, school is now in the past. Although, I can't wait to be able to, to, to figure out what it is that I will do going forward to kind of make up for that. Oh my god, there's another one. To kind of make up for the lack of that such activity now. I don't have tests to take anymore. Uh, at least not right now. Oh, are you dead? You are dead. Well, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'd like rather not be on fire if that's okay. Heal myself up. Eat this nice old PB&J sandwich. Make myself feel better. <laughs> the right click button works, so now I don't have trouble eating anymore in game either. It's, it's lovely. I just I love it. I'm so glad that it's not an issue anymore. <laughs> what I was mentioning before with the right with the right click button, uh, I do a bit of thumbnail work now for the the videos that wind up on YouTube afterwards, and I realize you know what? It's some of these. So there are some really unflattering screenshots because if you upload anything to YouTube. It, and without a thumbnail, it'll just kind of pick, like, three random shots from, I guess, one from the beginning of the video, one from midway through, and one towards the end to generate a thumbnail for you. And some of those shots are not very flattering. And so I was like, you know what? If I'm going to put... If I'm going to put some heart and soul into my hobbies and stuff, I think that I should put a little more effort in these thumbnails. Because, like, I've always loved doing image editing stuff in the past. And uh, one of the things that I've been able to do, at least now, is just make like, take like random pictures of the face and put it on top of, in this case, I guess it would be a Minecraft background. The other day, I was playing Sea of Thieves with two of my good pals, Christina and Glenn. And there were some really, really beautiful shots in that game of like the ship going into a portal or the ship riding, riding towards the horizon. It was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, I, it was really cool looking. So beautiful that I used one of those images for a thumbnail. And one of those images for... I just decided to post it on Twitter. Because I was like, this is beautiful. But I'm not going to post this on Instagram. My The people who would follow me on Instagram, to my knowledge, are probably not really into... Or rather, as a... Back up a moment. I would consider Instagram to be like kind of a... Like a scrapbook of my life thus far. And the scrapbook doesn't need space for, like, I guess, this this game, the game that I happen to be playing at the time. Like, that seems very, it's like, it's like a, I mean, he, play, he plays games, so, so what? And he pay, posts pictures of games all the time? Like, I don't know. That's not something that I would particularly like, like, click the like button of. And it's not really about the like buttons, the, the like clicks, how many likes you get. However, if that's something, I wouldn't post something that I might, it's kind of a metric that I use to judge my own stuff. Like if I wouldn't click the like button myself, what's the, what's the point of putting it out there? Aside from it, you just want to share it. And it, I mean, if you just want to share it, that trumps all. You just want to share it. That's that's why you should put it on out there. That's why you should put, uh, post it out there. So long as it's not hurting anybody. Ain't no problem with that. We live in a world of a flood of content anyway. If you flood the internet with content, I don't think the internet's gonna be any... I don't think the internet's gonna care very much. If that's the case. Let's see. I'm gonna try this... Korean red ginseng tea now. Let's see. Huh. Really doesn't taste like... 
It doesn't taste like much at all. It's kind of... I taste brown sugar. Like very, very slight brown sugar is what I get from that tea. It's actually a little... It, it's mostly just tastes like... It's kind of as if... It, the, the Korean red ginseng tea, this stuff, is kind of as if... Whoa, hello. Bye-bye, creeper. Am I okay? I'm fine. It's almost as if you took a little bit of brown sugar, put it into some hot water, and that's your tea. Like, that's what I, that's what I get from it. It's not that bad. Not bad for tea that's been sitting around for probably over a year and a half. Not bad at all. What company are you? I can't read that. Well, at the very least, kudos to the Koreans who made this tea. It's not bad. I like it. I like it. You have my seal of approval. I don't have a lot of packets of it, though. I only have three. And I kept them sitting in my tea drawer for special occasions. Or not special occasions, but occasions where I'm like, I want to try something new. Something new and exciting. And it's new and exciting. Who, kn who knew? Uh, brown sugar. Brown sugar-ish tea. Ginseng. Maybe ginseng. It's it's ginseng. It's a, like a, a root or whatever. So I think they, they take the root and grind it up. And I guess it kind of dissolves. Like, it's it's almost... It's dissolved-ish. Or I wonder if the ginseng just all floated to the bottom. Maybe what's in the cup right now is actually just brown sugar stuff. And that's all I'm tasting. So I got quite a few stacks of dirt. I think that is just enough stacks of dirt to bring it back now, y'all. And put it back on the tree farm. One hop this time, two hops this time. One day, one day. If I ever do auditions again, and I get close enough with like whoever is doing the auditions, that is absolutely gonna be this, my audition song. The, uh, um, what is it? Like, um, Casper Slide Part 2, I think it's called. Love that. That used to be all the rage at the high school dances. High school dances always got kids trying to do those special dances. Cotton Eye Joe, Casper Slide, the Cupid Shuffle, you know. All that stuff. Anyway, so now I'm going to put a bunch of dirt into here for the dirt farm. That's plenty of dirt now. There should... That, that's no problem with dirt no, anymore. Now, I've got a little guy down here. A little, uh... Got a Java barrel down here. Who's full? It's all full. I need more storage upgrades. So I need to upgrade this guy. Oh, I already have the upgrades open. Sweet. So it is currently at the refined iron plate level. We want obsidian, diamond, and aluminum. So I suppose in order to make that, obsidian plates, you probably need obsidian plates, diamond plates, you need diamond plates. And then, uh, this is what confuses me. You go from oak. Yeah, pretty basic material. To bronze, all right, bronze age, I get that. To iron, the iron age, like industrial era. Cobalt, all right, we're getting a little special here with some uh, rare earth metals. Steel, all right, I get you, but I feel like steel would have come after iron. Then you get obsidian, like, okay, that just feels like a Minecraft thing. Like obsidian would come after that, like in a Minecraft sense. Then you have diamond and you're like, yeah, diamond, toughest of all materials, I get that. That's also a Minecraft, that's like a hot top tier material. That would be the one that comes after all the ones before it. And then aluminum. Like, okay, I guess aluminum just means, like, now you're in modded territory. But even still, if that was the case, like, you know, steel is also modded Minecraft. And then you go to titanium, and then tungsten steel, and then iridium. That I totally understand. Those are tough high-tier material. Tough high-tier materials. So I probably have some obsidian plates laying around here somewhere. I definitely have diamond plates laying around here somewhere. I just don't know where. Aluminum plates... Or rather, aluminium plates, because it's aluminium in this mod pack. Aluminium. Give me some of that. One, two, three, four. Oh my god, it's so satisfying to be able to count things properly. So satisfying to right-click things, and the number of times you click the button, that's how many things you get. Like, I love it. And I don't usually, I haven't used this recently. So I'm going to put some seeds in the, the cedar. The squeeze juicer. The juice squeezer. Put some of those in the juice squeezer. Anytime I get seeds, I just put them in here. Technically, at some point, if I mix it with enough of this talc, the seed oil, I'll get... Oh, lubricant's supposed to come out the other side. Hm, look at that. I should get lubricant, and lubricant's good for a 
variety of things. Mostly for sawmills. If I have a sawmill over there, and if you've got lubricant in it, it, it works a little more efficiently. Eh. Doesn't really... There's, there ain't no place for that right now, though. Put some of my oak wood in there. I got aluminium. I need my obsidian plates. If I already have obsidian plates, which I may not. La, any diamond stuff. I got bronze plates over there, but that's not the that's not the plates that I need. I also need iron rods as well because I need fences. So fences are what you need. Oh, look at that. I could use some more iron. I'll go on an iron hunt today. Oh, and I see iron fences in there. Lovely. Well, let's just get six of them for now. Not take more iron than I need to. Trying not to. Trying to conserve resources if we can. If we can conserve resources, that'd be a really great idea. Need to find the diamond plates. Diamond plates? Nope, just diamond diamond. Obsidian plates? Nope, just obsidian obsidian. Well, I bet if I take a piece of obsidian, let's get diamonds. Let's get nine diamonds. Compress that into a diamond plate. Actually, I think I know where the diamond plate is. Hold for a moment. I think I know where the diamond plates are. It's either over here. Yep, there's four diamond plates. Perfect. And I, I thought I was either there or over here. And there's ender eye plates and ender pearl plates over here. I would rather keep those with the other plates. Apparently, I keep plates over here. That's perfect. But I need obsidian plates. And for that, I need to put obsidian into the cutting saw, right? Yeah. Nice. Exactly what we need. Get some of those, then we'll have the iron fences, then we'll be able to upgrade. Oh, I need more obsidian plates. I, I need one piece of obsidian per plate. Interesting. Well, it's a good thing I've got quite a bit of obsidian. There's a mob in that's added by the Lycanites mod that adds, I think, obsidian as a drop of the Gru or the Shade. And so, just to have the... the you, you find them every once in a while. Gru spawn from the darkness. You still have to figure out a way to turn that off, because that's just annoying. That is very, very annoying. There's just, there's no need for that. Like, I understand the mod pack develop, you know, fear, fear the knights, fear it. Be afraid of the knights. So keep your torches on you. But like, what if I just want to roam around in the darkness? What if I just want to enjoy myself in the darkness of the world? Like, shouldn't I be able to, well, shouldn't I have the right to do that without any troubles? Shouldn't I be able to run around fully clothed in the darkness? Oh, I made the wrong... I made the wrong thing. I was not trying to make iron bars. I was trying to make iron fence. <sighs> Whoops. Alright. Well, uh, time to add that to my collection of... I don't know why I have all these iron bars. I'm gonna do something with a stack of these iron bars. I'm gonna take six of these ingots. I'm gonna lathe those again. I'm gonna turn them back into rods. But I don't need all these iron fences. I don't know why I have all of them. Let's just go downstairs, throw them into the pulverizer. I hope that I can pulverize these. Can I pulverize these? Let's see if I can pulverize these. Pulverize? Yes. Wonderful. And that'll be repurposed into iron eventually. Seems that I have a bunch of waypoints on over there. Let me turn those off. I don't need those. I don't need those waypoints on. I know where they are. I'm not in the, I'm in, not in the market for appetite and phosphorus anymore. Or redstone instead of iron ruby, or ski light and tongue state. Well, ski light and tongue state, always a positive thing. But the results from our last adventure, the results from our last adventure involved phosphorus and appetite, which are two ingredients necessary to create fertilizer, which allows the tree farm to run. And there is plenty of fertilizer there. There was over a thousand stacks of charcoal over there. And we've still got 60 stacks of fertilizer left? Sweet! I had that running. After the stream had ended, I further processed everything. It took a while for everything to process in the background. Um, and then afterwards, I sent them all through a chemical reactor and made a bunch of fertilizer. And that ran for about a day as well. While I was, even I was offline, that just ran in the background. And I'm very glad it worked. Now there's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of fertilizer for everything to run. Now time to make some iron fences. Actual iron fences. So do I need them down here or is it up here? No. It's up here. I need to switch these places. 
for the iron fence. And that only makes six of them. Ah, I need more. I need more iron fences. I thought the iron fence is crafted for six, but I was completely incorrect, it seems. All right. It's fine. You know what? On the bright side, I bet the obsidian plates are done by now. Go grab those. Um, lathe it. Besides, even upgrading the... Upgrading the Java barrels to that level is going to give it a lot of upgrade slots, even with, with just obsidian and diamond. And I can make those two now. Which it will. One, two, three, four. Give me those iron fences. Give me an upgrade. Same thing with the obsidian plates. Give it an upgrade. And now that's at the right upgrade level. Now I need to take these stack upgrades, which I should have quite a few of them here. Uh, Upgrade. Oh, okay. I only have five. Well, I need more of those. So how to make more of those? I think it's, it's pistons. It's pistons surrounding a barrel. It's pistons surrounding a barrel. I know what it is. It's pistons surrounding a barrel. I got barrels. I got more barrels. Piston? Pistons? Alrighty then. Let's make some pistons surrounding barrels. I don't know when else I'll be using pistons. And uh, I don't really have a need for more barrels right now, so might as well just use as many of them as we can. Perfect. That's a lot of upgrade slots. That should be many more stacks. I, I don't remember how many... What the, what the upgrade actually... We'll, we'll just see. Currently, it can hold 1984. I upgraded to the next level. Now it's at a obsidian level. Now I put it to the diamond level. Beautiful looking. It can have... Nine, it's got 90 more slots for upgrades, so let's put a bunch more in it. This one is the one that I worry about the most, because everything here just creates charcoal. So if you don't got space for more charcoal, what do you do? So this just adds another stack of upgrade, uh, Another 64, it looks like. Yes, 64. That's what the upgrade slots do. These just add 64 upgrade slots. And so I just kind of keep on adding upgrade slots to it. And uh, that's that. There's se I can have 75 more. We've essentially doubled its capacity. But I feel... I feel that we can add more. So I'm going to make more job of it. Actually, how much redstone do I have? This dep uh, You know what? I need pistons. But pistons can be made not just with iron. They can be made with other things as well. They can also be made with bronze. They can also be made with steel and aluminum. And titanium. But I don't know why I would waste titanium on it. Goodness, no. But uh, I got bronze. I got plenty of bronze. I got plenty of bronze. I can make more bronze too. How much bronze I got? First of all, how much redstone we got? Got a... Heaping stack of redstone. Nice. Bronze? <gasps> Could use more bronze. To make more bronze, we combine the powers of tin and copper together. I'm gonna take a stack of tin. I'm gonna take four stacks of copper. Actually, I don't have a lot of copper. You know what? Stack upgrades? Stack upgrades will wait. They'll wait for when we got more copper. You need more copper and more iron. So I'll wind up grabbing that, putting that in the system. It'll work wonderfully. But in the meantime, I know Java barrels. You never have enough Java barrels. More barrels! And for that, we need chests and a bunch of wood. You know who's got a bunch of wood? The tree farm. So, I'm gonna grab- actually, there's a there's a Forester's backpack somewhere. Is it over here? No, it's, I think it's in storage. The Forester's backpack. So, a Forester's backpack. Let me grab that one. Get a bunch of wood. Do I have any slabs in here? Slabs. Got plenty of slabs. At least slabs of those. I think you make slabs in this one, but you can use a saw. Or you can use the cutting saw. Cutting saw works, too. How much wood do I have? Do I have any stack of planks? black wool. Give me that oak wood. Take some of that. Get a stack. Get a stack of that. Stacky, stacky, stacky. Stack of stuff. Take a stack of stuff, put it in the chain, uh, cutting you saw. Just get a bunch of stuff from that. Hey. Whatever, just get a bunch of stacks. Let's just get a bunch of slabs. There's never a dull moment. For slabs. There's always a need for slabs. And I'll just collect a bunch of tree wood. 
as opposed to other types of wood, I suppose. Just grab them from this barrel here. This barrel can hold at maximum 960. So that, that tells me, because everything runs in the background, that if there's only a little less, like 300 stacks less than 960, that means that this probably filled up about a day ago. Good to know that the, usually, previously before we set this whole offline system up, you'd come on, you would have to spend days sitting there in front of this thing for it to generate like 500. But now that it runs in the background, which is lovely, I don't think I'll have a problem with charcoal powering things up. It'd be nice to have more generators to be able to, like, because now it creates a bunch of steam. But it takes a while. So if I had more boilers to generate the steam faster, that would be a little more advantageous. I can take eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. Heap and load of wood. Perfect. I'm always, I'm always looking for rooms to improve this over here. And every once in a while, you gotta look to the community and see what the community says about possible improvements. Such as, I am in the, let's see, I think I'm in the Discord server for Greg Tech, like a couple of Greg Tech servers to be able to figure out like, oh, I don't know what this machine does. Uh, how do I figure this out? Maybe somebody else has figured it out before me. And oftentimes they have, because who knew? There are a lot of other smart people in this world that know things better than I do. And so oftentimes they're very apt to help. It's nice to have people help a bit. That's always good. Got some more iron fences here. I can use those iron fences to make the final aluminum upgrade. Where's the aluminum plates? I thought I had aluminum plates in my inventory. You know what? Not gonna worry about it. I don't know where they went. I'm just going to take that as the world's way of saying, don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, is, there a, is there a dude in there? I see an Enderman on my map. Where the Enderman at? Ah, eh, whatever. We'll just let him do his thing. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with the Enderman just doing whatever he wants to do. You want to stick around and mess with things? That's fine. You can stick around and mess with things. So don't, as long as you don't get yourself caught in my tanks. Please don't get yourself caught in my tanks. Sometimes the Endermen will walk into the Railcraft tanks and they will just place blocks in there and I'll break the tank. I'm like, no, nah, Andy, what you doing? You're breaking my tanks, Andy. I don't appreciate that. And Andy doesn't really care, though. He's like, I'm just gonna place this block here if you don't mind. I'm like, I do mind that. And he's like, I don't care. It's my block. I'll do with it what I want. 64 chests. 64 chests. Uh, a couple of stacks for wood. I don't need that much more wood right now. That's enough. And I need space for... Seven. Seven of them. So I'm gonna throw this little transformer in there, too. Boop. Boop. That was a big bunch of barrels. Tons and tons of barrels. Tiny chests. It's so cute. I don't know if I'd ever use them. Unfortunately, because the game would not boot up before with uh, the microblocks configuration file, I no longer have access to a wide variety of tiny blocks. So if I ever become so inclined to make tiny, tiny chests, I'll know what to do. I'll know where to find it. Now we really got a bunch more barrels. Just gonna kind of throw all the barrels back in storage. I don't need them all right now. I also have this low voltage transformer on me as well. And actually, this is to be used for something. Over here, I have a little, I got a little clean room for my laser engraver. And the clean room does not stay charged on its own. It needs to be, it needs to be powered, like with a little power thing. And so what I'm going to do is I moved one of my solar panels from one location and I'm gonna move it to another. This is the block back here that powers the clean room. And so I'm just going to take this to the sky. Take this to the sky. And I'm going to attach some wires to it. 
There we go. It's got a solar panel on it. Now I just got to take a couple of wires and put it back inside. Hello, Zoetar. Goodbye, Zoetar. Don't like you. You're big and scary. I suppose one of the downsides of having everything loaded all the time is that the Endermen can come by and just rip up the grass whenever they want to. I don't like them Endermen's breaking up my grass. Well, I don't really appreciate that. But we all have to live in this world together. There are other utilities. Like other items that I can use to prevent mobs from spawning. Such as, I think, Extra Utilities has, uh, I think, the Magnum Torch or whatever. Will prevent mobs from spawning. In a certain area. Or a certain radius. So uh, that's got the low-voltage transformer. That's going to go to that. Uh, boop. Now that's connected. Now that that done is connected, that's good. Put a little thing there, make it aesthetically pleasing. I have four left, and that'll be perfect for... I'll put a little torch there. Perfect. Now, if I run this clean room... Um... I don't know. I don't need it right now. Actually, okay. I'm going to turn it on, because I want to see if that solar panel alone can charge this clean room and if it can't then i'm just gonna move the other previously the solar panels were used to create some extra steam while i was gone because i was trying to really like nitpick all of the charcoal that i would need for whatever purpose and then i instead use energy to create the steam which is incredibly inefficient but it's solar power they got plenty of solar i'm not gonna run out the sun anytime soon plus most of it just gets turned into heat anyway well, let's see. Are these decreasing in their charge? I don't know, and I wouldn't really know right now, but uh, we'll see. So essentially, if it's all running well, this should continue spin, even while I'm gone, and this thing will never run out of power over here. If this does run out of power, this is this is an issue I encountered last time. Oh, one of the previous times is that it's connected to this steam tank over here. So if that thing keeps on running without me knowing, this, this steam just starts going down. I mean, it's already starting to go down. So... I don't think it's actually... You know what? I can investigate this. I can investigate this. So I will investigate this. The batteries seem charged. Staying charged. But, um... I see that there is a steam turbine over here. Turbo steam turbine? What? No, 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 not that one. Uh, which steam turbine is it? Oh, it's just electricity. No, okay. I'm gonna... So I'm gonna do. I'm going to... That's the medium voltage battery buffer. This goes over to... Where? That's the turbo. Ah, that's, that's the one right there. So I'm just gonna cut this. Oh, wait, can't do that. Nope, don't want to do that. I want to cut this one instead. That's the high voltage battery buffer for the high voltage precision laser engraver. And that's for the actual the actual clean room itself. So that disconnected shouldn't be taking any power now. Now it should be draining these batteries if the solar panel can't charge it fast enough. Also, this could use more batteries. I, I think. I think it could use more batteries. How many batteries? As many batteries as we want. I don't see them going down right now, but that's not something I need to worry about. Ain't no need to worry about it. Ain't no need to worry about a thing. Still got this wood. I'm just put it, just put it back in the storage. I don't need this right now. Don't need that. Don't need that. Just don't need it. Yeah. Deposit my level experience over here, and let's see what to do next. What to do? I can charge my... I gotta charge my suit. I gotta charge my super suit. My super nano suit. Because I don't charge my suit. I don't got laser power. Laser power. That's what I should do. I think I should go mine. I think, should get, I think we should go mine again. See what Minecraft has in store for us. Underground. Underground. We'll see what else we can find. Going back to the comfort game discussion about what games you find comforting to you 
I feel like I'm trying to remember what my world was like before Minecraft existed. And I think the last comfort game I had before Minecraft was probably Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and various other like GameCube games that I played at the time, including that one, including Chibi Robo was a game I absolutely fell in love with when I was younger. I, I have it. I have another copy of it because I want to play through that at some point. That, uh, that'll be another series that I wind up starting because I just I just want to play through it again. Such a cute game. I just love the being able to take on like the persona of this tiny little robot helping the family, flipping burgers for dad. I don't remember what you helped mom out with in that game or the daughter you'd find frog rings. I think I managed to get 99% done with that game except for one frog ring. I just didn't know where the last frog ring was. And that seemed to be, come to think of it, that must have been like a general like pattern of mine when I was younger. Kind of getting 99% done with a game and then just dropping it. Because I think at that point in time, I was the kind of kid who was like, I know cheats exist on the internet, but I don't want to find cheats on the internet. So I'm not going to cheat. I'm just going to, I'm just going to try and try and try and try and try to figure it out myself. And, um, Honestly, that never worked out because there were always there would always be that tiny little nook or cranny that I couldn't find. No matter no like for the life of me, it's like the whole if you're trying to look for something, it's going to be immensely difficult to find it. And then all of a sudden you'll just stumble across it when you when you don't even realize it. And then you'll be like, oh, my God, here it is. And uh, oftentimes that would work with those games. But I didn't really have... I wouldn't be going around doing anything else to stumble upon things. Because at that point, at that point in the Chibi-Robo game, there's like... You've got your infinite energy. You've got everything. There's much... In, you've bought everything. There's nothing much else to do except run around and just help out if you want to. Which, at the time, I guess I was growing out of that phase of... I'm just gonna do whatever I want to because I'm having fun with this. I think in addition to that as well, another comfort game at the time... Like, the, the common denominator is they're all Nintendo games. Um... There was Animal Crossing as well. I think around that point in time, Animal Crossing City Folk came out. I really enjoyed Animal Crossing City Folk. I remember before it even came out, me, young child, watched the trailer for that, and I was like in tears. I was like, oh my god, it's such a beautiful game. I get to go to the city. I never get to go to the city. Now I live in the city. And the city folk do be different. The city do hit differently. I'll be real about that. They absolutely do hit differently. But I really, I really enjoy, I, I probably sunk hours into that one. And also, like, Pokemon. Pokemon games at the time. The most prominent of those being Pokemon Sapphire. Pokemon Sapphire, then Pokemon Platinum, and then Pokemon Diamond. Pokemon Sapphire, just, I, I think, just, I had the Game Boy for the longest time. And so that was the one that I kind of honed in on. Um, because my brother played Ruby, and then Emerald. And then I just kind of stuck with Sapphire because I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the same as my brother. I didn't want to play the games that he was playing. Like he's playing Emerald and Ruby. I'll just play Sapphire. I don't need to play Emerald, which is the next step in the the game. And then eventually down the line, I got Diamond. He got Pearl. And then we both got Platinum because we both wanted it. And I put more time into Platinum because like it was the it was the third game. I had to buy the third game, and it's more updated than the ones before. So why not play that one as well? And it looks like we're fully charged. Cool. I thought I'm going to do a Pokemon playthrough at some point, too. Like, currently, I don't have a Pokemon game that I am playing. I want a Pokemon game to play. And either that means grabbing a capture card so that I can play it, like, on the actual device. Which, I, I don't know if I want to... I don't know if there's a need for that. Or I just emulate it. Emulate one of the classic games. I don't know how difficult it is to set up a Game Boy Advance with a capture card. I'm sure it exists. But I don't know where it would exist. I don't even know where I would go about finding that. That's something I will inve investigate eventually. I'm going to turn on my limonite source. I'm going to turn on my iron and copper pyrite source. And what other... Let's see. Got gold? Got gold? How much gold I got? How many materials do I need? This is a bit of a this is a bit of a farming adventure. Gold. Gold? Got plenty of gold. I'm just gonna take a look at my ingots and see what ingots I could use more of. Arsenic? Cool. Arsenic's good. I don't remember what or that comes from though. 
Ah, la la la. Black steel, bismuth. I didn't really use bismuth for anything. Kyanite. Always. Grass. It's mostly iron and copper. I can really go with iron and copper as... Excuse me, always. I don't have a lot of aluminum ingots. But I got a lot of aluminum dust. And apparently I threw the plates back in here. Cool. Found those. I'll put them with the other plates. I don't have a lot of aluminum just because it takes a lot of energy to create aluminum. But now that I really don't have an issue with that. Oh, the aluminum is downstairs. Gotta go downstairs. Now that I really don't have a problem with attempting to keep all of my energy conserved, I could just pick aluminum every once in a while. You know, just go into here. Take the stack of aluminum. Don't know which bag they wound up in. Was it this one? It was. And then I'll just throw it into the... I'll throw it into the, um, the blast furnace. And I'll pause it on my backpack stuff to make room for more. There we go. I don't know what's coming out of there. What's in there? A couple of zombie stuff. A couple of pieces of coal from the cinders. Because the cinders dropped coal. Or maybe that's it. Maybe they don't have to drop blaze powder or anything. I think they just drop coal. But that's still an important resource. Coal is kind of... It's not as useful as charcoal, at least for me. However, coal can be ground into coal dust. Coal dust can be compressed. Coal dust can then... Done... Coal dust can then done become... Um... Diamonds. You can, you can compress them. The diamonds. And another, another thing... That I want to take a look at is the coil blocks. I want to investigate that. Coil. Coil. What comes after nichrome is tungsten steel. How does one make tungsten steel from tungsten steel wire, tungsten steel wire in uh, an extruder or a wire mill? Tungsten steel ingot comes from hot tungsten steel. Hot tungsten steel comes from tungsten steel dust or merely tungsten and steel together. Steel, I can get steel. Tungsten is another beast entirely. Tungstate, I think, is the dust that I have a bunch of right now. Tungstate dust can only release its tungsten with the addition of, was it hydrogen, I think? You electrolyze it with hydrogen, yep. I need seven of them. So you know what, let's let's get a little bit of tungsten. Uh, what's a multiple of seven? 63 would be seven, yeah. All right, nine and seven. That's cool. Ah, uh, let's see. So I should... This is my electrolyzer. What I should be able to do is pull some hydrogen. I, I should have hydrogen. I definitely have hydrogen. We grab a tank, too. Tank? Tankity tank? Any tanks around here? Not any more tanks. Gotta grab more tanks. Gotta grab me a tank. Just one tank will do. Just one tank. So it requires how much, how much for each one? For every one tungsten, there is going to be seven units. There are going to be one unit of hydrogen gas to pull that tungsten out, to pull the tungsten out of it. Get tungsten and lithium out the other side, which is great because I could also use lithium as well and oxygen. So I'm going to pull, this can only hold, how much can you hold? 1600? 16 buckets? 16. So I'm gonna grab a couple of you. Just a couple. I'm gonna fill you up with hydrogen. I'm gonna fill all four of them up with hydrogen before I go mining. Tank. Oh, I need to be standing in front of it. Tank. 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 Oh, was it? Did only have one in there? Tank? Oh. Oh. I have them all. I apparently grabbed them all. Interesting. I somehow didn't notice that the first time, but this one's configured. We don't need to be configured. Very weird. Very odd. But I can pull hydrogen from that. And then I'll need an empty cell from somewhere. Where are my extra empty cells at? You got empty cells? You got empty cells. Yeah. Yeah, empty cells. I'm merely gonna do this. I am going to one, two, three, four. Configure them such that you will pull from the bottom. You'll... Yeah. You'll pull from here. 
you'll pull from there, and same thing, you'll pull from there. So when I release the hydrogen, it'll come up that way. This is a centrifuge that... I don't know if I want to fill you up with hydrogen. Will any of you guys fill up with things? I'm going to disconnect you. Ah. Just disable that. There we go. Now that should fill up with hydrogen, if I pull hydrogen. Pull hydrogen. Pull hydrogen! Do I have hydrogen? I do, I do. And eventually those will all fill up. They will have 16 millibuckets of hydrogen in there. I'll tape remove one from them, so if there's 63 in total, I will throw my tungsten, my tungstate in here. And then I'll push it into here. I don't know how to hydrogen gas. Do I fill it up? Oh, okay, it's still going. That'll fill up eventually. Slowly but surely. And in the meantime, I can eat another piece of my PB&J sandwich. Mmm, -mm, tasty. In addition to the tea, the tea is... It really just tastes like brown sugar. I feel that now. Yeah. It's very brown sugary. It's nice. I like it. I'm gonna put this in a push position. Push. Push it all up. There you go. That should be a little faster. That should be a wee little bit faster than before. And after that fills up. Then I'm gonna turn it off. And I'm gonna push it in there instead. Oh dear, why is there... Why is there hydrogen gas in here? Why is that filling with hydrogen gas? What are you doing? What are you... What are you doing? Oh, because the oxygen is... All right, well, I'll, I'll fix that eventually. I need to... Oh, jeez. That shouldn't have hydrogen in there. Oh, no. That shouldn't have hydrogen in there at all. That's explosive. I mean, it doesn't explode in this game, of course, but... Well, now I need to not pull hydrogen. I don't need that anymore. You gonna start decreasing? No, you won't start decreasing. Good. I just need one cell of hydrogen from you. Beep beep. I don't know where that came from. Outside. Alright, are you- you have hydrogen in you. I don't need you to have hydrogen. Why do you have hydrogen? I need to go back there and fix that real quick. Oh, hey buddy! Hey buddy! Goodbye! Goodbye, buddy! Nice! Thanks for dropping by. Just for a moment. I'll take your pearls. Take your pearls real good. Oh! And you brought a friend. How kind of you. How kind of you to bring your friend. So this is no no. This this is a no no. This is this is no no no. Oh, that was a I'm in mining mode. Low focus mode, please. All right, what was going on over here? Pull out of here. Pull it. Extract. Get all the hydrogen out of there. There is no need for hydrogen in there. There should not be any hydrogen. No, no. No hydrogen. Pull it all back out. Usually, there is a tank on the bottom floor that's got oxygen in it, but it's not totally full yet, so anytime the oxygen gets used, it drains this tank first, and I really don't have a lot of oxygen. So, sometimes it'll push itself into here. I should be able to... I didn't know about it when I built this system over here, but you can actually filter these pipes to only allow a certain fluid to flow through them. So if I, if I knew that previously, I would have filtered it such that oxygen only goes into this tank. But I came up with some other method that is apparently not foolproof. Which, uh, that'll happen. There's no more hydrogen in there, so I can put that back to insert mode. Or rather, I guess it's just in-out mode. Uh, that's the green signal. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. I may have completely messed that up. I really hope I didn't. Well, here's the hope and I didn't mess it up completely. Uh, yes. I'm just gonna go back upstairs and do exactly what I thought I was gonna do. But first, before I do that, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna take it out of here. There we go. Now I should be able to push it into these pipes. Push. Push. Pull. Pull, pull, pull. 
You should be going in there. Why aren't you going in there? Is there hydrogen gas in here? You need to be inserted. There we go. Now you're filling up with hydrogen. And instead of pulling, you should be pushing. Instead of pulling, you should be pushing. Instead of pulling, you should be pushing. You should be pulling on top. Yes. There we go. And that should be doing a thing. Advanced electrolyzer, no? Oh? Let me guess. High voltage electrolyzer. Oh! Extreme voltage electrolyzer. Alrighty then. Alright, well. We'll stop doing that, everybody. You can take that out. Whoops, I've broken it. You know what? This feels like a not right now problem. So I'm gonna go mining. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go mine. This is a this is a not me right now problem. Did not plan for that. Whoops. That tends to happen when you're not all there. I gotta find my where's my. I'm trying to look for my waypoints of where the limonite is. Where the limonite at? It's down there. Okie dokie. I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna farm for a little bit. This is a farming kind of day. Farming and mining kind of day. Farming for resources, specifically. Just as I go about my daily life. Little farming day. Uh, la la la. Where's the... I lost my waypoint again. There you are. I've honed it on your position. And I will eventually make my way over the... You know what? I bet if I jump into the ravine, I'll have a much easier time with this. Here we go for the plunge. Going down here. Yep. Okay. It's in my little cavern area over here. That's where I found the limonite, right? Yeah. It's down here. Whoa, hi there. Oh, okay. Hey, buddy. You're not very threatening. Weird that I walked right past a creeper and didn't even realize it. Appar apparently. Mobs are spawning in the scary darkness. <laughs> what? Why would that be the case? Oh, yeah, it's dark. It's dark and dank down here. Spooky. This should be a really good iron source. This would be a great place to find iron. This is my thwith for iron. This is my thwith for iron, iron, iron. Oh. Oh, the music got spooky. Sort of kind of spooky. Not really sort of kind of spooky. But like, I heard the record scratch. And I was like... Wow. Record scratch has got me scared. I thought is what song is this? It is eleven. Oh, that's not right. Weird that when I when I alt when I alt tab, it's supposed to go back to Spotify and then back to Minecraft. From, from Spotify to Minecraft, but it sends me to OBS instead. That's not it's not normal. It's not supposed to do that. But it doesn't do that anyway. Doesn't like to work with us very much. Whatever. There's a little ore. Electrotine. That's not really useful at all. Ah. Uh, but definitely... Definitely want to play some... Pokemon at some point. That's a game that's on my list of things to do. Some, some Pokemon game. I don't know which... I don't know which one. Like, I'm having a hard time deciding. Oh, there's a little water on the wall. Is that so? Nope. There's a... Here, take... Take that. A little water well? Interesting. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one to play. I really don't. It's, it's tough to choose from. Do you go retro? Or do you go, like, modern? Like, do I pick up some sword and she... I feel like I gotta go retro, because I don't have a, a Nintendo-specific capture card. I also don't own a Switch, so I really couldn't play Sword and Shield or anything like that. I don't personally own one. There's the family switch, but I can't, I couldn't just take that from home. I'd feel bad. I'd feel so bad just stealing that from my little bro. I think he still uses it. I think he plays Fortnite and stuff on it. Yeah. It's good stuff. He's working now. He's working at, like, uh, I think another embroidery place. Or it's, like, it's like, he's currently working at this place that does, like, clothes and shirts. And I think... He's the one in charge of using, like, the printing machine. Like, I, I think it's just a, a, a press thing. Like, it's one of those press, press shirts where you take the shirt and you press, press the image into it. 
And I only know this because I had a Snapchat from him one day, and he was making some shirts for our father. Apparently. Who needed shirts for whatever reason. Oh, look! Tiny diamond ore. I don't think I've ever actually come across a tiny diamond. Interesting. In this particular mod pack, that's what you need to find in order to move on. Because you can mine that with a regular pickaxe. And of course, if you don't have a diamond pickaxe, you need to get diamond from somewhere. So how do you do it? Like that, I guess. Apparently. Let's see. And see to try to find as much cobblestone as possible. Because the cobblestone is good is good resource. Very good resource, cobblestone. Oh, there's lava. Huh. Never thought I'd find something like that. Well, what else do we got? I'm trying to think of... I don't know. I didn't have any plan planned for that. So. I'm trying to grasp for topics. What topics do I talk about? What's been on my mind? What's been on my mind? I think what's been on my mind most prominently, at least this was what was on my mind yesterday, was how the algorithm for finding videos works on YouTube. And I'm more questioning this, not for my own benefit, for the benefit, but for the benefit of a, a friend of mine who mostly does YouTube stuff. And like, so I wind up posting things onto YouTube as a means to kind of back things up and whatnot, because I don't, I don't want the videos to be... YouTube is just... It serves me a purpose of keeping things where... Keep, keeping things indefinitely, and I don't have to store them on my own machine. Videos are... A lot of gigabytes, especially the ones that last for hours long. I tend to do a long, I tend to do a pretty long form show here. And so that's a lot of gigabytes that I just don't have on my computer. So at one point I was like, you know what? I can just upload them to YouTube and they're not going to go away. Unless YouTube has storage limits, which I don't, th but I'm not storing them there. It's not for the purpose of storing my videos. Unless, unless they were private. If they were private, then I suppose it would purely be just for storage purposes. But that's that's not how I that's not how I play the game. I think of it this way. I don't know what's in. I mean, I do know what's in this content and stuff. But if somebody can gleam a, even a little bit of entertainment from it, I'm cool with it. If there's even one. If there's even one dude, one gal, one person who comes by and is like, you know what? This made me smile for the day. Then I'm then I'm down with it. Then I'm, I'm cool with it. Then I put it up there for a good reason. Good enough reason to just put it on out there. That's my that's my more recent mentality with it. But that and attempting to figure out like how especially YouTube works for folks in the gaming community because this this buddy of mine is he does gaming videos and sometimes other things as well. But trying to figure out how like people like that get. I guess the, the credit that I feel that they so rightly deserve. I think I think this I think these boys earned it. I think these boys earned it. But there's like if you look at the YouTube gaming categories, you can select a game, any old game, and it'll show you recent videos that were tagged with that game. And under that little page that you're met with, there is like there's a tab for Recent videos, there's a tab for Let's Plays, and the one that I think confuses me the most is the Let's Play category, because there, YouTube doesn't have, it doesn't seem to have very much documentation on how you can get your videos onto the Let's Play tab. And after doing a bit of digging the other day, it seems that in order for that to happen, you need a couple of things, you need to have a couple of requirements. Oh, please. Oh, please. All right, did I do it? Uh, is that working? What did I do? Anyway, you have to meet like a couple of, um, to meet a couple of requirements. Supposedly each, the, in all of your videos for whatever game you're playing has to be in one playlist. Um, and in that playlist, the numbered videos, the, the videos have to be numbered. Like in a certain way, which is interesting. Like for those people who, actually put their videos whoa shit okay hi there <laughs> hi there bye there she was the i'm gonna block that up i don't want i don't need them there let's take my diggers backpack and put things over here but you need to color you need to um let's see words 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 struggle for the words struggle for the words 
but you need to number them. I personally don't like numbering the videos. Uh, it's, it's a personal thing of mine. I don't really, I don't really like numbering them. And the reason I feel that way is because, like, I don't know. It feels almost as if like there's you're you're working towards something. I know, like, whenever I see that, oh my god, there's like 15 videos of this. I almost feel like, oh, am I doing too much of it? Like, am I playing too much? Am I playing too much Minecraft? Am I playing too much Genshin Impact? I don't know. There's so many videos of the. Am I playing too much Soul Work with my fiance? And to be frank, the answer is no. We're not playing too much of it, unless it's subtracting from something else. And I use it mostly as a means to relax. But so I don't see an importance. I don't assign any sort of importance to numbering the videos. I just don't feel that it's very important. So in that case, it doesn't show up on this Let's Play tab. And this buddy of mine doesn't number his either. He more or less feels the same way about it. It's like, it's one, it's kind of annoying to keep track of the videos and stuff. But also, like, what's the point of numbering them? Like, you don't necessarily need to watch them in any particular order. And if you do need to watch them in any particular order, put a playlist up about them. You don't need to number them anymore. I feel like before you had, like, the playlist option, numbering things was something that you needed to do because how would I know what the next video is supposed to be? I need a part one into part two into part three. And those weird times where the part that's missing, the, the part that's next is missing, I get all confused. But now I got a playlist. If, if, if you got some sort of, like, content stream coming out for any particular category, you probably got a playlist about it. And if that's the case, why do you need to number it? I don't think there's a need to number it at that, at that point. At least not in my opinion. Unless apparently you want to show up on the Let's Play tab, apparently. If that's the way that YouTube is going to do that. I, for one, don't pay too much mind to it. However, it's good to know at least how the, the stuff works. I, I remember, too, from the from the YouTube studio, like, dashboard, they suggest, they suggest um, like, trainer camp things every once in a while. And one of the things that popped up was, like, how to take your... Oh, wait, no, no, no. This might have just been some clickbaity video. Actually, I, I take it back. It was definitely a clickbaity video that was like, how to take your YouTube gaming channel from zero views to not. And I mean, I, I didn't watch it, but maybe I, maybe I should have watched it just to be able, just to see like what it what it is that this dude advertising was talking about. Maybe I would have learned something from it. Perhaps I can learn something about it to pass on to my the buddy of mine. That's what it's all about. Trying to support each other in what you do. Trying to support the little guys. We're all fellow content creators together. We all need to try to support what we what we all do. I like to do that. And, and uh, on those lines as well, uh, on the YouTube channel, I didn't realize that you could do this, but my fiance actually told me. Because she, well, she watches a lot of... Her type of content is not video games. Her type of content is Disney and Disney World things. And, and entertainment and stuff like that as it pertains to the, to the Disney Corporation. And she loves it, and I'm happy she loves it. And she found, there's a particular channel that she watches that has a tab of their channel with featured channels. Uh, featured in such that these are other great Disney channels that you should watch. And I was like, how do I do that? How do I put my buddy on there? Like, there's not a lot of people who wind up stopping by, but for the people who do, I want to make sure that they know, like, oh, this is other guy over here that's got it better than I do. And he, he wants, he, I, I want you to give him this guy's support. So you go, go get him. And I've been trying to come up with different ways to be able to support not only him, but the other content creators in the community as well. And, you know, one such idea was uh, on the Discord server that we just launched about a couple weeks ago. There's a self-promote server. And it's really cool to see uh, some of the some of the people like kind of promote their content on there. Like my buddy of mine has advertised his streams, and another guy has also a uh, advertised streams for somebody else, or uh, somebody else advertised their Minecraft server. I'm like that's cool to be able to see like what kind of stuff is already out there. Like for example, I would have never known about uh, this this one guy's Minecraft server if not for the fact that it was there was an open communication channel for people to kind of promote their content on there and it's not like this was my idea like a self-promote channel i'm not gonna pretend that oh this is totally my idea it was actually uh this other guy who helped me out it was his idea but i'm sure he got it from somebody else as well and on another bigger server that my fiance and i are a part of gen con specifically gen con is like i don't know what the gen stands for maybe generation perhaps but gen con is a board game convention that anna and i are going to attend at some point and they have a discord server that i left a while ago but went back to it because like i'm going to the convention now so i want to be able to keep up with things and they also have a self-promote channel for 
various types of things. And one such thing was like a, a Kickstarter for some game that somebody was uh, developing. And I remember when we checked out the Kickstarter, it was about like th their goal was 5,000 and they were at 2,000. And so I, I, at the time, I really didn't know how Kickstarter works, but I did a little bit more research of it after the fact. That was one of those projects where even if you pledge, you'll get your, you, you don't get charged until the goal is met. Like unless this thing actually takes off, there's no risk to you as the one who's uh, adding your money to it, who's donating or who's helping to kickstart. Because like, if it doesn't take off, whatever, you get your money back. Maybe they'll try again eventually. But so these, this, this gaming, this game particularly was at 2000 out of 5000. And so my fiance and I were like, oh, you know what? We'll set the reminder and a day or two before it ends, if they still need some more supporters, we'll pop in at the very end. And a day later, dare I say, even a couple hours later, we, uh, she checked it out again, and she was like, yo, you know that game that we were, that we were looking at? I was like, yeah. I was like, well, uh, it hit the 5,000 mark. I was like, wow, that's, that's incredible. It all, it all of a sudden just, just went up to that in like less than a day. And then a day, a, a, another day later, it wound up reaching, uh, over like 7,000. And it's probably still increasing. There's still about 20 days left on that Kickstarter. And I have a, I have a feeling. I mean, I don't know exactly where... Uh, the, by the way, the board game is called Heckin' Hounds. And it's about... You are the dog... You are the dog walker of Hades of the Underworld. And you need to take care of these infernal hounds. And I think the premise of the game is... You don't want to do too well. And you don't want to do too bad. If you're a really bad dog walker you're gonna die you'll be sent to hell duh if you're a really good dog walker you'll also be sent to hell because hades is like well i don't want to let you go you're too good a dog walker i'm gonna keep you around forever so i guess the point of the game is to try to get yourself as close to the middle as possible and be the last one i guess alive to be able to continue taking these hounds out for walks and stuff and so i w i gotta wonder whether that Kickstarter goal was reached because they had promoted themselves, probably not just on the Gen Con server, but also on other servers as well. And I bet there were a large group of people, either one or two dudes who were like, yeah, I love this. I'm going to throw a thousand bucks at you guys. Or many small dudes who were like, this is great. I'll, I'll do that. I'll throw a couple of bucks your way. All in the span of like 24 hours. And it's, it's really cool to kind of see some of that stuff like blow up. Like, I, that stuff, is, it's so cool that stuff happens like that. And if I could be, like, if I could be a part of that, it just, it, it's cool to be a part of that. Like, you feel like you're a part of this, like, big thing that's happening. I feel like it's it's uh, always a fine thing to feel like you're a part of something bigger. And uh, at least that's, that's how I feel. I love the feeling of being a part of something that is, like, bigger than myself. And so... Somebody trying to kickstart their game, I throw a couple of bucks your way, it winds up working well for you. That's so cool. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy for me as well because, like, that's like, I, I, I funded that. That was a piece of, that's like a piece of me that's become a piece of that. And not just, it's really just a couple of bucks. So is it really a piece of me? Not really. It's a piece of this online account that I have created for the purposes of supporting others. Really, it's just numbers. And it will never not just be numbers i guess unless you throw a bunch of money their way and like cement yourself into whatever it is i think uh, a game that i played recently called forager was also a kickstarter game and i think if you donated a certain amount of money or maybe it was you were a patreon supporter you could get your name in the game as one of the uh, one of the droids that you can come around and there's plenty there's many many names and you can all you can get to choose your own decal as well so offering like in-game benefits for video games is something that i think entices a lot of people to be able to to, you know, to support their Kickstarter campaigns and stuff. I don't think I... I do not have the... I do not have the bandwidth for that. I do not have the money to be able to give, like, a thousand bucks to a game that's... That's kind of iffy. But, like, you know what? If it's something... I, I guess it depends on what the game is or whatever the content is. Like, if I support that... Like, if you, if you support a local charity because their mission is totally in line with your own ideals... I, I could bet, like, that's probably the reason why a lot of people, like, uh, like, philanthropists donate their money, aside from just having too much of it, 
to certain charities. I don't think it's random. It's I, I, I'm sure it's probably something that they feel like this is this is in line with my ideals. It makes sense for me. I have all this money. It makes sense for me to donate it to these this organization because it in lie it lies within my own particular ideas of how I want the world to be run or what kind of change I want to see in this world. I mean that more for like the philanthropist. But even for the small guys, the small fries, who are like, I've got like a hundred dollars laying around and I want to put it towards something wonderful. Like, I'm sure if you found something that totally lied, it was in the realm of your ideals, or maybe if it's a game, it's something that you really want to play. You're like, man, this game looks awesome. I want to see this succeed. I don't know. I think that's a really cool, I think it's a really cool concept. And I want to be more a part of that. It's not like I've never kickstarted anything before. I, I have, I did kickstart a game a while ago, but it was something that like, I don't know, I kickstarted it and it took a really long time for it to come out. And then when it finally did come out, I was like, eh, I really don't want to play this. It was like, it, it didn't really, what it released to be, what it wound up releasing to be was not what I had had in mind. And it was kind of it was kind of different than what I had originally put my money towards. I mean, I guess that's the kind of that's the risky take, I suppose. It's like you were supporting not necessarily you're supporting the project, but you're kind of supporting the name of the project. And so, what may be called um, the best game of all time when you first start supporting it may not be exactly what the greatest game of all time will be when it finally comes to like comes to market. It might be something different. It might be improved. It might be not exactly what you had in mind, but you put your money forth to it. And by that point, you're like, you know what? You put your hands, you put your money in the hands of the creator. And now the creator can do whatever they want for it. I mean, I suppose if the original idea was like this really humble little game and you were going to use, you just needed like 5,000 bucks just for printing costs and whatnot, and you get like $40,000 to support this game. I suppose like at that point as a creator, you're met with this choice of, oh my God, like people are expecting so much from me. Like I can't just take this extra $35,000 and pocket it. And I wonder what it is you do with that. And I'm sure you put it back into whatever game that it is that you're playing or the a game or whatever it is that you're producing, whether it be produce more of it, use more expensive stuff. I maybe raise the, I don't exactly know how it works, but I've always wanted to be a part of that process. That's something that has always like enthralled me. The creation process, being able to see something that you've had a piece of and then from day one, something, seeing something that you had a piece of, like a, a piece of your heart into at day one, come to fruition. I don't think I've ever had something like that. It'd be cool to have something like that, but I don't, I don't know about it. I'm gonna take a hot break from my vamping to see if I have my system configured for all this limonite ore. I know I have yellow limonite in here somewhere. Yep, that gets filtered. And that's because yellow limonite can be sagged into nickel. Nickel produces platinum. So that's why we have that. Brown limonites can be sagged into malachite and limonite. Uh, limonite ore is okay i get i don't know i don't think i need more brown limonite malachite as well can turn into copper but malachite already turns into copper <laughs> at the end of the day <laughs> excuse me <laughs> excuse me oh my god <laughs> my god i got a hiccup attack yeah i think that's all properly configured all right i'm gonna throw it all in there whatever else i got and find another diggers bag if i can I'm gonna throw everything in here and everything will process. Got a chip gem in there as well. Pretty good haul. I'm gonna scan some things while I have the opportunity to. Like whatever this flawed gem is. Or um limonite ore. I never scan that. Scan it all. But yeah, it's cool. I mean, if I could be a part I mean, like I said before, like it's not like I have not been a part of a Kickstarter before. This is not anything new to me. But I've feel like anything that I've put my money forth. To, uh, towards as of right now never really came out the other end as being something that i've been waiting for and like because by by the time it comes out completely i'm like i don't i don't know if i'm into this anymore like my interest fades fast probably like the rest of the population of the world as of right now we've all been transformed by the internet oh was i able to make all the yeah 
was able to make all the aluminum. And I have bismuth bronze. Interesting. Pretty cool that I was able to do all that aluminum. I'm gonna throw some more in there while I'm gone. This is all out. That's fine. We'll produce more. Meanwhile, I can throw these in the storage system. I just want to check real quick as well to make sure that no Enderman has come over to my steam pipe over here. Like the steam tank doesn't have anything in it, but that's okay. This cunt doesn't have anything in it, but that's okay. So long as this tank over here is not broken, this is slowly but surely filling up. Probably because there's a bunch of... It's formed, yes. Perfect. Formed, yes. Wonderful. This is going to fill up with a bunch of saplings first. It's going to use all the saplings first. And then we'll figure it out from there. And there are a lot of saplings. That is going to take a hot minute uh, to go up. And the original idea is to use one first, then the next one, then the next one. It just takes a while. And then the, the charcoal will be last. I might have to f uh, change that around at some point. Because we really don't need that to... We really don't need that anymore. Maybe I should pull them out faster. I don't really know. I'm not worried about it right now. I need another backpack. Dig. Dig? No more dig! I'm gonna go back to the regular homestead, to Origin Island, and get that backpack. Get the other backpack that I need. And for that, I need Stuart. Stuart! Won't you come here, Stuart? Thank you, Stuart. Let's fly backwards, Stuart. Here we go. But I guess... Really, if I wanted to be a part of something, like, if you, if I'm the kind of person who wants to be able to contribute to, like, a Kickstarter type, type thing, and I mean, it doesn't have to be Kickstarter as well, it could be literally anything. It could be investing in a fellow content creator, it could be a Patreon, it could be somebody who, you know, like, just reached affiliate on Twitch or something, and you want to, you want to show your support by getting the Founders Badge and subbing them, it's like, it's not expensive to do, I suppose. It's nothing, it's nothing that I've felt inclined to do, like, myself yet. And I got a couple, I got a couple content creators here on the Twitch platform that I'm meaning to go forth and support with certain financial value. However, they've not gotten to the level where I can yet. I'm waiting. I'm biding my time. These are, these are people who I've found, these are people who I've found. I'm like, I'm going to support you. I will. But I'm waiting for the point where I can. But I wouldn't say it. I will bide my time until then. Need more backpacks. More backpacks? How many were... There we go. There's another one. Perfect. I just needed two. I get a lot of cobblestone. I seem to always be coming back from the mines. Because I need more space for cobblestone. Stuart, where'd you go? S Stuart, where are you? Buddy! Well, I'm back here too. I might as well fill up my wand again because it's empty or a little too empty i need more i need from more from the other wand fill yourself up with Terra, i say uh where's the how much do you have Terra? terra has got none no Terra. no Terra. but i got this guy and that should heal up my other thing i have no idea where steward went he is gone. Stuart is now gone, and he is dead to me. Bye-bye, Stuart. Hey, Stuart, you're back. Look at that. I wish I could... There must be a thing with, like, the Lycanites mobs. That's that mod where you can't... You can't use a name tag on your ma... On your mounts. It's so annoying. I've tried. I've tried, and it just don't work. And it, it's disappointing. And make them so sad. And make them so sad. But that's okay. I know in my heart that this is indeed Stuart. The Stuart that I so dearly love. And lost at one point, but then brought back. So, you know, this, Stuart's no different. Should really... Should harvest all those deviating lilies as well. Time to harvest the lilies. It's lily harvesting time. Crack that all up. I still don't know yet what I'm going to do with these lilies. I think they're supposed to be used for dyes and stuff, but I think they're more for chemical dyes. Which, I don't really have a system set up for that. And I think... I don't, yeah, I, I don't even know how to make it. I don't even know how to make chemical dyes, so it doesn't really matter. I also thought, too, that I had to, like, click individually on it. Sometimes, sometimes just seeds just don't drop. And that's unfortunate, because you'll wind up losing a color or two. Like, I definitely had a white deviating lily in there somewhere. I don't seem to have that anymore. It's gone. 
I got plenty of these other ones. I got plenty of purple, plenty of blue. But uh, not a lot of the other colors. Which is unfortunate. A couple more cyan are coming up. I don't know. I think that's enough deviating lilies for now. I think I'll put the purple ones in storage. And what can they do? They can just be used as dye. They can just be used as dye for pretty much anything. And that's good to have. And they can be used to make chemical purple dye or water mixed dye. Okay, so they work just like any other dye do. A any other dye do done work like this. So I'm just going to throw it in storage. Don't need that. Not in my inventory, I don't. Let's put things back in the order that they were. And go back to mining. It's a farming kind of day. It's a farming, chillaxing, and maxing kind of day. That's what I feel. It's what I feel inside. Also, is my hunger glitched out? No, I don't think it is. Okay, it doesn't look like it's glitched out. Every once in a while, when you get off of whatever Lycanite mount, it'll like, it'll glitch, and all of a sudden your hunger will start depleting rapidly, and it just won't stop. Feels like a bug. And I'd report that bug, except I'm not using the most recent version of the mod. So this is probably deprecated, and it's totally useless. It doesn't really give the developer anything to work with. Like, oh yeah, the the older version of my content doesn't work. That makes sense. It's because it's old version of my content. Upgrade and tell me if you're still a problem. I suppose. Uh, but so I was considering before, like I was having the issues earlier with one of my config files. Basically broke my my client installation. It just, it would not load up. It kept telling me that there was this weird Java error that I couldn't do anything about because I don't have access to the Java. Uh, it didn't, it was something with the Forge mod loader. So, like, even if I knew where it was, I don't modify the mods myself. I more or less just modify the config until it works. That's kind of how I do things. I've always wanted to figure out how to do, like, actually do the mods. But, uh, that's not really, that's a little above my pay grade right now. Unless I find something cool about it, it'd be cool to be able to, you know, have some people be benefited by the mod development but i currently play i play on 1.7.10 for my mods it's changed a lot since then i'm sure i guess one day if i ever wanted to get into it you know you start out a little small like uh i don't know i don't even know like a tiny tiny little modification like i can change the color of your axolotls i don't know I suppose if I ever wanted to start, I got a, I got a buddy of mine who he did he did uh, some Minecraft stuff for his senior design project, and so I could probably ask him about it. And be like, hey, how'd you do your mods? How'd you do it? I want to know how you did it, and he'd probably be able to tell me. I don't need to bother him about that though. He's all graduated. You don't need to worry about stuff like that. I mean, even if I were to, like, if I were to do, you know what, if I were to do a mod for Minecraft, it would be reminiscent to something Greg Techie like this. And I don't think it would be as big, because you gotta start out small. But it would be, te it would be technical. Something like this. Like, I really, I, I like, I like machine learning. That's kind of something that I'm kind of into recently. So, like, I wonder if there's already or not, like, a machine learning mod in Minecraft. I mean, I don't know exactly what that do. Maybe it would use machine learning to like i don't know improve pathfinding in mobs or make vill intelligent villagers yeah intelligent villagers villagers that aren't just like i mean they've kind of already updated that as well i don't even know maybe i'll workshop that how to make my own mods what kind of mods that i would be able to make i don't know I guess what I should be looking for first is finding mods and stuff like content that's already in development and seeing like if I can make slight fixes to it. Like there's a current there's an issue that's currently open, grab that issue. See if you can help a little bit. That's something that I have really yet to do. I remember taking recently, I've done a hackathon before, uh, through an organization called MLH, the the Major League Hacking Organization. 
And I did it with a few uh, few buddies of mine at my university. And I get emails from them every once in a while. And every single year they send out like a census, the hacker census. Like, you a hacker? You want to be a part of our census? Like, sure, buddy. I'm, I'll be entered into a chance for free headphones. I'll take your survey if you want me to. Absolutely. I care not about the census, though. However, one of the questions that they wind up asking is, hey, have you ever participated in... Like, like you've ever, have you ever contributed to like open source technologies? And my answer is no. And their response is, well, why? And I'm like, I just never got around to it. I haven't found anything open sourcey that I felt like I was even comfortable to be able to contribute to. Cause like, I'm the kind of guy who's like, I'm really hesitant about stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna mess something up. I don't want to be a bother to the developer. And as I've mentioned before, like, you kind of got to get past those thoughts. Like, I want to be able to contribute. And so if there's something stopping me from contributing, for example, my own inhibitions, I got to cool it. I got to cool the jets. I got to calm myself down and be like, you know what? Don't worry about it. If the developer doesn't like it. They can tell you to F off themselves. Like, they can just be like, I don't want your help. Get out of here. Hands off my mod. And if that's the case, why you got it on GitHub anyway? But, you know, if that's the case, I'll let them tell me. I will let the person who I'm currently attempting to help out tell me, yo, you're really not helping out. You're bothering me. And it, don't get me wrong. If somebody says like, yo, by the way, you're you're bothering me right now. I'll stop. I will be like, okay, I got you. I apologize. We'll part our separate ways. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll take this and no, I won't bother you anymore. At least I'll try not to. Unless I'm really passionate about it. I might be a little pushy. I, I wouldn't say that I'm not a pushy person sometimes. I can be a, uh, can be a little pushy. But um, eventually I will get the idea. And I don't mean eventually like... Now you have the restraining order. Now I'll finally stop uh, bothering you. Like, no. I, don't, I hope it never gets to that point. I feel like it would get to the point... If the farthest it would ever go is you have now threatened me with a restraining order and you have begun the process and i'm like okay okay i'm 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 sorry i, I am officially done bothering you with whatever it is i will now part ways get over myself and stop bothering you and bother other people instead for example the people in my life i'll bother my parents instead i'll vent to them about it i'll vent to my fiance about it i'll vent to my friends about it that's who i'll vent to i won't need to talk to these developers but i know at least and this has been like a topic of conversation for me and like um uh, at least one of my other buddies as well who used to work on i think it was a big mod for uh for a game out there i think the, the game was stars and there was a big mod pack and she was kind of helping with that stuff she was working with trying to give ideas and be like uh she's really into star trek uh this is christina by the way this is meatball girl but she's really into star trek and so she would give kind of like pointers on like where we think the direction of where, where the, she thinks the direction of the mod should go and whether or not the changes that are being made really capture the essence of what they're trying to go for the essence of where they're trying to go towards being as close to like star trek as possible like adding descriptions for the factions and how their power how their abilities would um interplay with the other ones and I think eventually the creator was straight up like, we're not seeing eye to eye. Like you're ruining my, you're ruining my mod pack over here. And that's, and I don't like you. So you should, I'm going to ban you because your vision is not my vision. And I think that's pretty dastardly on the front of the mod developer. Because like, frankly, I think you're very closed minded. If you all of us, if you just start dismissing people's ideas. As opposed to being like, you know what, I appreciate it. It's not exactly what I think, but let's see if we can work it into what my vision is. And I wonder if, like, directors for television shows feel that as well. Or, or movies, who... I, I know there's at least one case where... I don't remember which what it was. But there was one movie series... Whoops, dropped my post-it notes. One movie series that I was watching. And somebody was like, by the way... Oh, it might have been the... It might have been... Is it Avengers? What is it? One of the Avengers movies? I don't really know. Oh, no, no, no. It was the new... Maybe it was the new Star Wars movies. I think it was the new Star Wars movies. And they were like, yeah, it started well with one director, and then the next movie was taken over by another director who changed a bunch of things around, and then the old director came back and tried to rectify things because things were completely blown out of the water. And I was like, that's 
terrible. I don't know what, like, was it budgetary reasons? Was it creative differences between the cast? Like, I don't, I, I, I could probably look into it a bit more. Somebody out there knows a whole lot more about the Star Wars debacle than I do. But it's interesting to see how, like, some people, I guess, aren't at a point where they can work with each other. And I suppose, like, if you're a director or a content creator of any sort, and you have, like, you got your baby. Your content is your baby. And you want to raise that baby like you would, like you were a parent. And if, you know, the people around your baby are making it do things that you never intend your baby to do, then I can imagine why you get a little, like, don't touch my baby. You, this is not what I entail for my baby. And so in that case, I, I completely understand why you're going to get all up in arms about it. But, like, even still, like, I mean, I like to think sometimes, like, oh, if I were a parent, and I know anything I say now will completely change in the future when I become a parent. I, I do plan on it. I've been mentioning that a lot recently. Babies are cool. Babies are cool, dude. But if I were in that position, I would attempt to be more open-minded, like, I don't want my child exposed to this. Or maybe I do, but maybe in smaller amounts. Like, uh, a buddy of mine from high school was never allowed to watch Spongebob Squarepants. Never. And so when he got to high school, we'd all be making the Spongebob Squarepants references, and he would not get it. He'd be very, very lost. Did I drop a... Oh, there's our crystals. They'd be very, very lost. I mean, I don't think the... I don't think his parents could have ever predicted that spongebob squarepants lore and references would be a thing in high school that would even so partially affect uh his social his like social interaction i don't think that was ever a part of their mentality i know when i was a young person my parents would not let me watch ed ed and eddie because it was pure stupidity however i was allowed to watch aqua teen hunger force on adult swim I was able to watch Adult Swim shows, but I wasn't allowed to watch uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, which at the time did not make sense to me. Even now, really doesn't make sense to me. And I don't think it was a very bad thing. I don't think I'm any different now that I didn't watch it. I just can't make the references anymore. But I wasn't, I didn't suffer as much as my buddy did because nobody really made Ed, Ed and Eddie references. Except for actually nowadays, I feel like we make more than we did back then. Because now we're always going back and forth and talking like rope and be like, well, you're in the wrong neighborhood, Ed boy. And maybe you're not using your laser correctly underground or something of that sort. Praise the voice actor for Rolf. So, so iconic. I feel like the characters from that show were very, very iconic. And I think once upon a time, too, back when Blockbuster was still a thing, we rented the the game, like the Ed, the misadventures of Ed, Ed, and Eddie or something like that for the GameCube or whatever system it was for at the time. I know we got it for GameCube because that's the one that we had. But so we had bought that game and we had played it. And it was, and I think my brother and I got a little ways of the way through it. But the, the original discussion of it was, this is that show that we don't allow you guys to watch. Should you be allowed to play the video game? And I think eventually the parents relented. I think we pleaded with him. And we're just like, come on, like it's not, it can't be the same as the TV show. Like it's a video game, it's completely different. It was pretty much the same as what I remember of the TV show. But it was entertaining in a different way. Cause like, you know, your, your video games allow you to increase your hand-eye coordination and make you better for certain situations that you may encounter in life i think there's actually been there's one guy that i follow on tiktok and he's a game studies guy and apparently video games themselves like do have a lot of good benefits like it's not just video games make your child violent i think that depends on the video game if you're saying that all video games make your child violent one i think you're very close-minded and two maybe you should if that's the case Maybe you should look into the video games you buy for your kids before you give them to them instead of just grouping all video games into one category of they are all bad because I guarantee that they are not all bad. I'm shooting a laser right now saying that. So maybe the the ones who would be on the opposite side of the arguments are just like, but but you've got a gun in the game right now. And like, yes, I do. Uh, lasers are a part of our society. That's exactly how your game system works. It's exactly how your computer... If you ever read a disc before, it uses lasers in order to read things. Maybe educate your kid about lasers. No lasers, to my knowledge, are this powerful. 
lasers are used for surgery. It can fix your cataracts. Cataracts? Probably your cataracts. So that's my, that's my argument against, oh, but you're wielding a laser. Oh, but it can hurt people. That's absolutely true. But, like, policemen have guns to protect as well. As well as harm. For the purposes of, hopefully, for protection. Whatever jurisdiction you're in. I hope they've got their... Everything, you know, I hope they got their system working in a properly safe community manner. I know that depends heavily on jurisdiction because uh, precincts are like a local thing. But like my argument to that is like, I'm not harming, currently I am not harming any players. There's nobody else here. If I hurt somebody, they can recover. Uh, I'm mostly hurting the mobs and using it for mining purposes. It's a mining laser. I use it for productivity. Well, like you don't want to... You don't like the stance of me taking my laser for the working man? You don't like the working man? You don't like the one who uses the laser to produce food? Food, goods, and services? Keep it up, I got this? I do got this, you're absolutely right. And Disney Queen, you got this! You're the one who's gonna take your test soon, so I hope your test goes well for you. And I hope that you've taken at least a couple of deep breaths. Mindfulness. That's one of the tags on the stream. The tags on the stream is mindfulness. And you know what's very interesting? I was actually doing a little bit of research last night. What I kind of like to do when I'm playing these games, these very, I would consider this a very, um, it's not narration heavy. It's not super action packed. It just feels like, it feels like a vlog to me. It lets me talk and I really like that. It, I like to be able to get my thoughts out on, this isn't paper, but the virtual paper of a three-dimensionally generated universe. And I like being able to do that. But so a lot of the things that I try to do is I try to talk myself into like relaxation and kind of considering life in general. I would consider this very philosophical. Other people may fight me on that. Whatever, I'm cool what, to each their own, whatever you feel. But I thought, what's something, what's something that we do to try to like live peacefully, live in the moment, be, calm and collected with whatever it is that you're doing and there's a tag on twitch now mindfulness for that so i decided to look and see like well mindfulness seems to be a thing who else is doing mindfulness things do i have the right idea am i using this tag properly i don't think so uh because i decided to do a little searching last night of who's streaming mindfulness things and it seems to be a lot of asmr videos which I suppose, I suppose very much so, living in the moment, ASMR, I get that. I don't have any ASMR content for you. Uh, unless, like, maybe I whisper into the microphone, something like this. But I will not continue my narration for that very long. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough on the chords, you know? But all of the thumbnails that I saw of folks with the mindfulness categories all had these weird, like circular attachments to their microphone and i guess maybe they maybe they tap the microphone like click 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 maybe the clicking sound is asmr for people there were some for visual asmr and i don't exactly know what via visual asmr is however the impression of what i got from the th thumbnails is showing a little bit of skin it seems to be visual asmr like if i if i slowly started taking off my shirt this would be visual asmr Apparently, at least that was the impression I got from the small sample size of about a dozen people streaming on Twitch at the time. Uh, by the way, a couple of them are reruns. I don't really, I don't really believe in reruns. I don't think any of my content is rerun worthy, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't wind up doing that. Unless like it was like, it was like a planned thing, I guess. Like, I don't know, like we planned to have a talk about a really special event. And so we rerun that event so that everybody can relive the glory. Like if you were doing like a convention based event. I could totally imagine you rerunning that because like what if people didn't catch on to it? They didn't realize it. There's a lot of good content that you might have missed, so we'll we'll play it for you again. I don't I don't think I have that type of content to be perfectly honest. I'll be honest with you. That ain't that ain't nope. I don't think so. I gotta get this lava out of here. Get a lot of Whoa, hi there. Hi there. Oh hello. But yeah, so I was like, am I Am I tagging this properly? I want to make sure I tag this properly. I don't want someone to potentially come on and be like, Hey, by the way, bud, you're doing this wrong. I'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Let me do it right. I don't really care at this point. After seeing that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do 
whatever it is that I do, and if somebody wants to come in and tell me that I'm wrong, I will let bygones be bygones and be like, well, I suppose you are entitled to your opinion, so let's just agree to disagree. Mindfulness. According to Twitch, the tag for mindfulness involves an emphasis on living in the moments, and I, I like that. I'd, I'd say there's a bit of living in the moment going on here. It's not like the main topic of conversation, but like, this is just one of those things where like, are you not living in the moment? You should be living in the moment. Why don't you live in the moment for a little bit? Just as a little bit of a reminder to be like, you may not be considering like how you can like relax and just be well right now. And I suppose that would be better kept under the, I think mental health category. There's a thickness down there. <laughs> Probably better better off in like the mental mental health awareness category. I'm I i do not got that. I don't got that here. That's not that's not my emphasis at least. Maybe some have got their emphasis. Uh, I got I got mine, you got yours. Put barrel there. There we go. I'm gonna fill this up. Whoa, that's dark. Very dark. I can't stay in the dark for very long. I'll die. I'll be brutally murdered. By something that lies in the darkness. Whatever lies in the darkness, I don't want to touch. I don't want to be a part of that touching. Gotcha. I'm trying to get all this lava out of the way. I'll just border it with obsidian. That's all I got. That's all I need to do. Border it with obsidian. But yes, mindfulness. Trying to just be aware of things. Trying to just... I don't know. If you have thoughts, to let them out. Ain't nothing wrong with talking to yourself every once in a while. I'm a man who likes to talk to himself. So you're in the right place. However, sometimes my mind goes on tangents and I forget what I was talking about. That happens often as well. So that's why I have post-it notes to give me ideas of where we're to send the conversation next. Because sometimes I forget. The tea is good. I can go back for the tea. It's become, it's cold-ish now, but it still tastes like a little bit of brown sugar. I don't like that. And I've also got water on standby. Always remember to hydrate, whatever it is that you do. Hydration is key. If you do not hydrate, you may as well dihydrate. That's bad. I mean, not like you may as well, as in like, if you don't hydrate, you're better off just dihydrating. Like, no, 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 that, that's fine, that's fine. But, um... At least on the drink front of things. Thinking of other sorts of beverages, I'm always the kind of guy who loves to talk about his cocktails and stuff. And the other day, one of my one of my favorite cocktail content creators, cocktail content creators, has a nice fun bit of alliteration there. Did a whole video on like different types of basically th this guy's favorite whiskey cocktails, and it couldn't come at a better time because the la last week I was hanging out with a good pal of mine, Pepper, who came over and we talked cocktails and whiskey and stuff like that. And specifically, we watched Dune. When, of course, and I, I probably was already, I already went over this, but like in Dune, the spice must flow. And whiskey, rye whiskey specifically, has a bit of a spice to it If you, after the first sip. I'm not talking about like, like alcohol spice. I'm talking like, like, I guess the spice of the rye, somewhere underneath the flavor notes of whatever barrel it was kept in. I, I don't have a very refined palate, so maybe I'm just playing myself. But I will say that there was a little bit of spice to it, and we watched you, and that was wonderful. And so the con- My fellow content creator, <gasps> who made his cocktail videos, had his favorite whiskey cocktails, and one of them included um, specifically a recipe for something that included rye whiskey. Why did I fill these up already? Holy crap. But it included rye whiskey! And that's something that we brought over because the rye whiskey is something we have. Now, it seems apparently that the, I think the old-fashioned or the whiskey sour or the, the Manhattan, specifically I think the Manhattan was the one I re recently looked at the most. And the most, co uh, the most recent cocktail that I was able to drink, I think was hanging one of those not last night, but the night before. It was just one of those days. It was all done with the Sea of Thieves. And I was like, time to wind down for the night by watching some anime. Actually, we didn't watch anime. We started watching Loki. Loki's all right so far. I decided to take my two ounces of rye whiskey and mixing that with one ounce of sweet vermouth. 
Um, I didn't add any simple syrup. I don't know if you need you need to add simple syrup to a Manhattan. I need to double check my recipe on that. Uh, and also a couple of splashes of Angostura bitters, and it was lovely. That's just one of those cocktails that like you kind of get lost in the sauce, so to speak, and everything gets just kind of fades. You're like, this is it's just it's enjoyable to me. I enjoy that kind of stuff. I'm the kind of guy. Actually, you know what? The other day, I was looking into. I know Discord just came out with their new. Um, about you profile banner things that are currently in experimental mode, or they rather just, they, they released it to some people. And so, while I was looking around for that, I, it deployed to me last night, so late last night. It wasn't available to me in the morning, but I promptly, like, got up there and was just like, you know, I'm gonna put my about me up there. I got my little background, the little background that you see with the, with the fancy little gradient down there. That's my background now, and my about me is a quirky, classy, engineering individual. I'd like to think. I'd like to think I'm very... I'm classy, engineery, quirky, very uh, more emphasis on the quirky side of things, but uh, that's all I like to think that I am. That's the image of me in my head, and I like that image, so who, who's to complain about it? But so on there, I was looking around for, I was looking at other people who had already gotten the profile banner, and I had seen the one person in particular, ha or a couple people actually, on one of the servers I'm on, have this badge for the hype squad. And I was like, the heck is the hype squad i have no idea what the discord hype squad is and so i looked it up and i found that there's an option on discord to become a part of the hype squad and i have no apparently they advertise the hype squad as you get to represent discord at your community events and whatnot by repping the hype squad the house of your choice i think i need to check what discord uh badge I have. I don't know which one it is. I need to see what house that I'm a part of. I gotta check that. Let's check what let's check what badge I have. I need to see what house I'm a part of as a part of the hype squad. Because I'm hyping up. I'm hyping up Discord. I am in the house of brilliance. It takes patience and discipline to become a vital member of the universe. Without brilliance, the hype squad would descend into chaos. That's the orange one. I'm a part of the orange house apparently. I don't know exactly what this gives me. I know it gives me a fancy profile badge. I like profile badges. That's cute. I like that. I like things that make me feel good. That don't make that make me feel very good. Feels like you're a part of a community thing or whatever. I don't exactly know what benefits I get from that. And I don't really care about the benefits. I got a fancy badge. That's benefit enough for me. An electro team view. That's, be that's benefit enough for me. And on that regard as well. I guess, I guess I hype things now? I don't really know where I was going with this. But now Hype Squad is a thing. And apparently there's also like a super secret newsletter that they're advertising that I get sent now with events and I guess behind the scenes stuff. Like I really, I really don't know what that entails, but I'm happy to be a part of it now. It's cool. Finding more communities to be a part of is something that I've been doing a lot recently. I was previously the kind of guy who I wanted to stay away. I didn't really want to get involved. Like, you had your community, and I was just going to make something of my own, I guess. I felt almost insecure to be in areas where there were a bunch of people who had been there before me. I felt almost that, like, I need to be in a community where whatever it is that I'm a part of, like, eventually I'll be, like, top dog. And that was a little... I don't know what the word is for it, but I don't really... I don't really like that anymore. I don't like to feel like that's the goal anymore. The goal is not to become the top dog in the community anymore. Not at least for me. The goal is now to just become a person that can contribute to the community. I think it's more important about contributing than anything else. Um, let me see. I don't want to... Yeah, that's a whole debacle. I don't, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch the debacle. Um, I got a bunch of... I got a bunch of iron, though. Was there iron and copper from the Malachite? So that's probably processing now. So now I need to figure out something else. I could always get more. Could always get more gems. This is currently stopped. Probably because there was a lot of... Oh, that really... That went. Nice, that went good. And I just sent a whole nother load into it. Cool. Well, that worked for a while. This is... The electric magnetic separator is... Oh, that's probably got all the limonites. Oh, it's got all the brown limonite ore. Yeah, that'll do it. That could be electromagnetically separated because that can create, what is it, nickel or something? Electromagnetic for more iron. And iron is good. So that'll be something that I wait on. Centrifuge as well. Is the centrifuge getting a lot? 
No, it's really not. Oh, well, would you look at that? That's wonderful. Anyways. I'm going to head back up and see what else. I guess I will fix the debacle while I'm at it. I try to, like, be careful about doing too much. I almost feel like I'm afraid to do too much because I feel like then I'll have... I'll get so distracted by the game that I won't be able to, to speak my mind. That, that happens a lot. I, I wind up getting distracted by a lot of things. But I'm going to go down there and fix that. And I think while I'm at it, I'm going to take a look and see how much oxygen is in this oxygen tank. Not this oxygen pipe. Where the oxygen pipe? Where is the oxygen pipe? It's over here. It goes into there. Yes, that's where the oxygen pipe goes. They crisscross. They don't combine. They crisscross. It's got oxygen gas. But there doesn't seem to be any oxygen gas in there. Wonderful. Exactly what I would have hoped for. So there's no oxygen gas in there. That's probably why the system was being all crunky. And I'll fix that. I'm going to get the, put the hydrogen back where the hydrogen is supposed to be. So let's turn that on to extract without signal. Then I can go back over here. I can pull everything out of the tank. After I pull everything out of the tanks over here, I'll push it all back in. Um, don't go in here. Don't go into here. I got too much hydrogen gas in there. Hey, what's going on there, Harry? Welcome. Welcome to Minecraft, where I'm messing, I'm fixing up things that are broken because I broke things. I don't think of the I do not think of things before I do them, which often leads to problems. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing right now. So let's see. You gotta put the oh, it's already pushing in there. Sweet. Is it already pushing? Why aren't you pushing into the pipe? You need to push it to the pipe. Why are you not pushing? Why aren't you pushing into the pipe? Oh, it's filling up. Oh, okay, it's going. It's going. All right, sweet, sweet, sweet. And it shouldn't go in there. I will fix things that are broken. And then, yeah, I don't know what else I'll do. Oh, and then there's that. I gotta, let's see. This is pipe empty, energy pulse. I'll break that and put it all back. I'll need my wrench, won't I? I uh, gotta get my wrench. I gotta get my wrench from storage to be able to fix that problem. Don't you hate it when your oxygen and hydrogen get crossed? Then you get water. I mean, we're not actually getting water here. If I take the hydrogen gas and push it up against oxygen gas, I don't think water forms from that. I'm not sure if that's how that chemical reaction actually works. And if it does... Cool. Chemistry. Why did I have a block on this? I don't know. I'm gonna put it back. Put the gate back on there. If the pipe is... Pipe. Pipe. Pipe empty. Pipe empty. Pipe empty, energy pulsar, yeah. Or rather, if the tank is empty, if the tank is empty, then we'll energy pulsar. Or if it contains less than a certain amount. If it contains less than that, then you can pull it in there. Sure. Oh, the wrong tank. Is this a Spark server? Yes. This is with a Spark server. It wasn't working earlier. I managed to, I, I think I made some changes that actually wound up breaking it. So I had to, I had to fix it earlier this morning. That took me about 40 minutes to fix. But uh, luckily, I'm at a point where I can actually fix my own problems. For the most part. I can fix my own problems now. Yeah. <laughs> well done, indeed. It was like, there was something going on with some uh, mod config files. I had modified the configuration files to add more blocks to the server. And it wasn't complaining for, like, a month. Like, I made these changes, like, a month and a half ago. But mods are finicky. And they can just stop working spontaneously. And so I removed it. Luckily, I hadn't placed any of these new blocks into the world. So when I loaded everything back up, I had made my backups and whatnot, as usual. But when I loaded everything back up, everything loaded just fine. It was the client that was crashing, not the server. So there was nothing wrong with Sparks hardware. I never have pro I usually don't have problems with Sparks hardware. But sometimes I have problems with my own hardware. Pretty easy, pretty easy fix. But I swapped out that config file that was originally there. I don't have any micro blocks anymore. I can't make blocks tiny anymore. But that's okay. I'm just glad it didn't break because of the modifications I had made by adding a mod to it. Because that really would have broken things. That would have definitely broken things if I uh, had not been careful with it. 
this is supposed to be. What color are you? You are brown. This should be uh, green. I need to check the back. Check the back. Which one's got oxygen? Oxygen is up on top. I need to double check to see what signal color that is. What signal color are you, oxygen? Let's go over and check it out. This is... That's blue. Up at the top is green. Yep. All right. That is, that is perfect. And I think... I had to set up correctly. Where's my other one? I can't reach you from down here. I'll have to investigate it up at the top. Gotta investigate up here. So what are you set to? Over in the corner. You are set to active with signal. Indeed. Active with signal. But only on the green signal. There we go. System's fixed. Oh, well, it's not fixed. I need to put the electrolyzer back where it's supposed to be. Whoops. Gotta take... Because I can't, I can't get that nitrogen. Actually, what can I use nitrogen for in an electrolyzer? Anything small? Uh, ski light. Oh, but that's high volt. Yeah, that's... I can't do that. I need to wait for nit hydrogen. The ski light and the tungsten. I've got plenty of ski light and plenty, plenty of tungsten, but I don't have an extreme voltage electrolyzer sp a spare one i don't have one that's spare i do have one downstairs so let me see if i can actually fix that with that Oh, i gotta put that back and put that back and then i gotta put this to the side and then i gotta put on item auto output and then i have to break this limestone tile and fall down and then connect the wire back together simple easy awesome that's what my internet company likes to tell me now it's simple easy and awesome well it's not awesome and it's not simple and there is no way that your phone service is terrible support is not easy they call it easy now because they have an app they have an app to let you control all of your internet stuff and that app is so broken it does not work at all so it's simple it's it's difficult let's see simple easy awesome difficult hard and lacking comcast difficult hard and lacking great company to work for though great to work for but really bad to have service with i think they're improving on that they're when i was on the other side they definitely were attempting to improve their service as best as they possibly can they were getting feedback from customers and there was a whole database of what the feedback was and what the plan changes were and eventually it's just like there's not enough people to implement that stuff plus like the system is so large that it's hard to implement those changes because they're just they're just so big but like that's what we pay them to do we pay them to improve their service right right we gotta hold our corporations accountable for whatever it is that they do they promised me good service well damn i want some good service I also need to check and see if this is still running. Are you still running? You are not still running, so you've run out of battery, right? No, you didn't run out of battery. What's up with that? Oh, you know what? It probably ran out of battery. It ran out of battery, and then the solar panel fixed it back up. That's probably what happened while I was gone. So I've got iron processing right now. Uh, I fixed that over there. I'm going to look into seeing if I can get uh, a nitrogen system set up with my electrolyzer downstairs. I mean, um, in that regard, what I should do is I should move these tanks downstairs because now I'm realizing that I need high voltage electricity in order to do a lot of the things that I do. And I there's no point in having the hydrogen upstairs when it could be downstairs. So, let me see. Is this a... No, it's an advanced chemical reactor. Okay, but not an advanced electrolyzer. This is electro advanced electrolyzer 2. Let me see. Electrolyzer. Are you high enough voltage to be able to do what I want you to do? 120... 120... Oh, 52. 512. So I need an advanced electrolyzer 3 in order to do that. So... I think I've got enough materials for it. It's been a while since I've done something like that. Just use an electra, just a couple of electrum wires and high voltage machine holes and some processor assemblies. Easy. Oh no, that's number two. I need number three. Platinum wires. I can get some 
platinum wires. That's not difficult to do. And then you also need workstations. Workstations are a little harder to do. But I need this eventually. If I want tungsten, I need these. So let's see. In order to create a workstation, I need three processor assemblies. And I need two workstations. So I need so two workstations, six processor assemblies, uh, which all require two plastic boards a piece. So we'll go with four of those in total, total for the boards. I'm writing this all down on a little post-it note I've got. Processor assembly requires two good integrated circuits a piece. Uh, just kidding. Processor assembly requires two integrated processors a piece. So the six times the two is 12 integrated processors and one board for each of them. So uh, that's a total of uh, three, six, six. Six boards for that. And to create the integrated processor, you need your CPUs, one each, and circuit boards, so. All right, let's do it. I need 12. Let's get her done. It's circuit time. Haven't done something like this in a little while. I'm always hesitant. I'm like, do I cover the technical advancements during the stream or out of the stream? Do I do the farming during the stream or out of the stream? And honestly, I might as well just do both. There's benefits to either one. Let's see. I don't have enough plastic circuit boards. So I need plastic circuit boards. But I've got six of them for now, so let's make some more. How do you make it? You take plastic sheets and copper foil. Where's the copper foil? I need some copper foil. I have more copper wires. So I'll go over here, grab some copper, make some foil. And then I'll also grab two pieces of platinum, because I need platinum wire. And I definitely have... I got plenty of platinum, which is great. Because I everything everything that could possibly produce nickel, I make it produce nickel. And I need copper as well to create copper foil. So I'm gonna try to make as much copper foil. Let's see how much how much polyethylene do I have? I have four stacks of polyethylene, so I'm gonna make. I can always get more poly, so I'm gonna take three stacks of this. So I want three stacks of foil. So in order to make three stacks of foil, oh that's not the right one. Three stacks of foil. Copper in the metal bender creates four, so... And then the copper plates get made into ones. One to one. So I need 16 times three pieces of copper. That'll be enough for me. Cop. There. Split, split, split. That's how many... That's how much uh, foil I'll need. And I should get... Set three stacks of that if I throw that into the bending machine. After that, all, that all gets bent. In the meantime, I'll throw the platinum into the wire mill to prepare for the platinum wires. I need more of these. In the meantime, as well, I will also collect the necessary ingredients. Let me get a uh, processor assembly. Processor assembly also need the integrated processor and we also need the workstation uh yeah i think that's it that requires the processor assembly but first integrated processors i need 12 cpus and then fine red alloy wire transistors and capacitors double so i need 24 of each of them so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I just took the whole thing out. Just kidding. I take a stack out of each of them. And then transistors. And I need pieces of CPU. Do I have a lot of CPU? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I don't have a lot of CPU. I can use more CPU. Let's, uh... To create a CPU chip, do I need the clean room at capacity? I don't need the clean room. Um, unless... I cut it from a doped wafer. CPU processing. Yeah, no, no, you need the clean room for the CPU. Okay. And I need to use the glass lens in order to create those. Do I already have CPU units? I may. Nano CPU. Oh, yeah, I got CPU. Let's make your, uh, all I need to do is cut that now. Boop. There we go. That'll get more. That'll get more CPU running in the background. Got the central processing unit there. Got my plastic circuit boards. I need to remove all the gunk from this that collected oh hello oh wrong one there we go take all these guys out and just uh 
I'll throw it all in there. And I need fine red alloy wire. Here's red alloy wire. Let's make some fine red alloy wire. Just kidding, I have a stack of it. Oh, you know what? You can never have you can never have too much. Let's do that. And in the meantime, I'll take a stack of the ones over here. Here. And here we go. Throw it in there. Process. And apparently I have an extra advanced circuit over here. It's pretty cool. And uh, whatever the program circuit there is. So that'll give me about half of what I need because I need more circuit boards. But the copper should be almost finished. Creating all of its bends right now. Almost. Oh, it's out of power because there's no power over here. Righteous. Well, I need... I need energy. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to pop that up. And give you the energy that you require. Now, I guess the steam system really hasn't caught up. It needs to create more steam. It needs more steam. Are you up to boiling temperature yet? You're not? Wow, you're still going with that. Okay. You're still proceeding with churning at the saplings already. Wow. That's a lot. I don't like that. Or do I like that? You know what? I can work with it for now. I can I can work with it. Eventually, steam will begin to be produced. This one's at 84, and these ones aren't. That's because like all the saplings go in there, so these ones don't have a chance. Uh yeah. I need a I need a proper distribution system. This is something that I should improve upon. Because I have six boilers, and most of them are still just like that. Only one of these is going to start producing steam at any point in time because the saplings don't... It uses so many saplings. So these guys don't get... They don't get enough. It's not going to produce steam very fast. <laughs> Maybe that's something to look for into after creating the advanced electrolyzer. The goal today apparently is progress. Much progress as I can possibly do. But I'll throw you back in there. Anytime this thing runs out of battery, all I need to do is just click it with another one. There we go. There we go. Just like that, and I'll just put that back in there. My suit that I'm wearing, my nano suit, can charge batteries with a right click. Which is why it can charge my laser as well. So I will wind up using that. <laughs> Oh, and it was gaining energy because I put the, the charged battery back in here. <laughs> nice. That's almost done plating. I didn't realize I would have to watch that. I was really hoping I wouldn't have to sit here and watch it, but... Eh. Need more steam. I don't have enough steam in the system. And that's because usually that's not empty. But it is empty because I emptied out that one over there. Copper plate. You almost there. Usually the way it's set up is... The main steam tank fuels three other steam tanks. The tiny steam tank, the one over here, takes with it and powers all of the low voltage machinery. And that includes all these machines over here. It powers the, um, the virtual storage system. And it also powers the, basically the machines and the ore processor that allows it to be passed from one pipe to the other. It does, it's all the sorting machines. Sort things into where they need to be. And it also helps by giving energy to the blast furnace over here, which is not only fueled by these low voltage, it, it's connected to the low voltage system in case I ever wanted to use it faster. Now, I'm at a point now where I have enough low, like medium voltage stuff because I, I just fill up this tank over here if I wanted to use any of these machines over here. So I don't need them. So I'm going to cut this because I don't need that uh, in process anymore either. And eventually I'll recycle all those cables and stuff and use them for something else later. But this thing, it's all powered up because it was taking all the energy from the low voltage system, which we don't need that for. And it's still charging or as best as it possibly can. So I don't need that. I really don't need that. So now when more steam comes in, it'll more readily produce energy over here. That's going well. I'm creating my copper foil. And then after which, I will make a bunch of circuit boards. Actually, I might as well start the circuit board running right now. 
It's going to take a little bit for all of it to go, so. One stack at a time. Essentially, what I wind up doing over here is I go over here. It's got sulfuric acid in it. I put polyethylene in it, and I throw the copper foil in there, and it processes. And it makes a bunch of uh, circuit boards. Which is good. This is very good. So uh, what I can do is I can put the rest of the polyethylene in here, and it'll be refilled up with that. Ah, uh, la la. Does this have an output? This one doesn't have an item auto output. Um... But I'd like it to... Nah, I don't, I don't need it to be. I can I can sit there and watch it. I, I mean, I don't really want to sit there and watch it. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to add a chest to it. I am going to add a chest on the side. Chest. So that it's in the right direction. So that when the, the thing is done, it'll spit out when I need it to. Usually it takes sulfuric acid and creates indium concentrate. But it doesn't. it's not doing that right now. It's being used for other things. There we go. I'll take that, and I will put it... I don't know. I'm just going to put this here. It's an extra cable. There we go. I'll take my indoor wrench. I should put this... I keep this pipe wrench in my pocket. Keep the pipe, pipe wrench in my pocket. Put that there. Put it here. Item auto output on. It'll output that over there. Uh, I need the rest of these so I can start the circuits going upstairs while the rest of the copper foil is being made. As well as more circuit boards. There is always a need for more boards. Always a need for more circuit boards. Depending on what kind of circuit board that I need. Depends on the uh, the, the materials I have for it. There are different kinds, types of circuit boards. There's plenty of different types of circuit boards. Those are the ones that I need rubber for. Uh, or rather, specifically, sticky resin. I use sticky resin to create those boards. I need sulfuric acid for this one. And you just kind of... You also need sticky resin for these ones. But these ones really aren't used anymore. These coated circuit boards don't really have a use at this technological level. Okay, so I made my integrated processors. Now, I need to make my processor assemblies, which are not difficult to do. I need small coils, fine red alloy wire, RAM chips, capacitors. I'll keep the capacitors in there, and the red alloy. Take the transistors out, resistor, keep that in there. I need more red alloy. Fill that up as best as I can. That's fine. Uh, coils. I don't have a lot of, I don't have any coils, do I? I don't have any coils. Ah, damn you. I need more coils. All right. It's fine. And what else do I need for those? I want to put everything that I need for it in there already. Small coils and RAM chips. So I need more RAM chips. More chippies. More chippies of RAM. You must download more RAM. You know, when I was looking at... When I was launching up Minecraft before, there was... um. Uh, CurseForge was telling me about how, oh, it had upgraded, and now it uses less CPU usage. Like, I'm sure it does, pal. It should. You should make things optimized in whatever way. Optimized in the sense that it doesn't lag out other programs while it's open. But, so they're like, oh, now you don't have to worry about your RAM uses as much, but you know you could always download more RAM, and it linked you to the download more RAM page. And the last I checked, when you download more RAM from the download more RAM website, it downloads malware. <laughs> So, like, I don't know why they have a link to that. I was going to test it myself. I was just like, is this actually what I think it is? And so I was going to download. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to potentially... I mean, if that's the case and they have a link to malware in the thing like that... I don't know. I, I don't like that. I, I don't like that move. I, I, might just not, I might just not be up to date as to uh, what things need to be. Perhaps, maybe download more RAM is still a joke site. In the sense that it's not actually going to harm your computer. I wouldn't know. I don't plan on taking the chance. I'm too wary of that stuff. Too wary of the downloads. There you go. Put it in there. Neko, hello there. How are you today? Happy Friday. I hope you are doing very well. It's been a nice chill thing. I've been doing rather well. Anna's off at class right now. She's doing her, um... Let's see, I think she's taking a test right now, so I hope she's doing well. She popped in here just a little bit ago. Just to say hi. And I was like, good luck. To make sure she's doing alright. She's been very stressed out about things, so I hope everything winds up going, going well for her. 
I should hope so, at least. I had the esteemed opportunity to be able to help her study with a couple of things. There's a lot of, there's a lot of information you gotta know as a PT. Or rather for your ortho, or, uh, ortho? I don't remember what ortho stands for. Ortho something, ortho whatevers. I'm not exactly sure. But so for the ortho class, there's a lot for the ortho class, for the neuro class and all that stuff. It's crazy. You already know all the questions that you're gonna ask. Everybody's always, I'm always, everybody's always wondering what the dearest is up to. I'm always wondering what the dearest is up to. And I usually know what's going on, except when she leaves for like a weekend. And then I'm like, she's gone. I don't know what happened to her. She's just off doing her own thing. Usually it's studying. Usually the answer is studying nowadays. But, uh, or at least on that, attempting to, as, as best as we can, kind of going through everything that she has to do. I very much kind of don't really have... I, I say I don't have much to do. That's lying to myself. I do have much to do. I just need to put it all in front of me. Like, I don't have people telling me that I need to do things now because school is over. So, like, now that school is over for me, I have to, like, come up with my own goals. So I do have a lot to do. I am a very busy person. However, I just need to figure out what it is that I need to make myself busy with, if that makes any sense at all. I need steel bolts and fine copper wire to create these, or nickel zinc ferrite bolts. Don't have nickel zinc ferrite. So we're gonna go with steel. We're gonna go with steel bolts. How many steel bolts do I have over here? I have 27 steel bolts. I need fine copper wire. So I'm gonna go with that. I need... I have copper wire. Let's make fine copper wire. Fine, you want copper wire? I'll give you copper wire. Actually, do I have copper wire over here? I have two stacks of it. So, let's go with that. Take that out of that inventory, put it all in there. And then throw that into uh, the assembler, I think, right? Coil is assembler. It's just one after the other. Nope, that was the wrong one. You made some pretty drastic changes to your channel. Really? I haven't, I haven't been on recently. Uh, I will admit that I have yet to click on the notification a couple of times. What kind of changes have you made? I made a couple of changes over here as well. I've got my bots working a little bit well, as well as I have an ending screen now, which is useful, as well as kind of upping my thumbnail game. You're a VTuber. Congratulations. And some new overlays as well. Congratulations on your YouTube ship. I'll make sure to pop in next time to see, to see the model. There, uh, my um, um, my future brother-in-law is also a VTuber, and so I, I follow this one person on, I think it's TikTok or whatever, I think. I think I follow this one person on TikTok who gives, like, the most up-to-date, like, VTube technology, and I'm like, that's so cool, and I want to know about this stuff. There's a lot of technology that goes into stuff like that, and so it very much impresses me to just kind of see it all in works today. You'll be streaming today, Well, if I, depending on what time I end out. I'm a little, depending on what time I end out today, I have D&D &D at 3.30, and I have work stuff to do at 5. So I don't know how long that I will be going with this, but if there's any time in between, I'll be sure to pop in and see how things are going. I do like to see stuff like that. I'm always interested to see, like, what kind of, like, uh, what, what kind of, uh, whatever it is. Whatever, like, the aesthetic design changes that they would be. Or whatever they, they may be. It's interesting to see, like, what kind of stuff is included in the model. Like, I know my future my future brother-in-law, he had, like, he's kind of got that, he's got, a, he made himself, like, a, a sweatshirt that's reminiscent of one of his um, favorite Twitch streamers. And it says, like, stay comfy on it. I think, I think the V, I think the streamer is Lily Pichu. I think that's her, that's her thing. Stay comfy. I have a stay comfy shirt as well that, that he had bought for me. And I was like, I love this. I love to stay comfy all the time. This is perfect for me. I love it. But D and D should be fun. I think it's been a hot minute since we had um, since we had D and D. We were kind of um, we we've been a little like the entire group has been like rather uh, busy. So I really haven't had a chance to kind of all get together and play in a little while. But this will be a nice short session. Everybody busy with their stuff and whatnot. Lily Pizzu, doesn't she make music? I don't really know. I don't watch her personally. Uh, that's a little that's a little too that's a little too big. Like, I like, I like small, I like small communities, small things that I feel like I'm, like, feel like I'm important on. So, uh, I don't really, I, I don't, I don't, just not my kind of, not my kind of channel, I guess. I mean, I really haven't given it, you know what, I, I should take that back. I don't really know what she's all about. So, I wouldn't, I shouldn't say that she's not my kind of streamer because I haven't really checked her out. I don't even know if she's my kind of streamer. It is, it is, a, I will say though for sure, like, it's a rather, like, large base, 
and I almost feel intimidated by like how many people are there. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I haven't yet checked out so far. Although honestly, like whenever it's on and I'm hanging with my younger you know, brother-in-law, like I kind of sit there and hang with it and whatnot. So I feel that. Yeah, it's okay. You don't watch a lot of big streamers as well either. I don't know. I kind of feel like if I'm going to be a part of the... Like, I, I think of it this way. Like, being a part of a large streamer's chat is the same... It feels the same way as if you were in a, a, at a concert. In the sense that you're not going to get any recognition from the people up on stage unless you're, like, the lucky one that gets picked out of the crowd. However, that doesn't stop me from going to concerts, I suppose. So really, it shouldn't stop me from going to big... Like, if I'm entertained by what's going on, I will absolutely stick around. I don't exactly know... Again, like, I haven't really taken the chance to check out and see, like, what she's all about. And I don't know if the content is entertaining or not. Or, as well, if they're big and you just want to support the people that are up there. Like, some of the bands that I listen to, like, I'm not necessarily even there for the show. I just want to support you for your content. So I'll hang around with the crowd while everybody else is screaming and yelling. Like, I totally understand that. However, honestly, I, I guess I feel differently about the streaming space. And I don't know why I feel differently about that. I don't think I should feel differently about that. I feel like I should kind of, uh, I kind of uh, uh, equate, like, big name streamers to, like, a concert band. Versus something like, um, versus something like this, where it's small, there's not much going on. It's kind of like a, like a, I would think it like, I don't know what kind of show to equate that to, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I'm not really sure. You kind of did that at Warp Tour. I never got the opportunity to go to Warp Tour. That's the one I think Warp Tour is done now, right? That's one of the ones that is over and done with, I think. Or or maybe it's that was the one that was sponsored by Vans, I think. I never got a chance to go to that. I know uh my fiance's really, really good friend uh always went to Warp Tour. Only cross country is done. Ah, okay. But I know they used to go to, I think it was the Warp Tour one. And Anna's been to Warp Tour at least once. I know. But um, she and her really good friend, she and her best friend used to go. And I think they went to the last one. And that was it. I don't, I don't really know. I haven't kept up with it. Last I heard, they weren't doing anything. But if they're only doing the cross-country one, then all right. That's wonderful. I always liked that type of music. That was something that, like... When I when I first met Anna's good friend, who they had gone to the the, the concerts and whatnot together, uh, one of the reasons that we kind of bonded was because we were both kind of into that type of music, or uh, at least that was that was what I was listening to at the time. I'm not really listening to that stuff right now. I just haven't been in the mood for it. I gotta be in the right mood for that type of punky type stuff that's the stuff that i listen to when i go out running because like when i go running i want to feel angry and at the world and so i put the music in my ear that's like punk rock and stuff like that and so that's what helps me motivate me to run it helps it really does processor assembly now for the workstation i need the processor assemblies i need the electrum wire and i need the ram chips i got the ram chips i don't need those i'll throw those back where they need to be i don't need the red alloy while you're there, uh, I can put these back in the assembler. This wood pulp ret. Oh, stop! Stop! Wait a minute. What are you doing? How did you? That was the wrong machine. Shit! Now I have creosote oil. That was a problem. I can use it in the assembler for torches. That's cool. That's annoying. I didn't mean to do that. Oh well. That's uh, that's a problem for another day. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. <laughs> Whatever. I'll fix that eventually, just not right now. But I do need that. I need my diodes. I need four diodes each, so give me, give me, give me, give me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, eight, eight. Eight diodes to throw into the circuit assembler. Lovely. Lovely, 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 lovely. What else do I need in there? I need Electrum. I need electrum wire. Do I have electrum wire? I do. Perfect. Throw that into there. And that's the final piece. And then I get the workstations. And I already have the platinum wire. Awesome. Now I need a high voltage machine hole for the advanced electrolyzer 3. And I need an aluminum cable. So I need one piece of aluminum in cable form. Awesome. So I'm going to do... 
Let me cast grab a piece of aluminium. I'm gonna put that into my wire mill. I'm gonna get a piece of rubber because I only need one. Or rather, do I have any extra cables in here? No, I don't. So that's fine. I'll take... I might as well wrap them both up. Two things of rubber bar. This is over here. I need to wind up breaking that thing over there. I gotta use my assembler now. I gotta break it. I have to break my assembler to fix it. There's no place for creosote all. Advance the assembling machine. Broken. That's fine. Now just put it back together. Put it back here. Connect it back over here. Switch the direction, please. Switch direction. Thank you for switching direction. Item auto output. And that's auto inserting. So perfect. That's all fixed now. I can put the circuits back in here. And whatever else fell into my inventories. Where did the other... There you go. Well, I certainly don't need you all anymore. Put that there, put that there. I need the aluminum ingot. That'll become aluminum wire. Did I have any in here, actually? Did I have any aluminum cable? I don't think I did. Cool. I did not. I don't need that no more. And then I just need the rubber bar. Right? Yeah, that's all I needed. Spare aluminum cable. Just one. Electrolyzer, I have that. I have those pieces. I have those two pieces. I need a piece of glass and an extreme voltage electrum, uh, extreme voltage machine casing. And for that, I need two pieces of. I need more aluminum cables. Look at that. I need another piece of aluminum. So I'll go grab that. And another piece of rubber as well. Alu? Aluminium? I need the rubber. I'll take two of those. I also need a piece of titanium. Do I have any titanium in here? I do have at least one piece of titanium. That's good. Um, and I also need two pieces of polyethylene. I'll go, I'll go grab that. Gotcha. Let's see what else there is. Bench electrolyzer, extreme machine voltage. That's how you make... Oh, actually, I don't even need that extra piece of titanium. Oh, I need eight pieces of titanium for this, don't I? Molten poly in that. To make it into that. I need that with full pieces. Ah, I do need all the titanium. I am titanium. So I need to use all my titanium. Looks like I need more titanium. Alrighty then. I can work with that. Give me this battery. Fill you up. Put you in here. Please make my titanium plates, please. And I'll be back in a little bit. While I go process these aluminum cables. Throw that in here. Come out the other side. I'll melt my rubber for now. Put it over here, and boom. More than them cables. Now I got three. But I only need two. That and the polyethylene. Actually, I'll keep the... If I keep the cables over here, and the polyethylene here, I should be able to throw the machine casing in there right after I finish it. I get to save one piece of titanium. Perfect. Exactly what I was hoping for. Now I'll take the battery over here and put it back. Make this into a casing. Scan the titanium plate because I know I haven't scanned that before since I lost all my magic data. There's always problems with this. I always wind up getting problems with this server, but lo and behold, I wind up figuring it out eventually. One after the other. Kind of guy who fixes things. If I break things, we fix things. I have to fix things. Creeper outside my door. Not helping in the fixing aspect of things. Put that in there. I've got my extreme voltage thing. I'll put you guys back to where you need to be. Back with the Electrum. And back with the plastic circuit boards. Now I have all the pieces. All the pieces of the puzzle. Oh, I need my workstations. There we go. Scan the both of these. That'll give me a lot of aspects to research with. And the workstation. Electric. Aluminum, platinum wire, copper wire. Don't need the copper wire over here. Put that back. Oh, and a new piece of glass. Don't forget the piece of glass. That'll be the last thing that I need. Glass. And that will be my Advanced Electrolyzer 3, which I will be able to use to extract tungsten, which is a next level material. And there's good. And electrolyzer here. Sweet! That is the second extreme voltage machine that I have created. 
So I can officially say that I think we're moving on to the... I think we're moving up to the next level. Finally moving up to the next voltage tier. Which is cool. It's been a while since I've gone up to there. I think I wound up... We started off at Steam and over on the other island advanced to... Um, the Bronze Age, basically, like the low voltage Bronze Age, and then into the low voltage materials. We were just getting on the cusp of medium voltage over on the other side before I moved over here and then started doing um, high voltage materials. And I don't really need to use high voltage machines very often. Honestly, medium voltage machines are where it's at. But I know my... Actually, this over here, the advanced assembling machine is at... Yeah, that's high voltage, ain't it? Was that high voltage? I think so. What are the what, what were the high voltage recipes for this? Or extreme voltage? I don't think there were many. Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. Uh let's see. That's extreme voltage. That's extreme voltage. That is also as well. The field generator. Extreme voltage. Uses osmium. I've never created one of those. I do not have osmium. An ultimate hand pump. Interesting. That's for spraying CF foam. I don't know what CF foam does, though. I think it's just a way to fill in gaps. If you ever needed an easy way to fill in gaps, it's like foam. It's foam. It's expandable foam. That's what, exactly what it is. Uh, what else here is extreme voltage level? Basically, anything above 512 volts is extreme voltage. Pants? There's pants? Thermal padding boots. Okay. Cyclotron coils. I know cyclotron was actually... That's one of the machines that I experimented with in creative mode because there's really there's not a lot of documentation on it and i was mentioning before i'm now part of a couple of um greg tech community servers to figure out how things are going and one person somebody apparently figured out how to use this thing and uh, it doesn't have a lot of uses but it works apparently also the cyclotron outer casing outer casings whatever that control circuit is i don't know and this is high voltage stuff so i definitely had a high voltage so i didn't have good good good, good. very very good what was the quantum? I, I saw a quantum eye in there. What is the quantum eye used for? I know I got a quantum eye before, but I don't remember what it was used for. What is it used for? It's for the field generator, um, qubit wafers, and, as well as the field generator, and that was it. Oh, okay. I guess that was something else that I must have seen then. Cute. But now that I have this extreme voltage electrolyzer, I need... I need something to power it with. So I guess over here is where my regular electrolyzer is, and this is kind of this is where my system is. So this is an advanced electrolyzer. So I'm gonna modify this system over here to be able to accept something else. So I'm gonna wind up recycling this. I'll take you out. I'll make make your cables up. Kind of cut those cables. I won't be able to use it for very long, but it'll work. I think I'll have a high voltage battery buffer. I don't think. Are extreme voltage batteries a thing? Like, I know I can make an extreme voltage battery buffer, but I don't think extreme voltage batteries are a thing, are they? Your voltage is 8,192. That ain't gonna work. What about you guys? You're 248. Quad cell batteries are indeed a thing. So I want to know how to make quad cell batteries. So how to do that? I'm gonna make some quad cell batteries. I've never had to make any of these before. Quad cell sodium... Uh, all these other things. I don't have a lot of lithium. I'm, I'm gonna still keep with sodium batteries for now. How much sodium do you need? How do you... Oh, wow. Look at that. And that can store a lot of voltage. Let me see how much voltage it takes to uh, centrifuge or electrolyze the tungsten. state. It takes 230,000. And for these, for sodium, that's 33.2 million. I need my calculator. Where's my calculator at? Where's my calculator? Where are my calculators? Can I, most, can I place my calculator? Oh, there you are. Back there. There we go. There we go. So let's do... 32,000,000 divided by... Uh... Two, three, zero, four hundred. That equals thirteen. So it would take an entire battery, essentially, or about an entire battery for two of these recipes. Oof. So yeah, I think I need to make a bunch of batteries. 
So I guess the next thing we'll do is we'll look at the quad cell batteries as well as a uh, extra uh, battery buffer. I need battery buffer, but what do you call them? You call them low voltage battery buffer, extreme voltage, extreme voltage battery buffer. Extreme voltage battery buffer. Various different slots. And how many slots can I give it? How, what are you asking me for? You're asking for aluminum wire. I can make a big aluminum wire. I can do that. But we also need more extreme voltage machine holes for those. So I need more titanium. Okay. This will be a bit of a challenge. And I bet for the quad cells as well, they also need... You need high voltage. So that's just sterling... That's just... um. Oh, high voltage transformer needs coils as well. High voltage machine hole uses uh, stainless steel. Need more of that material too. This is going to be tough. And large sodium batteries. And you just kind of put a bunch of large sodium batteries together. Oh, uh, okay, okay. That's not going to be fun. That's not going to be fun at all. Oh, let's plan for it. We'll plan for it. I need large sodium batteries. Let's see. My music stop. Better not have stopped my music. I'm telling you, Spotify, I'll get you. No, okay. The music's still going. We're playing Warmth by C418. Nice. Oh, and apparently a band that I follow has released a new album. The band is a Canadian band called Mother Mother, and they just released a full new album called Inside. I like their music. Their music is very good. That's another one of those, like, punk alternative bands that I listen to that gets me all amped up and ready to take on the world. Sort of. It's also a little, uh, it's one of those, they've got some music too that kind of keeps me in my head. Which is good and bad in its own ways. Where's that Enderman? Is there a Menderman over here? Is there a Menderman somewhere? Where the Menderman's at? Where's the Menderman? Hi there, Menderman. So I guess in the meantime, what I should do is this was where my medium voltage battery buffer is. Um, I should move this to a different location because I'm going to be putting converters up there to hold things. Let me get my wire cutter. Let me change this around a little bit. These are neo copper cables. Uh, is there another one? That's the, oh shit, that's the advanced arc furnace. Whoops, did not mean to do that. That was not the one that I had intended to be. Okay. So connect those together. And put that back here. Put that back there. So my electrolyzer was over here. So I need these to be going elsewhere. And that's where my thing is. I'm going to be putting a battery buffer there. And that's the extreme... That's going to be the extreme voltage battery buffer right below the extreme voltage electrolyzer. Below that is going to be a high voltage transformer, and below that is going to be a medium voltage transformer. Yes. So I need a couple of different transformers. So I'll need that all on each side, meaning I think I'll also need some more of these. Medium voltage transformer to go up. Cool. That's the chemical reactor, though. Do I really use that chemical reactor for anything? I guess I do. Yeah, I guess I use that for things. But I'm going to need some more annealed copper cables. Specifically these large ones. Because this is going to be using a lot. A lot of power. Let me see if I got any more over here. Copper cables. Copper cables. No. No one near copper cables. That's fine. So I'll just need copper wire. Or I need copper dust. And then annealed copper uh, stuff. Yeah, I got, I got this. I got this. And to anneal the coppers... Actually, can I just put the regular ingot in there? Do I need to waste my time dusting it? Or can I just take a piece of copper and throw it in here and anneal it? Yeah, I can just do that. And then I get annealed copper cable. Nice. Oh, but I have no... Oh my god, I have no oxygen up here. It's okay. Good thing I really don't need a lot of it. I'll see... I'll see how much this will get me. And we'll take it a step further from there. But in the meantime... I think extreme... Let's see, battery... 
things. They can take it all on either side. So I need to connect this from the back. That will be the buffer. That'll be transformer number one. And then below will be transformer number two. So how do I get the most bang from my buck? Honestly, if I put that here and that there, and then I put another cable here and then another cable there. So I just need two more annealed copper cables times 12. So in total, I need 12 pieces of annealed copper. And then you just put them all together. And I think I probably already have 12, right? Yep, you're good. Is that, you're gonna do okay? Yeah, you're doing great. Might as well keep some annealed copper cables. So we, give me 12, give me 12. We'll put that into our wire mill. All in the name of the Extreme Voltage Electrolyzer. That's what we got going on here. It is almost the end of morning. Almost the end of morning. So I'm going to change things such that we are practicing. We are, we are doing... What are we doing now? We're on the journey for tungsten. Extracting tungsten. Extracting tungsten in extreme voltages. I like that. I like that. I like that very much. And I'm gonna call this... Should I call this... Call this engineering? I feel like I'd call this engineering based. Uh, programming, engineering, analysis, design. Design? Nah, it's engineering. I'd say it's technological. I consider this engineering. I'm not engineering something myself, but it's technologically inclined. I feel that. Neil copper wire. I need to bush those up into fours and then into threes. No, just kidding. Okay. One and then again, another one. Then we combine them both together for 12. And then I need however many pieces of rubber that I need. I don't remember. So I'm going to collect some rubber. Rub, 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 rubber. Good thing I got plenty of rubber in here. I can't believe I need more titanium, though. I need to work on getting some more titanium. And I think the way to get titanium is the best way to do it. I got to put it into the hot titanium. But we need titanium dust. And I can do that with magnesium and titanium tetrachloride. Oh, I need titanium tetrachloride. That's what I need. That's what I need. And I don't currently have that. That's how you extract it. I can also take purified titanium ore, but there is no titanium ore. Not really. Can I get... Actually, is there a way to get titanium ore? From, like, maybe a sag mill? Because if there is, I want to know. No, not really. You just need titanium. You just need titanium ore. That makes sense. But to get titanium tetra... Let's see. Titanium tetrachloride. Oops. Whoopsie. Need that from the hammer. Whoops. Here, there, from the hot, where'd you go? There you go. Hot titanium ingot. Uh, magnesium tetrachloride can be made by mixing up in a chemical reactor. Rutile, carbon, and chlorine. That's what I use my chlorine for, and I get carbon monoxide and stuff out of that as well. Or, or I don't even do that, and I just, I don't, I don't need carbon monoxide. I just need titanium tetrachloride and then you put that into the furnace with magnesium to rip out the titanium how much rutile do i get do i have i'll pull out the rutile after i do this little thing over here i think it takes how much do we need in the advanced assembling machine assembling machine assembling machine assembling machine assembling machine assembling machine oh assembler duh i was looking for machine I want to make these. That's what I want. Molten rubber, three. It looks like I need three or four. I think it's four. One, two, three, four. Let's see if I was right about that. Is it four or five? It is four. Wonderful. One, two, three, four. Do the same thing again. Do that. Put it inside. Get big cables out. Now I have just enough. Uh, I got to go downstairs. I have just enough for what I've got in mind. Every once in a while, I either stick with the easy stuff for like cables are easy to do. Cables are easy. Um, the big machines are not. So, 
then I'll have the bu the buffer, that, and then that. I'd rather do, I'd rather do the buffer, the trans and the transformers first, because after I do that, I'll at least have a place for the energy she can start collecting. Excuse me. Then I'll work on the batteries, and in the meantime, I will work on the batteries. Um, they'll be processing in the background. There's not much that I'll be able to do with that though, because. <laughs> I don't have any steam. But it should work well for a while. How much battery L <coughs> How many battery alloy ingots do I have? Quite a few of them. Those need to be plates. So I'll make them into plates. Let me determine how many pieces of battery alloy I need for each quad cell battery. You require large sodium batteries. Large sodium batteries are made with large battery holes. Each one of those are made by assembling nine battery alloy plates together. So nine times four is 36. 36 battery alloys for every quad cell battery. So let's see, 36 times, I want four of these batteries for now. Uh, so nine times four times four equals 144. Do I have 144? I don't think I do have 144 battery alloy. I think I come just a little bit short. Battery, I have... Okay, 139. So I need a little more battery alloy. So I might as well make some more. And then... How many stacks is that? Minus 64, minus 64 equals 16. So I do need uh, five more. And to create battery alloy... How do it create battery alloy? Battery alloy? It's created in the... Alloy smelter with, I think it's antimony and lead. Antimony and lead. Yep. Or maybe it's antimony. I, I never knew. Antimony. We'll take 16 of those. Don't need a lot of battery alloy. Just enough. And lead. Oh, I need more lead. I should go mining for galena. That's another resource that I should be collecting. Maybe I do that in a bit. Yep. You go after each other. Cool. Make some battery alloy. I should be able to, I think they make five at once, so... Yep, that's all I needed. These all need to be turned into plates. I don't think steam has started collecting yet. These batteries certainly aren't charged. Uh... uh. Have we been getting steam? Yes, steam is being produced, thank goodness. And eventually, all will be well. I forgot to deposit my experience before after my mining trip. So I'll go and do that. What else we got going on here? Better right away. Right. Right. Been filling up these battery buffers? I thought they were. Oh, you know what? It's probably filling up the battery buffer on the other side first, right? Yeah. So energy is coming through. Hopefully this will work without me having to worry about it. Because there is steam being made. There should be enough energy for it. Nope, it's not. Okay. That's unfortunate. Alrighty then. So be it. Put the battery thing in there. As much as you need. That is going to take quite a while. Battery alloy takes a long time to function. It takes a long time to do its thing, which is really unfortunate. But that's okay. The batteries aren't the top priority right now. The top priority is attempting to... I need those converters and the, bu the buffer itself. I made the annealed cables. I put them in the spot that they need to be in cool what's next i need various different types of transformers transformer what kind of transformer i need i need to go from medium voltage to high voltage and then from high voltage to extreme voltage so those are the battery buffers those are the transformers okay so a high voltage and medium voltage. medium voltage can go from medium to high and then high voltage so let's do the medium voltage one first You'll need an aluminum casing. I know. And you'll need stainless steel. So I need eight pieces of aluminum, eight pieces of stainless steel. Which all need to be bent into place. That's fine. Stainless? Alright, this is gonna be... I need more stainless steel, too. Well, I have nine of this right here. So I might as well throw that into my thing over here while it still has energy left over. Stainless steel used to be, like, pretty... Honestly, all of the higher voltage materials are kind of hard to come by and they can be rather difficult 
Hell, I'm spending all this effort just to make tungsten. Tungsten itself shouldn't be that difficult to get. I mean, aluminum is not that difficult to get. Stainless steel is an alloy, so you need to make sure you have enough. Chrome is like the main hard ingredient in there, or like the toughest ingredient to get a hold of, because you need to get it from Ruby. It's a byproduct of uh, the Ruby processing chain. The titanium is also difficult. That's a whole. That's a whole hullabaloo to get titanium. Let's see about these. You've probably already run out of energy. You've almost run out of energy. Well, I need to do to something more important for me. Aluminum. See if you wouldn't mind doing that, and then I'm going to ask you to do stainless steel as well. There we go. Cool. I'm going to give you a new battery before I walk away for a little bit longer. I'll put you over here. Slowly but surely sapping my own... Oh, uh, did I... Yeah. Slowly but surely sapping my own suit and its energy, but it's what needs to be done. All right, so now I have almost all those plates. Got all those plates. Gonna turn those into machine holes. I need to figure out which wires they take. I think the high voltage one takes a gold wire. Uh, this one takes something else. What is this? Copper cable. Copper cable, and the other one takes a gold wire, right? Gold cable. Yep. So I need a piece of gold, a piece of copper. Gold! Gold, I say. And I've got enough rubber to be able to create the cables from that. And then I'll grab polyethylene on the other side. Oh, uh, I should grab the polyethylene first, actually. It'll sit in my inventory for a little bit. I might need quite a bit of poly. Let me just grab that. Put it in my inventory. I'll come back for it later. Go here. I need... Oh. So you need to be doing that. I need two pieces of the copper. Already had some gold wire in there. Perfect. That and copper. One, two, three, four. Put it in there there and again did that that glitch i have two gold cables and i have copper cables i have four copper cables why do i have four copper cables i guess i had some extra huh that looked like it glitched out for a moment all right medium voltage machine casing uh and the copper and i need the pieces of poly where do pieces of poly at? Probably in here. Poly, poly, poly. Poly in my pocket. I think I need four, one for each. Yep, and then same thing. Yes. Now I have the machine holes. All you need is imagination to use a machine hole. Imagination and a little bit of drive. I think we got drive. I think we have the drive to move on. I certainly have the drive to improve things. I am always looking to improve things. Such as the state of my stomach, in which case I will eat a banana. Because there was one left over. This is a pretty thick banana. Now that is a nice banana. I think it goes well with the tea, too. Banana and ginseng. It's alright. I think that goes pretty well. So now that I've got these battery buffers, I need to make them into the actual transformers themselves, which just requires more cables. This one needs um, aluminum and gold. Uh, I have one aluminum cable already, so lucky me. I have some gold cable over here as well. And I also need small coils, which I also have as well. Put that in there. One, two, three, four. Throw that in there. I need two coils. Doop, doop. Aluminum. Gold. Put my high voltage battery buffer or uh high voltage machine hole here. And then the two pieces of coil. High voltage transformer. Sweet! I also need the machine hole. Did I? This is medium voltage machine hole. Yeah, no, no, I did, I did that right. Cool. And then for the other transformer, we'll need 
piece of gold cable, only one, and then four copper cables. And I apparently already have half of those, so cool. There's that. Give me a gold. Give me a copper. Wonderful. Put them both in here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boop, boop, kadoop. Oh, there we go. There's the gold. There's more copper. That's perfect for the other one. One, two, three, four. And that. Then we'll do like the high voltage transformer. Don't need that. And the medium voltage machine hole. Scan the both of them. Because I don't think I've scanned those before. What else have we got? Tasty. I'm gonna put a fake block. Um, no, okay, just kidding. I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna put the transformers into place. So the way that's gonna work is I'm gonna put the medium voltage transformer here. Hopefully it doesn't get connected to anything. Yep, cool. And then the high voltage transformer there. I need my soft mallet to switch the modes. You take in medium voltage and put out high voltage. You take in high voltage and put out extreme voltage. So what direction do I want you to face, face in? You want to be facing towards the high voltage transformer. Oh, toward the high voltage transformer. And you need to be facing upwards for when we get the extreme voltage battery buffer. Now, if I connect you together... You should be creating power. There shouldn't be any explosions, I hope. And if there is an explosion... Yikes! I'll just have to rebuild it. There shouldn't be, so long as all the voltages are matched. And now I have the high voltage transformer looking upwards to transmit extreme voltage to the extreme voltage battery buffer. So now I need... the extreme voltage battery buffer. And in order to create... The extreme voltage battery buffer i need titanium i need at least eight pieces of titanium i'm gonna go and check out my battery alloy first see how that's going out of power no problem i'll get you right up there you go keep on going lots of battery alloy now i need the titanium so in order to create titanium i need rutile and carbon carbon i don't have a lot of carbon dust apparently interesting i can fix that Rutile? I don't have a lot of rutile dust. Oh, that's not good. Okay, I thought I had more rutile. I was wrong. Where do we get rutile from? Nope, that's not rutile. Rutile comes from... Uh, Oh, ilmenite. That's what I need. Ilmenite and carbon. So I need more carbon dust. Ilmenite, specifically I need. Ilmenite? Got plenty of ilmenite. I need more carbon dust. To create more carbon dust, what's the best way to create more carbon dust? I'll keep the rutile... I'll keep the rutile on me, actually. Uh, how to make more carbon dust? What's the best way to make more carbon dust? Graphite. Nice. In a sag mill. But I don't want to use too much of the sag mill right now. I can make carbon ingots? Why? That's a thing? I don't think that has any use. I can electrolyze charcoal dust to create that. And that takes 0.6 seconds. And guess who's got a bunch of charcoal that's what i'll do you can also use, i know you can also use diamond dust as well but like why would i waste the dust of diamonds on char carbon when i've got all this charcoal laying around let's make four stacks of it i also thought too that there might be a way to create um industrial diamonds automatedly because you can create industrial diamonds with coal and if you have coal, you can you can turn it into coal dust and whatnot. If I like, you know, what if I can do this with charcoal? And you can't make industrial diamonds from charcoal dust, or carbon dust for that matter. You gotta wait on that. So let's do. You go into an electrolyzer. So I'm not gonna add an output. I'm gonna grind up all this charcoal, and then find. There's an electrolyzer down here. Yes or no? There's an electrolyzer over there. Yes. You'll grind that all up. Now I go to the charcoal dust, do it again, and while you're doing that, I'm going to go over to the electrolyzer and just let it do its thing. Right? You're the electrolyzer I was using before. That's a chemical reactor. Just kidding. You're an electrolyzer. Item gets auto output. So, uh, 
Go for it. Nice, and all the coal dust should come out the other end. That doesn't take very long at all. Nice. PB and J time. Grab that, put it in there, go on back. I'll just do that a couple of times until I get more carbon dust. It'll eventually find its way into the systems. Charcoal dust. I go back and do that a couple more times. I think one of my favorite parts about playing this particular mod pack is the fact that it just makes me feel like I'm making progress. In the, wor in the world now that I have to kind of figure out what my own goals are, and there's not just somebody wavering a, waving a grade over my head saying, you want this? You're going to have to do what I tell you to. It's all about, I feel like, I feel like it's all about trying to figure out your own motivation to do things. Like, technically, that's, that's what you need to have when you kind of get out in the world like that. Like, if you don't have the motivation to, for example, search for a job, you're probably not going to search for a job. If you don't get the motivation to, like, do your hobbies, then you may not pick up a hobby. Motivation and being able to initiate stuff like that is something that I've always, always struggled with. But, like, slowly but surely, kind of like what I mentioned before, is I'm always figuring out things to keep myself busy with. Um, I don't need all this. So I try to keep myself busy with stuff that will... I don't know if it'll turn into something more than that one day. I mean, one of the things that you gotta, you gotta, gotta be worried about is whether or not you're making money. Or not even whether or not you're making money. It's whether you're living within your means. And living within your means might not involve any money at all. Or it might involve such little money. Like, if you're living at your parents' house and they're not charging you rent, you don't need the income of money to be able to do things. However, you know, maybe you need enough, I don't know, maybe you need enough time in order to do all the chores that your parents are asking you to do in, in, um, in exchange for you hanging at their house for so long. Uh, maybe something like that. Or um, if you're living out off the grid or whatever, and you're completely self-sufficient, you need to live within your means. You can't just destroy the environment around you because you wanted to use all the stuffs. Um, but I feel like if you're living self-sufficient, you're probably already aware of that. Put the Ilmen that dust into the blast furnace. Ilmen that dust in the thingies. Carbon and Ilmen that. Go get them. I don't remember how much energy that takes. I don't have a lot of energy. Oh, yeah, I guess I do have a lot of energy over here. Hmm. Well, this should be filling up with steam, right? This is slowly but surely filling up. Yes, it is. That's good. That's good. I don't remember how much energy this takes, but that should give me a bunch of rutile out the other side. It requires 400,000 a piece, so it's not going to give me a lot of rutile, but whatever whatever it gives me, I will take, because I then need that rutile to create titanium. In the meantime, rutile needs to be chemically reacted with the carbon, with chlorine, to create, um, to create titanium tetrachloride. I don't think... Does this use oxygen to run i don't think it does right i hope not okay cool it doesn't this currently doesn't have any oxygen in it, so i'm just gonna get this prepped up and ready for when it creates titanium tetrachloride i'm gonna do the math here one more time as well the rutile and the carbon combination and the chlorine will create 1000 liters of titanium tetrachloride you need a thousand uh what is that rob Weber pulp i can do that that's interesting uh in the Blast furnace. I need 1,000 of those to two pieces of magnesium for one titanium ingot and magnesium uh, magnesium chloride, which can just be e electrolyzed back out again. So, I need, need that rutile. Put the rutile in here. Put my... Where'd my carbon dust go? Oh, I need more carbon dust. Duh. Completely forgot. You need more carbon. You need a lot of carbon. Good thing I've got it. There we go. Whole stack of that would probably be just fine. Now I just wait for that to run out of energy, basically. So long as I get three more Rutile Dust out of it, I'm good for this run. I'm good. Put that in there. I'll need to pull from here. I need my pickaxe so I can choose what comes out or what goes in. 
Um, yeah, let's just fill that up with chlorine. Let's see about that. I pull... Please don't. Don't, don't do that. Don't do this. It's currently auto auto extract only when without signal. Let's just let's just disable you. Let's just disable you for now. I'll put you back on later. And then I'll pull the chlorine. Just so I don't mess shit up again. Pull chlorine into the chemical reactor. And that will eventually go and do its thing. It will create titanium tetrachloride. And I'll have enough of that to be able to create more titanium. I hope that doesn't take too much energy. And if it does, eh, whatever. Do whatever we can. This is going pretty well so far. And while that's running, I will go... Uh, you know what? There's another... There's enough for more rutile in there. So I will craft that up real quick. Oh, probably more in a little bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Alright, I'll come back for it. That's one more piece of rutile I can get for that. Absolutely scrounging for materials. That's okay. So long as I have, if I have at least 8,000 liters of, I can't believe 1,000 liters is that many buckets? Incredible, I guess. But so long as I have 1,000 liters, I have enough for the machine hole that I need. Uh, not for the transformer. We already have the transformer for the, for the battery buffer. Uh, that's what I need for that. And then I also just need aluminum cables. So that's not really difficult to do. It's just making the extreme voltage machine hole is probably going to be the toughest part. And, uh, the aluminum wires. I should work on the aluminum wires as well. More retail. So I will also do that. There we go. There's another one. Let's see. And I've got the stainless steel ingot too, which is something I just didn't have before. So that's good. I don't need the rest of this annealed copper ingot, so I'll just throw that back in. I need... What do I need? What do I need? What do I need? I'm trying to consider what I need. I lost my train of thought. I was going to check on the, the, the plates over here. Put it in there. Oh, there we go. Oh, these seems to be... Are these up now? Do they have all the energy again? No? Okay. It's still it's still recovering. It's still trying. It's trying its best. This, I then need... Oh, it was the aluminum. I need... 32 pieces of aluminum. Because I need to make 64... Right? Let's see. If I want the full 16 slots, I need 16. So I need 32... Oh, there goes all that aluminum ingot I just made. Oh, well, whatever. Needs call for it. So we go for it. Aluminum! Bum, ba -da -dum, bum. Ding from a little plate in the back. some other things that I've been working on. Oh, you know what I'm looking forward to as well? The uh, Steam Summer Sale, I think, just started yesterday. So I need to look into what other games that I want to buy. If I want to buy anything. Honestly, I've been pretty satisfied currently with trying to... With, with just kind of the games that I already have right now. Like, I'm very satisfied with it. I think the last two games that I really wanted to play was It Takes Two, which went on sale already. Uh, oh shit, out of power. Unfortunate. Okay, so I need to- I need to charge you up. I need to charge you up with whatever I can find. Particularly these ones. I'll take these batteries. But It Takes Two was something that I really wanted to play. Obviously based off of recommendation, but it also looked like such an awesome game to play with my fiance. I was like, I gotta play this. I gotta try it. Um, oh crap, this is the one where I can't insert the batteries. In a convenient way. Is there really only one- oh, it's a- Starge sodium battery. Oh, well, that's annoying. Well, that's probably because this ran out, right? That's because this ran out. There we go. I just need to refill those back up, and then the other one will go. And fill up that battery. Yeah. But I really, I really enjoyed that one. We'll probably play that again sometime. 
we will. We will. As I say, probably. No, we definitely, definitely will. I know I had a phone pad like that. It's like it's got that charm of like being a being a kid, in the sense that you're like you know you're fighting up against these the, the household appliances. Like the household appliances are the enemies, and something like that felt like the perfect narrative for like me as a young person. Like, thinking, like, if I was gonna play pretend with my younger brother, we'd probably treat one of the vacuum cleaners as one of our enemies, just to, as a placeholder for, I don't know, a, a physical person. That, and if we were hitting each other with, like, foam swords or shooting things with nerf darts at the enemy, it wouldn't fight back, because it's a vacuum. It's an appliance, a household appliance. And the fact that the, what is it, the first boss? Was that the first boss? Yeah, the first boss is basically the vacuum cleaner. I was like, I love that. That has such a childish charm to it. I mean, I, I can't help but not... I, I can't help but absolutely enjoy that stuff. I know. The kind of pretend that my brother and I used to play when we were a bit younger, we called the game Sound Test. And we called it Sound Test because we would play pretend in the living room to the sounds of Sound Test from the various games we were playing. Uh, we'd sometimes use Super Smash Bros. Brawl that sound test where you have all the music like essentially one of us would kind of be like the dj um to, to f switch the music whenever the the scene determined it to be so we originally played it with the sound test mode from sonic adventure 2 battle which i've mentioned a couple times now it was a I, I loved that game when i was younger I absolutely adored it still do kind of still like that game chow garden it gets me oh crap i did the thing Did the thingy again. Here we go. I can't place that... Oh, what just happened? Oh, there we go. I can't place limestone on that face because it's a carpenter block, so I gotta do it on that one. But so we... My brother and I would imagine ourselves as the characters from the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. It's like... It's, it's interesting, too, though. Like, I had my own character. Like, I had my own character that I that I role-played as, and his name was Waterboy, and he was the... He was basically the human equivalent of chaos in the Sonic, uh, the Sonic universe. And that's the character that I would usually play as, while also taking turns between you, Sonic, Tails, whatever, whoever the parts were. I wish I could remember the stories that we did while we were playing Pretend back there, or rather, while we were playing Sound Test, but I can't remember half of them. I just, like, I remember them so vividly of, like, the scenes in my head. I don't know what the scenes were, I don't know what we were doing, but I remember, vi like, vividly the images that came to mind as we played the game. And I remember it the same way, like, you would, like, remember a book, I guess, if, you, if you're the kind of person who can imagine the scene inside of your mind. Like, I can, when I read a book, not only do I hear the inner monologue, but I can also picture it in my head. If I am... It's interesting, like, how I remember things, I think. When I'm talking to myself in the car, or or rather, no, if I'm talking to myself in my head with my inner voice, I remember the conversation, but I remember it as if my mouth was moving. So, like, if I picture in my head the conversation that I just had and try to remember it, my brain visualizes my mouth talking through the words. And same thing with, like, if I read a book, when I try to remember me reading a book, I don't remember necessarily the vision of the words on the page, or though sometimes I do depending on if I'm studying or I'm reading like a script or something, I will remember where the words are on the page and it'll come to mind when I try to read it in my head. But for the book characters, I will imagine when I remember the book, I will remember the characters in my head more so than anything else. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, that's enough titanium for now. I will let you process cool i'll throw the rest of the rutile elsewhere i think i just need one piece of titanium for now so that's all i'm gonna go i need eight pieces of titanium for now so that's all i'm gonna do with it i'll throw everything else into the ore processor to be sent back to whoever else needs it i also need a chest from there i need a chest from storage let's throw the rutile the ilmenite the carbon the wrought iron the rutile don't need it no more i need a chest chest to chest to chest there we go look at that one left sweet and now all i need is the 
uh, yeah, that's that's it. I need the machine hole, and for that I need the titanium. And so I want to conserve as much energy as I have over here to be able to create that titanium. I don't think it takes... Does it take a lot of energy to pull that titanium out? It does. It really takes a lot of energy. So I need to be careful. I need to be careful with that. I'm going to push the chlorine back where it needs to be. I'll just keep the chlorine in there for now. I have a lot of chlorine. It's unnecessary. Um, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it from here. Turn that off. Let's see. I'm going to turn this, turn this off to allow fluid to move inside. And then I need this little thing here to pull it out. There it goes. Where's it going? Into here. 8,000. Perfect. I'll have to see that once more time. One more time. I can turn the oxygen back on because I really won't be needing it. There we go. Back to what you were. Back to what you were. And now I need magnesium. And I need to be careful with how much power that I have. Because I don't want to waste any of that, you know, titanium tetrachloride that I have. Magnesium. And those are in the form of ingots. I have eight prepared in there, so I need 16 in the form of dust. So I'll go downstairs and put that as dust. I don't need the rubber bars anymore. Uh, polyethylene. I, I do need two of those. I need at least two pieces of polyethylene. So, uh, put that back. Put that over here. Put it inside. Polyethylene sheet. We'll see what else. I need that poly sheet. Actually, for the extreme voltage, uh, what other, what wire do I need for that, for the machine hole? Aluminum. So I need another l aluminum cable. And I might as well put this back up as it, oh, I got another battery alloy. Sweet. Um, and so now I need to use a bunch of gold wire in order to, I need a bunch of gold wire in order to turn those into battery, uh, battery casings. That'll be four of them, I guess. Right? Why did I do this math again? It was 34, it was how many for the, I don't even know. Large sodium battery, you put that in the machine hole, you need nine for that, nine times. For this, nine times four times four. Oh, wait, this is four, that was for four quad cell sodium batteries. So I would need 16 of those, meaning I need 16 times four, which is 64 divided by two is 32 pieces of gold. So I'll work on that next. 32 pieces of gold, and I also need an aluminum cable as well. Alu, mini. Now I need gold. I need half a stack of gold in the form of cable. And then I'll need plenty of polyethylene as well. I don't think I have a lot of that, so I'm gonna need to do that as well. I'll take you, take you there. You'll be processing, go back over here. If I can at least get one quad cell battery, I'll be happy. I will be satisfied. That's all churning away at the limonite. There's plenty of limonite in there. Don't need any more of that. No auto output. Put the magnesium. Get me some dust. I've never scanned dust before. I'll scan the dust. Got the dust. Put it over here. I know auto output. That's perfect. So now I'll go back up. The magnum, magnum, ugh, need the magnesium dust. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of power in this thing. But I should have enough for at least one, maybe. Right? If I do that, it should produce titanium on the other side. Yeah? Yeah? No? What's going on? What's going on? Was it magnesium? I thought it was magnesium. In the blast furnace. Two magnesium dust with titanium tetrachloride. Heat capacity 2140. Maybe I just accidentally turned off the machine processing by accident. I might I might have done that. Or maybe it ran out of energy. It might have run out of power for that one. Oh, in that case, I really don't want to risk it. Now nah, I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. There we go. Enabled. Did that work? Yep, it's going. There should be at least one titanium coming out of the other side of that. Yes! That's cool, at least. Did that work, or did it just die? Okay. 
It died. And I lost a piece of titanium. Oops. Alright, then I guess I should have been a little more patient. Alright, so I lost it. See, it's a little confusing. So there are three battery buffers here. Um, There's three of them here. One of them really doesn't work the way that I want it to. Uh, and the other one does. You know what I should do? I should turn this into... These are medium voltage energy hatches. I should have... Mm, I don't know. This is a bit of a project over here. To create those in a... It's, it's weird. Like, there are three energy hatches, but it doesn't pull from all of them. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, but it's a high voltage recipe, so it must pull from at least two of them at the same time. And the one in the middle... Actually, I'll check that. Is the one in the middle completely out of power? Because if that's the case, I should check that first. That's a steep turbine. That doesn't help me. Just kidding. Well, suffice to say, there's not enough energy for it right now. So what I will do is I will take the magnesium dust and put it over here. Um, this advanced electrolyzer will also sit over here. I don't have my titanium now, so I'm going to have to wait on that. And I'll put all the materials that I need for it over there. On the bright side, I can still work on the batteries, though, so I will. 64 gold wires. Yep. Yeah. I need to turn those into actual wires, so I need some rubber to make my first quad cell battery. Right? Or to make a few quad cell batteries, actually. Give me these. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Need the rubber. Rubber time, rubber time, rubber time. Bring it back over. And see how that do. Gold wire and rubber. I need gold cables. So now for each of these batteries, it's essentially making a bunch of sodium batteries, but the large battery holes are the ones that take a lot, actually. So nine times that, and you use just as much polyethylene as you do battery alloy. I am only going for one quad cell battery right now. So I'm going to... Nine equals that. That makes sense. Times four or nine... So nine times, they have 36 of them. 36 pieces of polyethylene for those four batteries, which will have enough for the quad cell, the first quad cell. And that'll be great. That'll be wonderful. One, two, three, four. Boop. Put that back in there. I'm running, running low on poly. I'm running low on everything, really. Needs more polyethylene. You're going away with that. Good for you. Good for you. And then I should be able to put the battery alloy in here, as well as the gold that comes out the other side, the gold cables. And that amount of polyethylene should make four battery holes. And then I throw the polyethylene in there. Which should work. Let me make sure that works. At least once? Yes, okay. So it's making the, bat uh, the battery hole. Put the battery plates over here and sort this chest out. It's a little crazy. Uh, I needed the aluminum wire as well. Uh, that's for the other machine hole over here. So just to remind me that it's for that. Alright, where did I put the wire? Is it in my inventory? What did I do with it? Nope, I didn't actually put it in my inventory. Silly me. I just put it over here, put it over here, put it over there. That's for the actual cell itself. This is for the machine hole, which I need titanium for. I need eight pieces of titanium plate. Turn it into that. Melt and poly. That as a cable. So I guess I should have pieces of rubber next to it too. That's working? Yeah, battery hole. Yeah, battery hole. So I think I'm going to go mining after this again. Rub, rub, rub. Rub, rub, rub. On the downside, like, most of the materials needed to make all this will not be available for a while. But, uh, you know, that's okay. That's okay. I don't mind. It's not like I'm not gonna play Minecraft again. I will be back for it. I will, I will. Ugh. 
you know, now that I'm getting to the end of that tea, it's gotten a little cold now. It's like, it's weird tasting. It tastes like brown sugar, but there's also something else in there that just tastes like, maybe it's artificial, perhaps? Not that I would be a good judge on that, but like, hmm, it's different. I'm glad that I, ha I have a I have a couple more of them, so I'm gonna wind up drinking all of it, and then I never have to worry about it again. Is the advanced electrolyzer? I'll just keep that over here. In case I ever, you know what, that goes in the machine's chest. In case I ever need another advanced electrolyzer. I'll have it. That or I can recycle it at some point. You can recycle things in this one. And with a machine. I always try to check to make sure I have the right... I have proper machines first. This is factory machine block. These can go over here. These are machines, technically. Machines in the machine chest. Machines for the machine throne. Metal for the machine throne. I don't know. I don't play Warhammer. I just like to think about... I just like to think about it. I'm gonna kind of look into the lore a little bit more at some point. I know, like, I was I was told about the lore once upon a time for, like, Warhammer, but, like, I really was not able to pay much attention. It was also it was also a night where I was I was having a couple of drinks with my pal while she was trying to explain it, explain it to me, and I was like, I'll admit, I got this drink in my hand, I'm chilling over here, I am not really paying attention. And she was like, fair point. And then we continued on. She tried to teach me how to play Warhammer. Didn't really work very well. Didn't really work very well. It just didn't stick. Didn't stick for me. Didn't stick for her. Yet, uh, I know, I know, uh, Clenny Boy the other day was talking about his Warhammer stuff. It's cool to see, like, the meticulousness with which the guy, uh, they paint their models. The people who paint their models by hand, that is. Glenn's one of the kind of guys who paint, paints his models by hand. Lycos Lore, hashtag hippo hype. But it's kind of cool what he does. And I know he was wondering the other day, like, oh, you know, should I put, like, some more stuff up on YouTube that isn't necessarily gaming related? And I absolutely think that you should. Absolutely. I think anything that you wind up having, just throw it on your YouTube channel. I mean, currently on my YouTube channel, it's streams and stuff. There is nothing on there that is really short form aside from highlights from a stream. There's nothing on there except for stream stuff. At least as of right now. And I hope to change that in the future. Oh, I got this chest here. I need to put that over there. I want to change that as well. Because I feel like there is more that I would be able to do with that. And not just kind of hanging around here for whoever just wants to pop in and interacting with all of them once in a while. I feel like there's only a certain amount of entertainment that even I would be able to glean from this. Like, I I could barely sit through long streams. I'll be perfectly honest. I'm, a, I'm much of the kind of guy who's not really all there to be paying attention to what's going on on the screen because i mean i was saying before like the stream could be equivalent to like a concert almost but i can like pay full attention to a concert in the music or like to the people around me which is all in cohort of the concert itself but i don't think that i would be able to sit there and do the same thing for a stream I don't know if, it, if it's not like if it's not something that i'm putting on myself i'm not saying here like i can't even paying attention to my own stream like, I could definitely do that, but if I were to sit in somebody else's stream and try to watch the whole time, I don't know if I would be completely enthralled. Sometimes, I do. There's this one guy I watch who makes cocktails and stuff, and it's a pretty big crowd, and I watch him mostly because I learn something from that. There is something that I get from that stream that I don't get from other streams, and that's cocktail recipes and, and people... It's mostly cocktail recipes. I'm there for the cocktail recipes. Sometimes the discussion goes a little south from there, but I really like talking about cocktail stuff. So that's what I like to see. And so I go on there and I try to see if I can get a couple of recipes here and there. I ask people around like, oh, what kind of drinks are you drinking? I'm drinking this one over here. And uh, it's all social and whatnot. I like that. I like that. I don't have that. But that's not the particular environment here. I mean, I love to make more cocktail stuff. And I think one of the things I'll do is if I wind up making like actual small videos will probably be like some maybe a couple of cocktail things or maybe i'll throw that stuff on tiktok first i don't really know like i i can make cocktails and i have all these books i, I have <coughs> excuse me i have a ton of books that just have random cocktails in it and all i would need to do is pick up the book and open to a page or two and make a video on the cocktail 
and so that the world will know like hey this is a thing that exists and this is how you would make it and here's a way to make it differently like here's what i would do if i wanted to change it up a little bit i don't know so let me see before i continue on my tangent because i'm gonna go on a tangent about cocktails again probably i want to consider what materials i need to grab what materials do i need i need more polyethylene so i need more oil sands so i'm gonna go to my journey map turn off limonite pyrite gold i'm gonna find my oil sands ore turn that back on i'm also gonna look for gold's not really an issue right now appetite phosphorus no um i need more titanium so i need more ilmenite so i want to find the closest source of ilmenite ore which should be with a copper deposit so where are you? Iron, pyrite, copper. Where are you? Where's my ilmenite? It might be far away. Ilmenite might be... There we go. Oh, bauxite, aluminum, and ilmenite. They all found together. So I will turn that on as well. And we'll go find that. Awesome. So that's the goal. We're going to get some oil sands ore as well as ilmenite for titanium. It's interesting that the... The material for titanium is in the same location as the, the uh, material for aluminum. However, one is much more, like, significantly harder to grab. Uh, much more difficult to get than the other one. Which is cool. Are there any other materials that I'm, like, low on? I'll check out this molybdenum. I think that's the that's the dead molybdenum ore source. I don't think there's any molybdenum over there. But if there is there, cool. Oh, and also, as well, um, there's galena far away somewhere um and i may go find galena as well because i'm running low on lead so lead galena galena lena ned lead lead galena where are you where are you lead it's far away i'm pretty sure it's far away where is it come on where are you in the list i wish there was a is there a search option i don't think there's a search option for this all right i'll go back through it again i need to find lead Lead, 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 lead. Lead, silver, galena. I know I have a source for it. I know I found it somewhere. But where is it? Aluminum box of my ilmenite? Is it already on? It might be already on. Iron copper, lazarite, silver, calcite. That's no need to be on. Manticite. Manticore? Nice. Lazarite. Is it manticore? This manticore's in this game? In this mod pack? Sweet. I didn't even know about that. Apparently, I found it at one point. Um, there's more aluminum and ilmenite if I'm heading off in that direction. Tetrahedrite, stibnite, limonite, copper. Galena, silver, and lead. It was already on, and I missed it. So where to? I see galena, silver, and lead over there. There's the end, per end portal that way. Ilmenite and bauxite are all in that direction. So there's plenty of it over there. So I'm going to go that way first. Or rather, um, oil sands is there, so I'll hit that first. Then aluminum and bauxite. And then, uh, and then I'll make my way back around to the Galena and stuff. Now, I am low on energy. And if I'm going to be flying around a bunch, I should probably fill that back up before I go. So I will do that. This machine hasn't been getting a lot of use, so I will do the thing. I will do the thing. So I'll fill that up. And I think while that fills up, I am going to take a quick break, grab myself a little snack, and I'll be back in a moment. By the time we come back, everything will be all filled up. Promise. And welcome back, everybody. I've got more tea. It's just black tea this time, because I realized I needed the caffeine. I had to wager with myself, do I grab the coffee or do I grab the tea? And I thought it was better to grab the tea because the French press was just cleaned. Therefore, what I should do is I should save the French press for tomorrow on the Saturday so I can get myself up and excited in the morning. But it's like almost one o'clock now over here, so why have coffee now? I don't need it. Anyway, my suit should now be all nice and charged. Cool. And now we're gonna go mining. I'm gonna shoot my laser all over the place. Who needs rules and regulations when you got lasers? <laughs> and before I head off on my journey. What was that sound? Who's there? Hello? Is somebody outside? Who is it? What the hell are you doing here? You shouldn't be around here. You've never spawned over here before. Get out of here. Spooky. 
I want to see if we've actually gotten to the charcoal of the situation yet. Are you actually producing? Okay, so everything is producing steam now, it seems, because it's gotten to the wood. That means that I might have to reconfigure this stuff over here, because that doesn't real. I mean, it does. It does help. There should be a small limit on these. There should be a very small limit on these, I think. This can contain up to 448 stacks. I don't think it needs that much. Ever. So do I have a barrel hammer on me? I don't have the barrel hammer on me. I'm gonna take the barrel hammer out. Cause like, it's nice to have more saplings and stuff. But you know what? Hey, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll think about that again another time. But for now, let's go find Stuart. Stuart, buddy, Stuart, let's go. Um, Forward, that way. Forward onto oil sands. It is pitch black. You're absolutely right. I hope to be eaten by something. Better to be eaten by something than not eaten at all. Right? No. I really cleared this thing out. And there's still so much more. There's still so much more. There are many oil sands. But it's nice. I doubt, like, I am, I am now, this is the point where I'm going to stress test this, this steam generation system of mine. If I am full up on charcoal, full buffer of charcoal, and I leave that for a day or two, will everything be processed by the end of it? I certainly hope so, because if it isn't, then I'd just be confused. I'd be very, very confused. I need to see how much left there is of oil sands. And I think I only need like a stack or two of these. I don't need a lot of it. Although if I collect a lot of it, I'm very close. You know what? I'm gonna collect as much as I damn well please. That's what I think we'll do. That's what I think we'll do. I'm gonna change things over here to make sure that I have updated myself to make sure that I know what I'm doing. There we go. We'll put this mindfulness tag back on. I don't know. We're just trying to live in the moment over here. And not try to advertise that we're doing visual or auditory ASMR. There is no auditory or visual ASMR over here. I have no content like that for the lovely people at home who are following at home. There is none of that stuff. Although, I am curious. Of the people who are streaming the auditory ASMR with their fancy microphones, what the heck is on your microphone? Like, what are those cup things? They must be like, they must be things that just make like the click sound, like a clink sound. Here, I got a pill bottle over here of apple cider vinegar. Probably like, like maybe that brings, maybe that brings good feels to some people. My stuff is falling all over the place. Does it, is this, is this ASMR quality? I don't know what else to do there. Now in another fancy episode of oil ASMR. Maybe if I cup my hands. If I speak like this, is the ASMR get any more intense? What do we feel now? I'm not so sure. I just, I gotta wonder. I just, I don't know. Oop, I keep whacking my microphone. And I suppose, as a researcher, I could just go and watch the channels myself and figure it out to experience it. But I'm scared. I am scared of what I might find. I may be changed forever. Could be interesting. Could be very, very interesting. I don't know about it. I just don't know. I just don't know. But if I do find out what the heck the thing is that they're using, maybe, if they're not expensive, maybe I'll just get one myself. I'll get a nice luxury ASMR kit. I suppose. Or maybe I'll get a couple of fidget spinners and I'll just spin them. I'll have them perpetually spinning on the side. Yeah. That's another possibility. Who needs auditory ASMR when you got spinning fidget spinners? I know if there was any sort of ASMR community for fidget spinners, I am not a part of that. Because I remember... I, I remember the first time I really experienced the, glo the glory, or rather the lack thereof of a fidget spinner was during one of my classes at college. 
It was my differential equations class, and there was a student who came in every single day, and they had their fidget spinner with them, and they were fidgeting it during class. And they were about two rows away from me, and I was just like, I am attempting to pay attention to the lecture over here, and you're fidgeting your spinner, and it is bothering the hell out of me. Like, it's like the equivalent of somebody just kind of clicking the pen nonstop during class. Like, I get it. I understand that you need to do something with your hands. But I am so bothered. Like, your fidgeting has now become the need for me to start fidgeting. So, like, I, I feel like what I should have done is to counteract the power of the, of, the, of the spinner, I should have gotten my own spinner and spun it even faster. And we'd have a bit of a contest, like an unspoken contest of those who are spinning their fidgeters in the room. I feel like I, I definitely would not have won. I'm not an experienced fidgeter, so to speak. So whatever spins come from my fidget will not be very quality spins. Oh, sweet. Nothing good. N nothing good from me. Got a crushed olive oil ore. I don't really get that. Sweet. Scan that up. But such fidgetingness is bothersome. Oh, is this a, just a hole? This is just a hole? Hole? Oh, it's just a hole. Just a random hole. Nice. I love random holes. Don't know where that came from, but we got a random hole. Sweet. I think this is all the oil sands over here. A little bit of iron. Take a little bit of iron. Take a little bit of iron for my road. We're gonna plant of iron back at home. At least that's what's currently assistant. There is more oil sands. My god, look at that. Well, how much oil sands do I have right? And the hell are you doing over here? What are you doing? Get out of here. I'm gonna take it back to your family. Take it back now, y'all. What up this time? What up? Right foot, let's go. Okay, so there's definitely no oil sands over here. That is just a random... That, that's just, just not a thing. How much oil sands do I have? I have about a stack. I want more. I want more. I want more oil sands. So I'll just kind of walk my way forward and make my oil sands. And I'll walk on forward. So I was going on... I was going to go on a tangent before. What kind of tangent was I going to go on? What are the things that I usually go on tangents about? Was it about cocktails? I think I was going to talk about... I was going to talk about cocktails? I was going to talk about cocktails. I was going to talk about cocktails. Maybe it was something about... Oh, we're talking about, like, video content and stuff. Ah, so maybe... Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. So, like, I have all these books. I have all these books of cocktail recipes. It's not like... They're, they're not, like, fancy recipes or anything. They're not. It's just, like... They're just recipes of random cocktails. And, like... I want to go through, and if there was a way, if there was ever a way to encourage myself to try them all, recording it for the world to watch might be something that is rather interesting for people, P potentially. I really like making cocktails. It's just been like the whole culture around alcohol is is so it's so bothersome to me, and this is what I mean by that. There are a lot of the, the fact that I mean. Okay, maybe it's, maybe bothersome isn't the right word to use, but it's like there are a lot of there there are a lot of people who kind of almost see it as like, I mean it it is it is a drug it it is something that can cause very bad things it is a toxin for your body and it can affect the mind, but a lot of people kind of see see that as all it is, but like there's an incredible there is there seems to be an incredible backbone of history to the importance of it in society and maybe that's just because of the way that our brains work like oh yeah life is really difficult so it's really important for there to be ways for us to just not have to think about the horror of it for uh, all the time and maybe that's why alcohol is a thing that kind of gets in the is, is what and don't get me wrong i don't want to subtract from the fact that it is incredibly dangerous if used in too high quantity it can lead to absolutely terrible decisions but like so long as you practice things like temperance and tolerance and stuff like that, it's like everything in moderation. Like, in moderation, anything can be okay, I think. I mean, maybe not anything. Like, I'm not sure exactly how much cyanide calls for a good time. Uh, doesn't seem to be any more alien sands over here. That's fine. I don't know how much cyanide you need for just a good time and nothing more. Like, I don't, I don't exactly know. Um, I know there's at least... It was probably at least one type of mushroom out there who, if you take too much of it, you'll just straight up die. But if you take a little, you're probably okay. Like, all right, I get that. Sort of, kind of, like, I don't know. 
but like there is a there are limits to or there's a little i mean if your liver does not process alcohol then by all means that's okay i get that then you don't need to be obviously if you if your body cannot handle it or if you're made uncomfortable by it then that's not a problem in which case may i introduce the world of mocktails to you and it seems that even some people at least that i've talked to are just like uh, cocktails and mocktails aren't really my thing like is juice also not your thing do you just not like fruit juice in, in general or perhaps you just don't like any like if you just don't like anything but water then i guess i totally get you but anyway beside beside that point i don't really feel like going down the philosophical ladder that is my ideas of how i interpret the world of alcohol also not being a huge disclaimer i am not the addictive type and i understand that it is incredibly addicting so for for some people as well and of course if you're in that position i hope to goodness that you at least have the resources around you a support group to be able to keep you keep you well aa is okay aa is absolutely okay it's a necessary thing. We all fall. We all fall prey to our whims and wishes every once in a while. To our to our deepest, darkest vices, alcohol being one of my vices. But more as a means of expression. It's more as a means for me to be able to do. It, in fact, what I've always been doing. I have always been mixing things together and concocting things, so to speak. I've always done that, and now I just have another. I I, I have another set of ingredients that I can use to do the same thing that I've always been doing. Previously, it was shampoos and showers in the bathroom. As I was taking a shower, all my parents' shampoos and conditioners would all spontaneously wind up in one container and they'd be like, what the heck? Why does it smell so off-putting? Because, you know, it's, it's basically just chemicals. So there was probably some fumes that uh, developed during my young day baths that have influenced me in ways that I can't even fathom. Affecting my brain in crazy, crazy ways, I'm sure. But I've always been doing stuff like that. I was even reminded the other day about uh, Dr. Pepper. Because I, I, I went to my parents' house and I found that there's apparently a Dr. Pepper cream soda mix. And I tried it. And I was like, alright, it tastes like Dr. Pepper. Because it seems that almost anything you mix Dr. Pepper with winds up, winds up tasting just like Dr. Pepper. Because Dr. Pepper just has that, like, it's got that... It's got that taste to it. And it just, it's permeating. It permeates through everything else. But when I used to go to the McDonald's at the local Walmart back in my parents' town, I would always mix up the things. Where'd you do? Oh, hi there. I would always mix up all of the sodas together because I wanted to see if I can make new flavors. And I've always, I always did that. Every time we went. I don't remember what age it started at. Probably it started in the ages of antiquity for me. But I would always do that. And I always wanted to see like, could I make a new flavor? Or does it all just taste like Dr. Pepper? Is everything in the world just Dr. Pepper? I don't know, but I want to find out. And so that was the kind of, that was one of the journeys that I went on as a young boy attempting to figure out the world around me. I'm still a young boy attempting to figure out the world of, uh, around me, mind you that. Uh, not as young as some. Oh, but I didn't want to have a remote on. Yeah, not as young as some, but still younger than many. And so I will take that with me as much as I can. While I have the ability to be able to taste all these little concoction of co eh, words, concoctions of mine, I will do so. And I will do so happily. And in and in order to as well be able to bring it to somebody who may not know about it. Somebody who may not know about the glories of life. I mean, ultimately, I see I see cocktails and mocktails no differently than I do any other consumable. Like, like, um, oh, you know what? Let me take that. Let me take this olive wine ore. Like, I feel like you should be tasting all the foods of the world to be able to experience what it's all about. Experience life things in the world. I feel like that's something that everybody should have the opportunity to do. And I see uh, the ingredients that happen to go into cocktails as no differently. Like, you, sh you should have the opportunity to be able to taste and experience anything and everything to have the fullest life experience possible. And I mean, I don't know. Different people make their choices. Like the monks decide, or at least some monks decide to take their vow of silence. And they have willingly given up their freedom of being able to speak in pursuance of something greater. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people, many I'm sure, who give up the vices of the drink in hopes to find something even greater. And I'm, I'm sure there's something greater out there for that. And if that works, then... 
Awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad that it does. I, for one, take the, the to op I take the opposite philosophy of that, where there are not a lot. Of, excuse me. There are not a lot of things that I would I, that I would tell myself that I wouldn't do. Because I like the idea of trying everything at least once. Because I always had this fear, and this is kind of this is kind of uh, it's always set in the back of my head. This this fear of as if I'm running out of time. Because like back in high school, they had like events to try to make sure that you know to make sure to don't drink and not be too crazy, or make sure not to uh, you know specifically don't drink and drive, which is just always a stupid idea. Like if you are doing if you are enjoying the devices of alcohol in any way, shape, or form, uh, don't drive. Just just don't do it. <laughs> it's not. I mean, I don't think it's that to get the designated driver. I'm, I'd be happy to be. I'd be fun to be the designated driver. If everybody's going, if all 10 of us are going out and we need a designated driver and nobody wants to put their hand up, I will be the designated driver. That is fine. Although I will attempt to get somebody else to be the designated driver first, but if all else fails, I will happily give that up for the safety of the people around me. Also, if it were 10 of us, I don't know how we'd all fit in the car. But anyway, that's beside the point. That's not the point we're trying to make here. But I always had this fear and still kind of do this fear of running out of time. I would always be stressed about about will I ever get will I truly have the opportunity to experience the next day. There's no there's no necessary there's no guarantee so to speak that I am going to experience tomorrow. So why not enjoy and experience all you can today in preparation for the more experiences and more fun that you will have and experience tomorrow and although you know it's pretty difficult to actually kind of do that every day oh i mean it was meaning to go for the box side gotta go to the box side box at time box at time uh tab was what's my engine nope i didn't mean to do that off we go off we go Stuart. off the Stuart. well like i always thought that maybe there was a reason that I'm always thinking so fast, that I'm always thinking so much all the time. And maybe it's because, and I thought to myself, maybe I'm trying to get, this is when I was younger, I don't know if I necessarily believe that now, but I thought maybe I'm thinking so much now because I am trying to make up for all the thinking that I won't get to do later on because like I'm gonna die young or something, which I don't think that I am. I have no way of predicting that. I'm sure there's an insurance company out there with, who would like to prove me wrong though. However, I don't know. I always, I always had that feeling like that I was going to run out of time if I didn't do enough today. So that kind of ties into almost everything I feel. Like I'm always wanting to, I, I don't really want to do things that make me feel like I'm wasting my time. I always want to make sure that I'm making progress of sorts. Like I want to make pr uh, progress, whatever that progress tends to be. And I don't know what that progress is. Today the progress is I am streaming today. And that is a, that is something that I can do that makes me feel productive. I feel productive doing this. I feel like I feel like I'm actually doing something like that. I'm putting content out in the world. Content, putting the content out in the world for me is something that just makes me feel pretty good. It makes me feel pretty good. It makes me feel productive. And because it makes me feel productive, that's one of the reasons that I do it. It kind of also answers the question of why and why not. Like, why, why stream games on the internet? I don't know, why not? Somebody might enjoy it, so you might as well do that. You may make it, I don't know, may make a difference that is important to somebody. Or you'll make it, maybe you'll find out something new about yourself. One of the reasons I also like doing these, like, um, these streams where it's mostly just kind of, I, I know nobody's going to come and watch the Minecrafts. I know that. But it's a chance to kind of video blog and get my thoughts out there. And if anybody ever came in to kind of ping pong those, like the ping pong ball is out and the ping pong ball ever comes back, I'm like, oh, sweet. And I would always appreciate it. I always would appreciate it. But that's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this. It makes me feel very relaxed. It gives my mind an avenue to get get those get those thoughts out. Whatever those thoughts may be. Maybe they're bad thoughts, maybe they're good thoughts. But they need to go out somewhere. And this kind of this kind of does that for me. And it's nice to be able to have the opportunity to, to to do so. I mean, obviously to any to to anybody as well. Thanks for allowing the opportunity to be able to do something like this. It's pretty cool. I mean, I guess nobody really granted the opportunity to do this. Like, it's not like somebody said, like, you're allowed to stream now. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll stream. 
but it feels almost as if there's a certain, you know, I feel like a lot of people are always looking for some form of approval from anybody, really, whoever whoever's listening, or whoever is, like, the, your guardian, like, the, your professor, like, giving you the approval of, yep, you got the A, you passed, and you're like, oh, sweet, awesome, well, at least it's not for nothing. But, like, hearing the words from somebody of, it doesn't matter, or, oh, whatever, like, doesn't feel very good. Like, the lack of, like, not having any sort of acknowledgement doesn't really feel very good. And you can make up for that by kind of making your own acknowledgement. Like, oh, nobody's saying good job for the content that you're producing? Well, tell yourself good job. Take yourself out for something. You spend a lot of time putting this stuff together and making sure to, to talk and do what it is that you do. And whatever it is that you do. Maybe you're, like, the kind of person who loves to paint for a living. And, and like, or maybe you don't do it for a living right now, but you love to paint. And if you could drop everything and become a painter, you totally would. But you're not going to get, like, either the, the monetary approval or the social approval of, like, oh, you're a painter? Like, you could have been so much more. Or, like, oh, you're you're an actor? You could have been so much more. You're an entertainer? You could have been so much more. You could have been an engineer or anything like that. And, like, if that's the case, hopefully there's at least one person out there who you cross paths with that'll be like, no, 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 I totally see where you're coming from. And if that's what you want to do, then, dude, go for it. If this is what really makes you feel good, and makes you feel happy, and makes your life feel like it's worth living, then awesome, man. Then nobody should have the right to put you down for that. I mean, it's gonna happen anyway. And there will always be naysayers. There will always, always be naysayers. But, like, while we acknowledge the haters, and we love them for who they are, we don't have to listen to them. We can just... But let bygones be got bygones. You know what, haters? I appreciate your opinion. I don't necessarily agree with them. However, and you're welcome to continue to voice them. But I'm not going to let it bog me down. Because all in all, I'm smiling. And that means I'm doing all right for myself. Maybe I'm not doing all right for you. And if that's, I mean, I think that applies for everybody. Even if what you're doing is like maybe causing harm or misfortune for people. But, like, if that's the case, then maybe just move yourself away from... Like, if you need... Like, I don't know. If you... One of the D&D characters that I play is a character with the urge to kill. And, like, if you have the urge to kill, like my character Grawl Borov does, then become, like, a slaughterman. Like, become a, uh, an animal slaughterer, I guess. Like, maybe serve your, find your purpose in society. Or, like, go far enough away from people that you're not going to hurt those who are potentially important to you, or you're not going to hurt yourself or other people as well. Something that you won't be sent to jail for. Um, to give a little bit of details about my character, Grawl Borov, who I'm, I'm playing tonight in d and I've been playing for a while now, but his kind of backstory is like, he's got that he's got that urge to kill. He's the kind of, a, he's a bit of a sociopath in the sense that he's like, I just, I, I know it's wrong in the whole grand scheme of things. And I know the law tells me not to do it, but just because the law tells me not to do it doesn't mean that I'm not going to, because I want to. And I feel like I need to, and I feel good when I do it, so I am going to do it. However, I am going to keep myself within the, 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 the braces of society at large, such that I don't have any less opportunities to be able to do what it is that I do. So, won't kill citizens, because, like, then you'd be sent to jail. If you get sent to jail, you don't get to do and kill anything. So, like, why would you bother wanting to go to jail? It, just, it seems... To, to, my, to the character Grawl, it's that simple. Don't kill people. Don't kill people because... Don't kill people because you'll go to jail. And if you go to jail, you won't be able to kill more people. Like, it just makes sense. Don't even try to do it in secret or anything like that. So, um... I mean, I never really fleshed things out. I'd like... I think... I'd have to look at the character sheet. But I think I wrote it such that... He was the kind of guy who would, like, you know, kill the criminals. And so they're not the people who would be missed in society. But I, I want to say more, like, as I'm playing... As I'm playing Grawl now, and I feel more like he would completely cut out the killing entirely. And to be perfectly honest, this particular campaign is not super combat heavy. So, like, in terms of killing other people, Grawl does not have the opportunity to because there's just not that many combat opportunities. And of course, he's not going to stop the campaign and be like, I need to kill somebody, like, right now. Unless he's, like, really angry. It's kind of like a, an emotional outfit for the, uh, outlook for this character. 
I like I like I like playing as him, and I like one of the reasons I like playing it as playing as Grawl is because like it kind of gives me the opportunity to be a little evil, be a little be a little dastardly, you know? Like, oh hi there, where did you come from? I didn't know. Oh my god, not you. Oh, not a lobber. Nope, don't like lobbers. Oh, you're gonna kill me. Why would you have to spawn, dude? I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna try to. Bye bye. Down there. Jeez. Oh, did my guy just die? I don't know. Where'd you go? Did Stuart just die? I don't know if Stuart just died. Why am I still? Jeez. Anyway, but I like I like playing that character, Grawlbora, the evil character, because like it gives me the opportunity to be a little mischievous, be a little evil. You know, there are certain like I guess vices of there's some things you do that make you feel evil. Some things make you feel evil. Don't you want to do a couple of things that make you feel evil? Unless evil don't make you feel good. In which case, you know, don't do evil. But, like, in this fantasy setting where, you know, it's kind of a no-holds-bar, you can do what you want, and, you know, there are consequences so long as the DM decides it. But, like, for the most part, it's not really much lasting effects. Now, don't get me wrong. I hope there's enough fun for everybody. Like, you're not just going around being a murder monkey unless that's what it was designed for i know i read at least one post a while ago about a um a particular group who played um who played D D, and on one occasion like this one character who played evil they played an evil character started doing some really really morally unacceptable things as somebody evil might do and it made one of the player characters the other player characters like really really uncomfortable because this particular vile act was something that was that was done to them at a very young age and so it made them feel really really uncomfortable about it and then the dm was like you i get it that you're trying to that you're expressing your individuality with what it is that you're doing here during the game but this that's real this is not the place for it not for that like we don't we're not we're there's a certain comfort thing it's like it's like anything you do that kind of goes against certain bits of morals i suppose playing an evil character or dealing harm in an intimate way is something that you have to be comfortable with and if you're comfortable with it, then cool but like have safety barriers up for that or have some ground rules have some boundaries boundaries are important lest we cross each other's boundaries and break things that were never meant to be broken that'd be pretty that'd be pretty sad and then you lose those relationships or, or maybe you don't lose those relationships i don't know exactly how your relationships are working I try to make sure that any relationships that wind up snapping, any any relationship ties that snap, have their time to heal, and then come on back for it again. I don't like I don't like losing friends. I really don't like losing friends. That was something that happened to me when I was younger. It was like I was uh, I was hanging with a I had a close friend of mine in like kindergarten, so I hang out with them in kindergarten, and I had another friend who was another really good friend of mine, and we all a couple years later. Uh, all of a sudden, this this friend of mine, uh, his mother was like, hey, just by the way, told me this, specifically me, like the young kid, was like, by the way, if you're friends with this other kid, you are not allowed to be friends with my son, your best friend at the time. And I was like, what? Why? Why is that? And so I felt really heartbroken after the fact for a while, but it didn't take me until a few years later to realize that, you know what? It was probably for the best anyway. Because that kind of taught me that, it kind of cemented in my brain that, that's, I mean, you can be friends with anybody, or acquaintances with, like, anybody. I mean, frankly, I have quite a few friends that do not gel well with each other, but I gel well with them. I'm alright with them, mo more or less on our own. We don't, we don't keep, we don't have parties where everybody who could possibly have qualms with each other gather in the same location. Like, I'm not gonna... I know that the wolf and the sheep don't get along, so I'm not gonna invite them to the same party. And if I do invite them to the same party, I'm gonna keep them in separate rooms for the good of everybody. Because that's kind of my mentality of it all. Like, you know, if you want if you want trouble, you can set up trouble, but do you really want to set up trouble? I wouldn't really want to set up trouble. Not like that. I'd rather have fun with everybody. Back, when, back in high school, when we used to have a couple of parties at my parents' house, we'd invite lots of people over. And I kind of had an idea of the social dynamics of who gels well with who and who should be in the same group of people as others and so like i had things set up we had like the board games in the basement to occupy one group of people we had the video games in the living room to occupy another group of people 
Uh, we had the trampoline outside, which occupied yet another group of people. And oftentimes, like, you know, the birds of the feather would flock together. And you wouldn't, I would usually not see somebody who dislikes another person hanging with that other person. Because, like, you know, if, if I don't like you, I don't know why I'm hanging around you unless I got some other ulterior motive going on. Which, at the time, I'm sure everybody in high school had ulterior motives. That was just kind of like, that feels like something that happened in high school all the time with the clicks and stuff like that. Oh, what was that? Was that a topaz? Cute. But yeah. Oop, de doop. Nice. Uh Yeah. But I like to I like to think that like just because just because I just because I am friends with one person doesn't mean that I can't be friends with another person. Like the whole like, oh, because you're a part of that family. You can't be a part of this one because we're rivals. We're traditionally long live rivals or whatever. Like, I can't think of any classic, like, family rivals, right? Like, I don't know, a Jedi can't be friends with a Sith? Or maybe they can't? I don't really know. Maybe that's not the best example to use. But, like, why, why not? Like, just because we follow, at least I think Jedi and Sith are technically considered two different religions. But, like, just because we practice two different things, I mean, we can't be pals just because you, uh, just because, just because I'm itzist and you're Catholic doesn't mean that we can get along, that we can't get along. We can get along. We can be friends. Maybe you're always at odds with this other friend, but like, that's okay. We don't have to have them all, the, all the, around all the time. We can all just be happy friends. I mean, it's, a, it's certainly more difficult than that. It's not just as easy as like... Hey, I'm gonna be your friend, despite the fact that we have two completely different ideologies. But let's just look past that and just let bygones be bygones. Like, because there are some people who are really, really attached to this. I'm really attached to some of my own beliefs. And if somebody came in and just said, like, well, I mean, I'm willing to look past those. I mean, they're not in, they're not important. They're not mine. I don't agree with them. But like, we can we can just ignore them. Like, no, I don't know. I don't think we should ignore. I don't think we should ignore the differences. Like, let's take those differences and struggle through them a little bit. Such that we can get something even better out the other out, out the other end. Like just because the two of us are on opposite sides of the balance beam does not necessarily mean that we can't come to a, an equal point. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like if you have you got beef with somebody, I don't, I don't know. Make your make your own choice on that. If you got if I had beefs with somebody. I would probably just not act upon it. I would let it go, or I would do stuff in my own way without making... I mean, I guess it depends on the context, right? I'm trying to think, like, if I had beef with somebody, would I, like... Would I tussle? Like, I would tussle. But how much would I tussle? Would I really go out of my way to, like, punch you on the playground? Or would I say, like, you must answer for your crimes and then punch you on the playground? Or would... It... Would I instead be like, like, you must pay for your crimes and I will punch you if you don't apologize right now. Like, there are so many different ways to go about that, to go about that interaction. Right? Like, it could be absolutely, it could be completely sudden. It could be not so sudden. It could be with warning. It could be without warning. You may just not do it at all. Maybe you'll just pay somebody else to punch them. And then snivel behind the scenes like, hee hee, I got him. Uh, I don't know what I'd do. I, I, I'll i tell you what I would do. I would struggle to decide in that situation. That's what I would do. I would struggle to be able to determine what it is that I would do in that situation and weigh all the variables that I can to, to figure out what the best option is. Knowing that I probably don't know what the best option is. Oh, come on. I need that to be weird. Because I definitely don't, wouldn't know what the best option is. Granted, uh, to the... I don't think it's going to be anything punching. I don't think it's going to be punch-related. It certainly wouldn't be punch-related. I, I don't think I'd punch somebody because of that. That'd be... That'd be rude. It's violence, and I'd hurt myself. I'm not a really good puncher. Like, I know for a fact that I have bad punch form. I would hurt my fingers. If I needed to punch you for any reason. I mean, unless it was like... You know what? What if it's a... What if it's... A, a compromise between gentlemen. Like, I will punch you, and then you will punch me, as the gentleman's code must be. And you're like, alright, I'm down with that. Let's punch each other. The gentlemanly way, of course. 
I don't know if there's a gentlemanly way to... I mean, there's definitely a gentlemanly way for fisticuffs, but punching? Maybe boxing. Would, would, would you dare do a boxing match to settle our political dispute? Oh, I think that's a wonderful idea. Why talk with our mouths when we could talk with our fists, legs, and arms? A very good point, Reginald. I gotta wonder. I remember, too. So there are a lot of things that I remember from high school because a lot of things happen in high school and middle school. And to be fair, there's a lot... I wouldn't say there's a lot about college that I have been able to kind of think philosophically about or like kind of look back on. Mostly because like it's all far too recent. But I'm sure in the future there will be many more times where I'm like, this one time in college, like more often than I do, like this one time in high school. But maybe they're, the stuff that happened in high school are more like core beliefs of my or like core memories of mine because like they happened like a really interesting time in my life i was going my body was going through changes of course i'm gonna remember that stuff it was weird and awkward for everybody involved but we all came out of it on the other side for the most part so maybe that's why i remember it okay and i don't remember it well bits and pieces come up every once in a while but being able to put my thoughts out on paper i want to say there was some time Actually, here's a college thing. I want to say it was sometime in college while I was working my first co-op job. And that's when I had gotten my car. That's when I realized I'm driving an hour and a half to work every day and then an hour and a half back. There was a lot of time to kind of talk to myself in the car. And I realized that I was able to kind of remember those things, like remember things by talking about them out loud. So the fact that I guess it must have something to do with the way that my brain synapses are firing and... They fire real close to something else, and then that synapse fires, and now you've got memories. Maybe. I don't know. But so, it it kind of allows me to kind of get that stuff out on, like, get out in the air, and then bring it back from my brain. Of whatever else is hiding in there. I don't know what else, uh, whatever else is hiding up in this brain there, but I'm sure if I talk long enough, it'll come out. Um, but yeah, I realized during those those driving trips to and from work for six months. I did not like that. I don't want to work a job like that again. If I have to drive an hour and a half to a job, they would be paying me for my gas, I'm telling you. But there were times where I was like, I, I would, would able to, I remember coming back from the trip or I'd be mid conversation with myself in the car and I would realize like, wow, I didn't remember that until now. I'm so happy that I was talking. I'm so happy I talked to myself. Like, this is so cool that I was able to remember things by doing that. And I guess that's like a, it's a brain exercise. It's like brain food. Brain exercises, I guess. Kind of exercises your brain to reinforce those connections, those memory connections. It's good for, what's good for your memory? Thinking about your memories. Trying to, trying to think back and remember things is good for your memories. Just as much as like, I don't know, whatever else is really good for memories, like Cheerios or something. Cheerios is good for the heart. Maybe also good for the memory. Maybe good for the mind as well. Is Cheerios good for the mind? I wonder. It keeps me heart healthy, and if Cheerios keep me heart healthy, then that must mean my blood is okay, meaning as well that perhaps, 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 that my brain is also going to benefit from it. But I don't know. I do not know, I do not know. I think the best thing, or one of the best things to do to kind of keep your brain up and, uh, up and moving, is to, to, to challenge yourself. One of my favorite things to do is challenge myself. I love a challenge. This mod pack is a challenge. Some of the things I do for work are challenges. Some of the things I do just in general nowadays are challenges. A lot of assignments that I used to do for school are things that, that challenged me. And that's one of the things that I think I miss about it. I miss having... I don't really miss school and classes and stuff. I'm kind of past that at this point for the most part. But what I do miss was the, the projects that I worked on. I cared so much about the projects that I was I was putting my time into because they felt like they felt like my babies. They felt like my little creation, and I could mold it into what it is that was that I felt cool about. And it was really really cool. And what came out the other end was something that I was genuinely proud of. And there are a lot of things that for for schoolwork and stuff, I noticed that a, a classmate of mine was putting all their work on. Uh, GitHub, which is a lot of the code-based things. And I decided to do the same. Ah, 
I'm getting a little, getting a little stuffy. Getting a little stuffy. I need to drink my tea. Ah. Sky, that's my name. Hello there. Your your name is Sky. You go by they them. You are making an LGBT roleplay Minecraft server. Would I like to join? Uh, I'm not particularly interested in Minecraft roleplay. However, I'm very happy that you dropped by to at least ask about that. I really appreciate that. I don't do a lot of roleplay stuff, at least not on Minecraft. I do like to play. I do love to play D&D, though. That is something I'm very, very passionate about. I do love d and I was actually just talking about one of my characters before, actually. That was always a fun... That was always a fun time. I do... I get to play that later on today, and I'm very happy about that. We're kind of at this weird point in the campaign where, like, um... Oh, hey, welcome! Welcome to the party there, Sky. We're going to this really weird point in the camp where things are kind of kind of kind of slow all right now we're um it's been it's been rather slow for a while i think there's not a lot of story stuff going on but it's given me the opportunity to kind of dig deeper into whatever character that i want to to kind of form my character into to sum up kind of what i, I kind of already said it before but is like an evil character who wants to kill but like is starting to become a little more empathetic towards people now that he's going on in his ventures and whatnot and uh, I, I always, I always loved that. I always loved being able to kind of explore that and whatnot. Um, but you know what? You know, despite the fact that I'm not super interested in joining the roleplay Minecraft server, if you would like to drop a link or something, you're more than welcome to just to, just to have it in case anybody else is interested who may pop by, or I'll, I'll take a look at it and perhaps consider it more later. Uh, so fi final answer, not uh, not super interested, but I will definitely think about it and consider it. If you so feel to share, there's no no pressure there. But it sounds like sounds like fun. If I may ask though as well and inquire, what type of roleplay would it be? I'm curious about that. I don't know of any roleplay, sir. I used to do it was a it was a D D Dungeons and Dragons tabletop top tabletop type thing, except we did it on Reddit. Like uh, uh one of my high school buddies set up like this whole uh, Reddit uh excuse me r slash uh, this whole subreddit for us to kind of role play our characters on and i'd never done something like that before and it didn't go very far like we really didn't we really didn't go too far with it however like i still naturally i have posted that and i still use my reddit account so i can still go back and access that stuff and i remember bringing it up to him a little while ago and he's like yeah i'd love to start that again it never really i was like it felt like it almost it stopped after a while but he was like nah it never really stopped it just kind of slowly but surely came to a, a stopping point okay it never ended but it never it kind of slowly but surely came to a stopping point so to speak but we could always bring it back up again and i have all my notes naturally i still have all my notes for the character that i built for it i think the character for that one was a i think the premise for that one was you got to create your own god and then a worshiper of that god and then maybe it was something to do with, like, everybody kind of going off and doing the thing in the name of their god or something like that. I'm not, I do not remember. I don't exactly remember what it was. I'm not 100% sure. But I know the god that I had created for that was the god of, like, confusion or whatever. As in, like, if you were ever confused about something, you could blame this god for it. Because they were making you confused as a means to kind of enhance your understanding. Whenever you were confused about something, that was merely this god playing around with your mind, trying to get you to, to, to like, whatever that roadblock is in your mind, to be able to get past that writer's block of the mind was, was, what it, was what it was. I think that was uh, kind of the premise of it. Or maybe that wasn't even the premise of the god at the time, but if I ever go back to it, that's absolutely what I'm going to gear it towards now, because now I remember it, and I think about things more. I always remember that. I remember the name of the god, I think, was Vorbulus. I'm not sure. I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know where I got that name. I don't know where I got half the names I used for my characters uh, in, in the younger years. Or even in the more recent years. In the more recent years, I tend to look towards... I have, like, a word that reminds me of my character. And then I kind of look up translations for it. And then I try to sound out those translations and form it into a new word of my own a new name that comes from uh another language honestly it's usually latin and stuff like that but i've, I've tried other things every once in a while it's like that's that point where like when you when you have when you have your baby 
the baby bee in like whatever creation that you are making. Like, how do you treat it? What name do you get? I have to give it a name. You have to give this thing that you've created a name or, or some sort of um, designation. Or, or maybe not. Maybe the exact opposite. Maybe you don't want to give them a name. Specifically because, like, you don't want to... You don't want them to be, like... Like, pigeonholed by the... the, the ver like, the... Whatever background of the name is. Like, if I named something... Pyra. You might think, like, oh, maybe... Maybe they're bombastic. Maybe they're, um... Maybe there's something more than that. And I was like, hmm... But maybe you're not. Maybe you're a really cool-headed person, despite the fact that your name is Pyra. I'm not so sure. Do does the name Cam the name Cameron apparently comes from the Gaelic tongue for crooked nose? And so does the fact that I was named Crooked Nose reflect on the fact that my face is crooked? No, I don't believe it is. I don't think my nose is. I don't think it is. But maybe there's something else to the word crooked, and I'm sure if I look deep enough into what the word crooked is and the etymology, that I will find something along the way that will relate to me. Like, oh my god, like, crooked actually means, like, not very good, and I, I can sometimes be a not very good person, therefore, obviously, obviously, that's, it's my name that's dictating things about me. Or, uh, or like, I feel like that kind of goes into the whole, like, like, astrology and stuff like that, where, like, the day that you were born determine certain characteristics about you and though i'm not like i'm not a full believer in that i can't deny that it may be possible like there's not enough there's not enough like scientific data to be able to say yes but there's also not enough scientific data to say no either unless somebody has like what has somebody disproven astrology i don't i don't know if anybody has i don't know if anybody can and because I don't think anybody can, like, disprove it, I'm just like, you know what? I'll, I'll humor myself with it. I read my horoscope every once in a while. I wonder what my horoscope is today. You know what? Let's check that. What is my horoscope today? Uh... Scorpio. That's the one I want to try. I am Scorpio. Scorpio? Are you gonna listen to me, Google? Google. Google. What's my zo no? I don't want to know what your zodiac sign is. I already know what my zodiac sign is. What is my horoscope today for Scorpio? All right. Which one would you like to try? No, I don't know. I just can you just answer me? Google? No. Oh, okay. That's horoscope TV, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure what my I've been given options. Um. Alrighty then. Well, apparently my horoscope for today, and I don't think it's for Scorpio. Oh, maybe it is for Scorescope. Okay. My horoscope today is the next few weeks will be affected by a period of internal transitions and transformations. I already knew that because I just graduated college, so there's th the transition is already happening, I assure you. You will catch yourself thinking about the past and its impact on your present. <laughs> look at that. I was literally just doing that. Redefining who you are. <laughs> look at that. I've changed it every day. And cleaning house as far as negative influences go. Trying to wean out the negative influences of my life? Well, I don't know if I'm trying to wean out the negative influences. I'm just trying to see if I can learn something from them. Because there's always something you can learn from the negative influences. Like, failure is a... Failure has been very, very close to this particular household the past couple weeks. And we just get to learn from it. We just gotta calm down a little bit. <sighs> Breathe. And, like, remember that there's something to be learned from every failure. There's something to be learned from pretty much everything. And, I don't know. Like, it's it's really it's really easy to get bogged down by negativity and whatnot. But I think, you know, if, with enough willpower and stuff of the sorts and just, you know, trying to keep yourself well, anybody can conquer that. Anybody can conquer. And by conquer, I mean, one, either getting past it and forgetting about it. Because sometimes that's, like, that's kind of a thing that you want to that's kind of a thing that you want to do the thing is not necessarily you want to keep that stuff around you can just clean house just get it out of here some bad things you just got to get out of your system like ah oh, you you failed that test the other day but like you're still passing the class whatever get out of your system just brush it off we don't need it we don't need it however you can also learn from it as well some people like sometimes like if i fail the test and i know that i i can use that i will try to use that failure as a means to improve going forward and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and depending on what mood I am in, I'll either kind of put it behind me, or I'll try to learn from it. Like, my biggest issue is, I, I hear 
because because I know people in school, obviously, and I was in school myself for a, quite a while. But like, there are way too many cases of professors and teachers like being like, "Well, you failed your test, um, so do better on the next one." And you're like, "Oh, can I get that test so I can like learn from it?" Because like, how else am I supposed to learn from my failures unless I know what I got wrong and how to be able to rectify them? And they're like, "Nah, you'll have to. Nope, we don't we don't give that to you." And I'm like, "That is so dumb." I think that it is incredibly dumb. If you're like a, if you're a professor out there or some sort of teacher, and you were like students are getting failing grades and you don't give them your test their test backs, how I, I gotta ask you, how are they supposed to learn? How do you expect your students to learn if they have no reference for what it was that they did wrong? Like me knowing that I got a seventy eight on the exam doesn't tell me anything except that wow, I didn't do too well, but I still passed. That, but that really doesn't tell me anything else. It doesn't tell me where my rooms for improvement are. And don't get me wrong, like, if, if, the, if the answer to how are they supposed to learn is come see me in my office hours, fair enough. But like, even still, like, maybe you got a person, maybe you've got a student who is not comfortable with your office hours or just not comfortable around you. And I don't think there's anything to feel bad about. But if that's the case, like, maybe there's something else that you can offer to them such that the way that they learn can be can be um um accommodated i for one am not the i am not the kind of person who is going to come to your office hours because i did bad on a test i'm the kind of person who is going to sit there and wait to get the test back and if i never do i never learn from it unless unless i come to a, there have been points before where i'm like well, i really don't understand what's going on professor can we can we can you just give me the test i don't really want to go over it but honestly i might not even do that because i'm too too anxious at the thought that oh when i say can we go over it you're just gonna like basically what's gonna wind up happening i'm gonna say i'd like to go over it can i have the test back and be like well i can't give the test back but we can meet with it and i'll be like oh my god now i'm an anxious mess because i meet have to meet with my professor Ugh. don't like that never like that i've also never been like an office hours kind of person i don't like to go to open office hours that's the i just it's just not it's just not my thing not really my thing I just like I'm not I'm not really comfortable in those situations. I'll be perfectly honest there. I like to do things. I like to do things on my own. I'm rather independent. If I am struggling with a problem, it means that I am making progress on the problem. If I'm struggling with it and I'm looking there like sitting on my screen doing absolutely nothing, it probably means that the gears are turning up here. And I, I always feared that as well at previous positions of mine that if I wasn't if it didn't look like I was working then somebody might doubt that I'm doing anything at all. And I try not to worry about that too much because just because it doesn't look like I'm working doesn't mean that I'm not working on it, so to speak. Like, just because my fingers are not on the keyboard and my mouse isn't moving around does not mean that I'm not currently planning on paper. Like, for all the, the, for all the digital stuff that's going on right now with, like, uh, trying to track people's uh, energy or uh, their, uh, their activity for work and stuff like that, like, I think there's something inherently flawed there because we all work different ways. And just because my mouse isn't going around the screen like that doesn't mean that I don't have, like, you know, pen and paper and I'm drawing things out over here. And your computer can't determine that I'm writing on paper. Like, the company program that determines how active I'm being can't determine, I mean, to my knowledge, unless there have been improvements, whether or not I'm working out things on paper. I think what, what it makes me think of as well was when my fiancé takes tests... When my fiance takes tests, they have this program that kind of watches the student and makes sure that they're not cheating or anything. And if you do anything that seems cheat worthy, then it'll flag you. And then somebody gets to go in and review like, oh, was this person cheating? I don't know. Let's check on that. And even as, even as something like as quick as this. When you take a sip of tea, your hand passes in front of your face or you, uh, you kind of rub your eyes because the you're three slash two point lighting is getting in your eyes and it's been almost five hours now like the program will flag you and be like this is suspicious activity i don't know if they were looking at their test it's like i mean that at least is not that at least is not too bad right i, I guess but that stuff like that like stuff like that makes me makes me laugh a little bit i know uh we had uh noble neko pop in today announcing that she is now 
uh, doing some VTube work and whatnot. And uh, my future brother-in-law also does some uh, VTube stuff as well because he's a he's a young boy and doesn't necessarily like the idea of the internet getting getting a full full frontal of young boy. And I get that. And it makes a lot of sense actually. I am grown man. I'm very I'm very happy with people seeing my face on the camera, and I'm cool with that. Very very happy with that. And I don't think there's any legal issues with that, to, at least not at this point. But so, like, there's also somebody that I follow on TikTok as well, who I, I mostly follow them because I want to keep up on the VTube stuff so I can inform my uh, uh, younger future brother-in-law about it because he does this stuff. And I'm always looking for ways to improve not only what I do, but also kind of give suggestions to the people around as well. And I've, I've seen, a, seen a couple of really cool things on there. And, uh, and by the way, the, the, the TikToker that I'm, or the TikToker Twitcher that I'm, Twitcher that I'm talking about is uh, somebody that goes by girl underscore DM and she talks about a lot of YouTube stuff and whatnot. I think it's really, really cool. The technology aspect really, really entices me because I am a technological person. I love that stuff. And the fact that there's, you can take advantage of, I also love specifically being able to repurpose things and being able to repurpose like electronics for other things. Like this particular content creator, um, I guess, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if she put the dots together or whoever else put the dots together that, hmm, you know what? If you are uh, doing a VTube thing and you want proper face tracking, you know what does a really good job at face tracking? Infrared light, apparently. And so what has an infrared light? Well, obviously an infrared camera, but what else has infrared sensors? iPhones, apparently. I think some of the maybe older iPhones or newer iPhones all have, I think they all have infrared cameras inside of the things that they do. So that you can hook up your iPhone to your computer to track your face and whatnot. I think that's super cool. And she's apparently got this headset thing that kind of fits here to be able to track the motions of her hands that it maps it, I guess, mirrors it and whatnot to the screen. I think that's super cool. I mean, in that regard, it's equally as cool as like VR stuff as well. That stuff is awesome. And uh, I was only able to use VR, I think, once at my at my buddy Christina's house, and that was interesting. I played VR chat for like an hour and was very like I got the dance around his hat kid from Hat in Time. I love that. I love to be able to do the smug dance. It was pretty cool, but it, it was interesting. And I see a lot of I see a lot of content. Maybe it's maybe the reason why I see a lot of content of a certain things because like the algorithm has determined like this is what I'm into. But I see a lot of content about some person who has made these haptic feedback gloves where they kind of look like gloves except they got big circles over the top of it. And basically what it does is it interacts with your with your VR setting. Like when you hold it when you hold an object, you can feel that object. Like if you press against it, the object feels like it's pushing back against you. Um, if I push against the air, nothing really happens. I don't really feel it at all. But like, if I hold on to my, if I hold on to my phone and I try to, if I try to grip it, I can almost feel like my phone pushing back at me, and that's called haptic feedback. And so these gloves worked in such a way that when you held something in VR, if your model made contact with it, depending on how far into the object you would go, there's little motors on it that would actually pull back on your finger. Not a lot, I don't think. I don't think you would ever actually, like, you know, pull your fingers all the way back. But just enough that it almost fe that it feels like you're touching it. And that is so cool. I think that is really amazing. But that kind of technology really gets me, gets me going. But I was also thinking before about, like, um, the Apple phones who have, like, um, they have infrared cameras on there. And if we wanted to do anything, like, if somebody would be able to benefit for something like that. And I realized that one of my one of my previous phones, the Droid Turbo, I think it was, has uh, infrared cameras on it. And I know that because it had like, it had like, I think in four corners of the screen, it had these infrared sensors to be able to determine whether you could wave your hand over the phone. And if you waved your hand over the phone and you turned it over, then that would kind of be your way of saying like, hey, I want to see what's on my screen right now. Or, hey, I want to put my phone into do it not disturb mode. And that's how they did it with infrared cameras. And I don't know exactly how intense these things are, but I wonder if there is an Android app out there that would kind of give the opportunity to, to like allow you the ability to be able to hook that up to your computer and also do the same thing. Because that would be awesome. And I had mentioned this to my younger brother-in-law who does the VTubing stuff and whatnot. I was like, if I can get this infrared camera thing to work on my old phone, do you want it? And he was like, yeah, that could be pretty, pretty cool. I was like, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty awesome, I think. And just the fact that if I was able to set that up and get that to work, that'd be awesome. I'm glad that I'm helping out with that. A while ago, his computer 
which he had used for, um, I think he had used it for, for streaming, I think. But eventually, I think the gaming computer he was using just kind of crapped out. And that might have been the second one or the first one. But it crapped out, stopped working. And I was like, well, I have extra computers laying around. Would you like to use one? I got an extra laptop laying around. I'm a tech guy. Got plenty of, got plenty of this stuff. Um, and so I had to ask if he wanted to use it. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll use that. And he's had it for a while now. He's definitely had it for a few months. And I remember just the other day being back at home. He eventually, he got himself um, a new computer. Like an actual gaming computer. Like two, three thousand dollar gaming computer. Oh, hi, Wendigo. Bye, Wendigo. Huh. Um, oh, dear. Train of thought. Come back. Come back to the station, train of thought. Oh, oh gaming computer. So he has that now, and it works. And I was like, oh, my God, can I, can I look at your gaming computer? Because I like computers, and I get really excited about this stuff. And he was like, sure. And I look, took a look at his GPU that he's got. He's got like a, he's got the fancy like 3060 whatever RX uh, ray tracing stuff. And I'm like, that's pretty awesome. By the way, did you ever install your drivers for it? And he's like, drivers? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably need, probably need to install some drivers in there. Cause if you, you know, if you don't, then it's not going to work completely. And he's like, oh my God, really? And so we installed the drivers, got that all set up. And, and also, like I had mentioned that I had lent him the uh, the computer and stuff, the the other one. And he's still using it. He's like, do, do you want this back? Like, do I need to return this at all anytime soon? I'm like, do you still use it? Like, are you still getting some use out of it? Because if you are, then by all means, go ahead. Keep it. Keep it for a while. If it's still doing you some good. I mean, he's got the gaming computer now. So it will more, I feel like it will more than likely come to a point where he's like, I really don't need this other laptop anymore because like this computer can do it all without any problems, which is kind of how I am right now. This, this gaming computer of mine is not super tough. It's not super, super crazy. Oh my God, there's Lapita light over here too. I might as well collect that as well. Uh, it's not super, um, it's not super crazy. Not super, not super intense. However, it does more than any of my other one computer, any one computer can do. So I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it. And eventually, if I ever wind up completing the upgrades on this particular computer, still missing my GPU, GPU shortage has got me like, ugh. Then uh, that'll be that'll be nice. And then maybe I can repurpose these uh, other computers for other things. Like currently, this one over here, I have three computers that I use. It sounds a little crazy. It's a little overkill because it is a little overkill. It's the streaming computer, which is a Dell Inspiron 5520. I have the gaming computer, which uses a B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard and a Ryzen 3 3200G processor for the graphics because I didn't have a graphics card at the time. And then I've got a Surface Go, which I use for, uh, I use for, I have my stream manager over there. Not OBS manager, like stream manager. And that's how I got things. Yeah. So that is what I will do. That is what I will do. I think I'm going to mine up. I think my D&D is at about 3.30 today. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mine up this Galena, mine a little bit of that Lapidolite, and throw everything into the system. And I think that's probably where I'm going to end it today. Maybe take like another half hour, 40 minutes maybe. I think that's what that's what I'm going to do. That's, what I, that's the plan. That's the plan for today. That's the plan, Sam. Are you Sam? What's your name, Sam? You name Sam? What's your name? But I've always enjoyed technology st technological stuff like that. And that's kind of what I want to figure out what to do. One of the things that I really want to do now that I've got more time to just kind of think and exist is to figure out how I can take that love of technology and perhaps make it my own. Like, I mean, yeah, you can you can go off and uh, get yourself... Excuse me. Get yourself like a, a company who will pay you for stuff like that. And that's all well and good. But like I've always been the kind of person who loved to be able, loves to be able to do things on his own if he has the opportunity to. Like if I can make something on my own with the knowledge I have of technology right now, I would love to do that. And I don't think that there's any bright future of gold lying ahead of me. I don't think I'm I don't think that there is ever any there's any possibility of becoming the next Instagram or anything like that or TikTok, I guess. But Maybe something else that affects people in a different way, in a, in a positive way, maybe. It, I mean, if I can do it in a positive way, I'd like to. I don't know if I have control over that, though. I'm sure the people who created the um, the onion routing protocol 
didn't necessarily have in the design that, you know, illegal drug cartels and child trafficking would take place over the Onion Router network. I don't think that's what they had in mind. Uh, but, like, nonetheless, like, it helps a lot. There's a lot of good that comes out of that as well. I know, like, um, I took a class, I want to say about, si about a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago. And it was an honors class on networks in the information age. And networks in, like, networks in general. Like, you have a social network. That's a network. You have a network of highways. That's a network. And we just kind of talked about various different aspects of various different types of networks. And one of the types of networks was, like, a computer network. And one of the things that we covered was onion routing. Onion routing basically works like this. You have a piece of data that you take from your computer. And you lock it up. You lock it up with a cryptographic key. It becomes gibberish. And then you send it to the next router. Now it's got now it's got a single lock on it, and nobody can read it if they looked at it just like that. Then that next place says, all right, well, I'm going to do you one better, and I'm going to lock it again, this time with a different key. And I'm going to put that inside. Then the next one does the same thing. It's like, it's like at the core of your onion is your information, and then you keep putting layers and layers on top of it. And then it gets to this middle point who says, all right, now I've got this onion, and I know where I have to send it next. And so it sends it to the next one, and that onion is just like, hey... I know what this layer looks like. I have the key for this. Let me unwrap it. And you unwrap that one. And then it sends it to the next one. And then it gets unwrapped again. And then so on and so forth before, until it finally reaches its destination and it has been completely uh, unwrapped. And now you can read it properly again. So that's kind of how that routing system works. And it makes um, it makes things very like anonymous because it's really hard to tell. It, it's almost impossible it's, it's difficult. It's not almost impossible, but it's difficult to tell where that data came from. It's difficult to tell what is even in that data. Like, I can't look at an onion de packet and determine what's inside of it unless I have the key to unlock it. And then the key to unlock what's below that. And the key that unlocks below that. And what's the likelihood that I'm going to be able to guess every single one of those keys? It's not very high. Unless I somehow also compromise things along the way as well, which is possible in any case possible in any case uh but yeah and so in that networks class we kind of talked about uh that was one of the things we covered it's it's great because like it allows you to be kind of an, uh, more or less anonymous and allow you to do certain things that you wouldn't necessarily normally be able to do without having your cookies tracked which i know is a problem for a lot of people because you know having your information tracked and sold without your your consent is a little annoying at the very least borderline like an invasion of privacy i, I don't really like that um, some cookies are necessary, though. I, I understand that. Some cookies are just necessary. Sometimes you need to give a little bit of cookie. Hello, pal. Goodbye, pal. And for that, it's like it's necessary. Like, um, some, like some sites, like if you ever wanted to make an online purchase, they kind of need your cookies to kind of be able to transmit things properly. Uh, I, actually, I don't exactly know how online transactions work, but I feel like that you may need cookies in some cases. But don't quote me on that. I don't, I'm not for sure on that one. But it also, and yes, it does give the opportunity for bad people to do their drug cartels and trafficking online. However, it also gives the opportunity for people who are, for example, in countries that are censored, like they're not allowed to say certain things, not allowed to use Facebook or anything like that, to keep in contact with their family and stuff like that. And, you know, there's always a, bre there's always a silver lining to pretty much anything. Always, there's always a silver lining, I think. If you look, if you look at something from just, you just got to change your perspective. However, it would be cool if there was a way to kind of take all the bad stuff off of it while also having all the good stuff. But, eh, life's a little more complicated than that. But for now, we'll try our best just to do what we can. What we can with what we got and try to do it as safely as we possibly can. I think at least. I think that's always a good thing to do. Besides, it's nice to be able to use that type of... I mean, I, I for one, I, I use the onion router sometimes to do various things. I mostly do that if I'm, like, very wary about where I'm searching. So like, if I'm going to a website that probably isn't trusted by Google Chrome, I may opt for um, the like Tor instead, which is the, the onion router to the browser that you use if you wanted to do something like that. You gotta be careful with that too. Huge disclaimer, if you even wanted to do something like that, some ISPs, some internet service providers, don't allow you to use that. Um, I think when I searched a while ago, my internet provider doesn't allow me to use that, but we just won't tell them. I mean, your secret's safe with me if my secret's safe with you. They don't need to know about it. But, um, and I kind of use that if I'm going to, like, a questionable website where I don't know, like, I, for all I know, they may be 
like logging my IP address and whatnot, planning to use that to, you know, get back at me. And I don't, you know, I gotta be worried about that. Basically, if it doesn't have the little shield or the HTTPS, then I may opt for something a little more anonymous, which I would consider to be more secure. Now, just because you're on here doesn't mean that your downloads are secure. If you download something and it's bad and malicious, then you're not going to have either look on either of them. It's just a matter of, like, what kind of information that they can collect about you. Or, I mean, that may go into whatever link that they wind up sending you to download. You know, be, be wary on the internet if you can. Don't not use the internet just because it's scary. The internet is a wonderful, wonderful tool. They're wonderful, wonderful tools, but if accessed and used properly, then it'll be just wonderful. It'll be great, great, and just fine. Alrighty then. I think I've got how much? How much Galena and stuff do I have? I got, I got a lot of little stuff. Plenty of Galena. That's that's plenty actually, because there is a lot. Galena gives you a lot of lead. I mean, it could get you a lot of lead. I use Galena as well in order to create Indium, but I really don't need a lot of Indium. That's not something that I that is necessary for me, so I'm not going to use it if I don't have to. I am going to go upstairs with some for some Lapidolite, which is back up the way that I came, because Lapidolite is good for Lithium. Don't get me wrong. Tungsten is good for Lithium. Uh, the Tungsten Ores and the Skeelite Ores, but Lapidolite is a little... It's more, it's more accessible for me. It's a lot easier to get Lapidolite than it is to get Tungsten. At least at this point right now. So I'm just gonna I'm not gonna go through here and grab some. There's also a bunch of rock salt. I don't I don't need rock salt. There's, I don't need rock salt at all. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wind up trashing that. Yeah, I'm just gonna wind up trashing all this rock salt. I don't need it. I do not need it. And then after this, I'm gonna head back home. I'm gonna throw everything in the ore processing system, and that's probably where I'm gonna end it. It's been a nice day of chatting. It's been a, it's been a wonderful day of chatting with y'all. I really appreciate that. But I'm not over just yet. Oh, do I have... Nope, I got plenty more space for cobblestone and stuff. The cobblestone I'm collecting as well, by the way, because you can compress that all together for an, for an ingot called bedrockium. And that should help with my steam storage system. Because the more tanks that I have, the more tanks that I have, the more steam I can store. And uh, those tanks are beefy. They're beefy tanks. They're tiny tanks. They're like, they're like one block high, but they can hold a lot. Or they're drums. They're drums. Here, it's the... Is that thing? It can hold a lot of. It can hold a lot of stuff. It can hold sixty-five thousand five hundred and thirty-six buckets of whatever. And that's not as big as my other, as my other tanks for steam and stuff like that. But it gets the job done. On the other hand, too, it's actually not super helpful in the fact that in order to remove liquids from a container, you need you need pipes to pull from it. And if I pull with one pipe, that's cool. But if I pull with two, I pull twice as fast. And if I pull with three, I pull three times as fast. And at least for my particular setup, I need to pull things out fast. And if I only have... If the block... If the thing itself... If the, the tank itself is only one block, then I have one face to put things into it, and then one five faces to take things out of it, versus a tank that is much bigger than that, which has basically as many valves as I want to, to remove as much material from it as I want to, as fast as I want to, but at the cost of more space. So there's a little bit of planning that I gotta do to make things work properly and make things work in a way that is okay, but subtle improvements all the time. Subtle improvements little by little. That's my exit. Don't forget about my exit. I will eventually forget where my exit is. I'm, I'm dense like that. I will forget. Let's get one more layer of this Lapidolite. I think that... That'll do it. That's enough Lupita Light. I already have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ores in the processing system right now. And that'll take a while to process. None of this stuff is fast. Because in order... If I wanted everything to be fast, first of all, I need more energy. And first of all, I need better... Uh, second of all, I need better machines. And it is a slow and steady process to get more machines. It just takes a lot of material, and I have yet to set up systems for that. Um, but it works eventually. Everything winds up getting processed, and then everything winds up getting stored. And honestly, I'm not on. I don't. I don't play Minecraft super duper often, so I don't need things to process immediately. I can afford to throw things into the system, go offline, come back. Oh look, a day or two later, it's all done because I'm back on a day or two later anyway. 
That or I wind up coming back on tomorrow and obsessively playing Minecraft because it's a Saturday. And it's a Saturday. Now, I think I'll probably work on some more other things. I was mentioning before, like, of the newfound freedom that I've got going on here, I really want to kind of work on some more projects. I miss that part of school. I miss that part of university, the projects that I got to work on. Now, if I want to do a project, I have to figure it out myself. I have to figure out what the project is. Like, previously, the professor would say, like, oh, you want a good grade? Here's your project. Do the project. And then depending on how well you do the project, according to my instructions, you will get a grade. Now I'm just like, I want project. But who's gonna give me project? Okay, me gonna have to give myself project. But what project should I do? I'm not sure. And although, technically the stuff they'll end up doing like in the server here, I like to think there's a lot of project stuff going on here. These are projects that I work on, absolutely. There's a lot of design work that I wind up doing, like the ore processing system. Kind of, it makes my it makes my brain think. It makes me think, and I love to be able to think. All right, that's enough lapidolite. I think I'm happy with that. I don't think I need any more lapidolite, and I certainly don't need any more rock salt. You know what? I'm gonna keep the rock salt anyway. I'm gonna keep it merely because I'm sure there will be something down the line. Like rock salt can is really really good for. Excuse me. Rock salt is really, really good for chlorine. And if I'm going to be doing a lot more titanium, I'm going to be needing a lot more chlorine. Because in order to create titanium, you need to mix up... What was it? It was ilmenite and carbon to extract rutile. Rutile and chlorine... Uh, let's see. Ruta rutile and carbon with chlorine to create titanium tetrachloride. Then you take the titanium tetrachloride... You mix that with magnesium to create magnesium chloride in addition to just regular titanium. And then you extract the titanium. And now you got titanium. So if I want a lot of titanium, I'm going to need a lot of chlorine. And uh, I took a look at my chlorine. I must have used my chlorine for something else as well because my chlorine pipe, my chlorine tank, was not as full as I remember it to be. Was that a DVD? What color are you? I'll take that. Ooh. Back home I go, back to the Draconia lab. Where I will throw things in, where I will throw things into the ore processor, and then that'll be it. I think that'll be all I do. And then I'll figure out what that else to do with the day. Probably do a little bit of work stuff. Maybe hang out. I don't know. Oh yeah, D D at 3.30. I was like, what am I gonna do today? Like, I got D D in like an hour. <laughs> I'll do that. Should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And again, I'm looking forward to whatever... I, I don't know what I'm going to do on Monday for streamies. What should I do on Monday for streams? I don't really know yet. I usually just kind of wing things. I've been trying to, like, plan things out more in advance, kind of methodically pick what game to play, but kind of kind of takes the whole... One of the, one of the original points of streaming for me was to just kind of relax and play video games, whatever the video game might be, to in order to relax, relaxation being the biggest part of it. And I don't know. There's something oddly not relaxing about... A predetermined schedule. Although sometimes there is something relaxing about a predetermined schedule. It really depends on what the schedule is. But uh, it really, it really all depends. Oh, I got more deviated lilies. Let me put that up on the first surface. I'll plant those over with the other ones. Hopefully not the creeper. No, thank you, creeper. Creeper, no. Okay, thank you. Yeah, don't, don't. I don't want it. I don't want it. Bye bye. <laughs> I don't want to deal with creepies right now. I don't want it. All right, let's throw things in the backpack. There, do, 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 do. And there we go. It's all in the, another wonderful hall. Actually, wait. Give me the Galena. Wait. Give me Galena. I don't know if the, uh, the system is uh, registered. Oh, no, no, no. It is set up for Galena. I know that. Because it's, it's a special ore. It's not going to produce lead like I want it to. But that's fine. I can take the Galena and process it again later. Into actual lead. So I'll do that eventually. Ah, but yeah. That is... That's it for me, everybody. I uh, I had a good time. I like playing my Minecrafts every once in a while. And it was lovely. Thanks for everybody who popped in. Thanks for everybody who stuck around. It was a lovely, lovely day. I think I'm just going to end things right here. Nice and smooth. And probably finish the rest of my tea, which is... I barely even touched, it seems. So that's what I'll do. And I will end it right there. Thank you, everybody, so much. If I click this button here, I can go to bah, the ending screen. That's it, everybody.
The party is now all over. I thank you all very much for joining us. It was an absolute blast. We made a couple more progress things on Minecraft today, slowly but surely working our way up to be able to use tungsten and extreme voltage materials. But we'll get there. I hope everybody at home has a wonderful rest of their day. If it's day where you are, if you are in the Eastern Standard Time Zone, then you are experiencing a wonderful around two o'clock right now which i'd say is like the early like the late afternoon so if you're having one of those have a wonderful rest of your afternoon and if not maybe evening day twilight whatever it is where you are no matter your time zone so so long everybody bye <laughs>